Hey you all, welcome to Just a Shinobi. Today, we dive into an exciting what-if scenario. What if Naruto was God of Destruction? If you enjoy this, hit subscribe for more thrilling content. Explore my other videos, share with friends, enjoy them too, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. It motivates me. Let's not waste any time. Jump into today's what if. Chapter 1 The Majestic Saiyan. Naruto Uzumaki was pinned down to the ground with black rods through his hands and in his back and legs. Naruto came back to see his home destroyed by the Akatsuki leader Pain, Naruto had the advantage against Pain, but the Rinnegan was too much for him to handle. Pain was about to capture him, but Hinata Hayuga stepped in to help Naruto, even though he screamed for her to leave she refused and battled Pain, but she was not a match. Pain had a black rod and looked at Naruto and now you shall witness true Pain he declared. Hinata slowly opened her eyes and looked at Naruto, she spoke. Naruto-kun. I love. You. Naruto was shocked at what he heard. He saw Pain bringing up the black rod no Pain don't do it. He pleaded but it was deaf to Pain as he stabbed the rod down through Hinata and blood flowed through the air. Naruto's eyes widened at what he had just witnessed. Hinata. The girl that put her life on the line for him. The girl that said she loved him. The one person who truly loved him. Killed right before his eyes. Mindscape. The Kyubi had a giant grin and started to release his chakra, now it was the perfect time for his chance to. He was cut off as a bright white energy started to push the demon's chakra back. This both made Kyubi shocked and angry, shocked that the boy was possessing some kind of power he never has felt, and angry that he couldn't do anything about it as his chakra kept pushing back. Kyubi had sat back and watched to see how this played out. Outside World. A MV Birth of a God short version. Naruto started to grit his teeth in anger pain. You. Heartless. Bastard. He snarled, but Pain showed no regret, and Naruto started to feel a rage that he has never felt rising. The sky was being covered by grey clouds, and blue lighting started to strike around, little pebbles around him started to slowly float, and the rods were pushed out of his body and legs, making him stand up still feeling the rage that was still building up inside and clenched his fist. Pain's eyebrows narrowed, was this the power of the Kyubi? Tunks of the ground started to creak and break, small rocks started to float around him you. Will. Pay. Naruto growled, lighting still struck around as his body shook with rage, his hair started to flash from blonde to white, and so did his eyes from blue to silver, clenching his fist harder, remembering the memories with Hinata and his promise to her, his hair started to flash again. Gritting his teeth hard, a white flash of lighting struck behind him, and he shouted as a white energy exploded into light. Pain had to close his eyes due to the strong energy, once it died down his eyes slightly widened in shock at the Jinchurikus transformation. The light that looked from heaven shined down on Naruto, his coat was destroyed and was wearing his long sleeve chainmail, but the left sleeve was torn off showing his muscles, his entire body was covered in a white glow-like aura that was just pulsing with power. His hair and eyebrows were white, but his hair was spiked up with a few bangs that covered his forehead, with two long ones on both sides of his face, that reached just below his chin, his eyes snapped open as they were bright silver and glared at pain. And AMV. AMV Demigod by Lab Rats and Slim Jim 010. What is this? This is not the Kyubi chakra. This is something else. Naruto charged and was too fast for Pain to react. He was punched in the gut so hard he spat blood and was sent high in the air. Nagato, who was controlling Pain, spat blood out. The woman with blue hair and a piercing under her lip wearing the Akatsuki robe ran to him Nagato what's wrong? The woman asked as she was concerned for her leader friend. Be the Kyubi, he's different, he's transformed. Painted Nagato. Is it the Kyubi chakra? She asked. Nagato shook his head. No. It's something else. Back on the battle, Pain stopped in the air, but then looked up seeing the Jinchuriki above him, who unleashed a fury of punches to the face and kicks, sending him crashing down hard to the ground, causing a slight shake around the village. Hinoha Ten had witnessed the lighting and felt the energy that was pulsing around the village, it made them sweat with nervousness including some of the Jonans, Sakura felt the village shake. What's going on Katsaya? She asked the summoning slug. Naritasen. He has changed. He saw Hinata stabbed by pain, she's still alive, but she's hurt, she needs medical attention quickly. Urge Katsaya and Sakura ran off and soon found her, she quickly went and picked her up bringing her back to the group and later down performing her medical jutsu, everyone looked up and were shocked as they saw Naruto covered in a white aura. Not only was his hair white and spiked up. He was flying. Naruto charged again towards pain, but once he got close he was blown back crashing into the earth. Pain stood up and Naruto erupted from the rocks and didn't have a scratch on him still covered in the white aura. He vanished and appeared in front of Pain and unleashed faster punches that Pain was able to block for only 5 seconds and his guard broke as the punches started to connect his face. 
Naruto gave a hard uppercut sending him up in the air again and appeared above him and hit a double axe handle, sending him crashing deeper into the earth. Pain looked at the Jinchuriki and knew he had to end this quickly, Naruto charged down towards him, once he was close enough Pain had thrown a black ball of chakra hitting him. Hibaku Tensei. Pain shouted out and the Jinchurik was sent up in the air and rocks started to cover him and soon was trapped in an enormous satellite. The Gado sighed in relief as he finally finished it, but soon that was over as the satellite started to rumble and a light started to shine out of it and was destroyed, shocking him, it was impossible. Naruto was in the air ineffective and still glared at him. Impossible, he broke out of the Chibaku Tensei. Said Nagato in shock, this too shocked the women knowing it was Nagato's strongest jutsu. Naruto cupped his hands back and a white energy ball started to form and it started to grow to the size of his giant Rasengan. Pain here is for all the suffering you have caused and the lives you have destroyed. Naruto shouted as his aura grew more. Majestic spiral wave. He shouted, thrusting his hands forwards, shooting a powerful spiral stream of white energy towards him. Pain put his hand up and was going to absorb the attack, but to his horror his arms started to disintegrate and soon his body was absorbed in the attack, reducing him to nothing. End AMV 234. Once the attack died down nothing was left but another deep crater. Naruto landed on the ground painting still in his form. He had sensed the same energy like pain close by and went in that direction. The Noha Ten and some of the Jonins just were awed at what they had just saw from Naruto, including the last attack, Sakura continued to heal Hinata, and soon she started to wake up much relief to everyone. He did it, Naruto has defeated the last pain. Kasaya informed me. I knew he could do it. Cheered Kiba and Akamaru barked in agreement. Hinata slowly sat up and smiled and closed her eyes I'm glad you safe Naruto-kun. Where is Kutsaya-sama now? Asked Niji. Kutsaya tried to sense him he's going somewhere outside near the forest. Everyone was confused about this, why would he need to go there? Naruto looked all around and sensed the energy and found a paper tree and had ripped the entrance open and went inside and came face to face with a woman and the man behind Pain, Nagato. Just as I suspected, Pain was just a puppet and you're the man behind the strings. He said. Yes. I am the one behind Pain, my name is Nagato. Nagato introduced himself. Well, I hope you are ready to pay for your sins, Nagato, because I won't be merciful. Naruto walked towards him. Nagato shot out a spear from his mechanism, but Naruto just swapped the spear like nothing shocking him, the women charged at Naruto, but he vanished causing her to look around, but felt a kick behind her knee dropping her and was grabbed around the neck. Conan. Nagato shouted in panic for his friend. Naruto tightens his grip. See how it feels when you see your friends in pain. You went so far and attacked my village, my friends, my home. He said holding an energy ball in his hand. I should kill you now, for you did to Hinata, but let me ask you this. What caused you to be like this? Nagato looked at the boy in silence for a few seconds and explained his story, first with his parents being killed by Kanoha Shinobis and awakening the Rinnegan, meeting Conan and Yahiko, learning under Jiraiya, Yahiko forming the Akatsuki to bring peace, Hanzo and Rude Anbu's taking Conan as hostage and Yahiko forcing him, Nagato, to kill him, Yahiko. His plan on why he wanted the tailed beasts. The ball of energy Naruto held faded away and his hair transformed back to normal, and so did his eyes. Now you see my reason for my actions, the reason I became who I am and why I did this. Nagato. I know about the Jiryasensei idea for peace. But in reality, there will be times that peace will break and war will start, there too will be a time you will lose a comrade, and all we can do is endure that pain, to remind us of what we lost, and for it to never happen again. Naruto continued. What if you were to go to war and had to kill just to protect your village, can you shoulder the burden knowing you killed a brother, a father, a sister, a mother? Shouted Nagato. Naruto closed his eyes and seconds later opened them yes I will, if I were not to, it would make me inhuman, but as long as Naruto Uzumaki is still breathing, I will stop any threat that will harm the time of peace, even if it kills me. He declared, which made Nagato's eyes wide and for the first time had chuckled in a long time. Naruto Uzumaki, I am glad I have met you. Outer Path Samsara of Heavenly Life Technique. He called out, and soon the King of Hell rose up and released the souls of the ninjas that were killed. Nagato no. Conan stood up and ran to him. Conan. I'm glad I have met you. And Yahiko. You now carry his legacy in you. Please raise him well. Nagato said and his breathing slowed down. Naruto. Before I leave. You must know. The true leader of the Akatsuki. Is the man in the orange mask. Stop him. At all cost. I place my trust in you. Naruto Uzumaki the life in Nagato's eyes faded away and was gone from the earth. Conan silently cried, and Naruto looked down clenching his fist, the energy he felt started to rise again, as he knew the true leader was the cause of all this. 
He had managed to stay calm and saw Conan wrapping Nagato's body in papers. He walked to her but would still have his guard up just in case. What did Nagato do? He asked. She still of the Nagato body. He used a jutsu that would resurrect the people of Konoha, but the cost of it was his life she answered. What will you do now? He asked. I will bury Nagato. Now that the Akatsuki is over. She said. Why don't you stay in Konoha, I'm sure I can talk to Bachan and letting you stay, besides I can't let you alone roaming around, now that you're carrying a baby. He said. Honan looked down, debating if she should go or not. But she was carrying Yahiko's legacy and was asked to raise him well. She made her decision and nodded, all right I'll come, but please let me bury Nagato first. She said and he nodded. Alice of Grand Zeno. Two of the twelve gods of destruction were standing up and sweating bullets with nervousness as they were in front of an alien boy who sat on a throne, he was very short and small, with a rather large evolved head. He primarily has sky blue skin, except for two sections from his ears to the middle of each eye on both sides of his head, which are purple. He has small round eyes and small rounded gray ears. His main attire is a magenta and yellow lined coat with yellow pants and magenta shoes. He wears a black and white shirt underneath with a kanji for all. This was Xenosama King of the Twelve Universe. The two gods of destruction were purple cats, but one was skinny while the other was chubby. They had the same attire, but the skinny one wore blue and the other wore red. Iris God of Destruction of Universe 7. Tampa God of Destruction of Universe 6. Besides them were their angels, one besides Beerus was a man with a long blue scepter with a gem that floats above it in his right hand. Around his neck is a large light blue ring. His attire consists of a maroon robe, a black cuirass with the same white and orange diamond decorations as Beerus, and a blue sash. He also wears black high-heeled shoes with white spats. This was Wiss, Beerus's attendant and angel of Universe 7. The other angel beside Champa was a tall woman with pale blue skin, violet eyes, and long white hair, similar to Wiss, although she wears it in a high ponytail. She carries a long red scepter with a gem that floats above it in her right hand. Around her neck is a large light blue ring. Her attire consists of green robes, a black cuirass with the same white and orange circle decorations as Champa, and a red sash. She also wears white high-heeled shoes with black soles. This was Vados, the older sister of Wiss, Champa's attendant and angel of Universe 6. Beside Zeno was a short male angel with blue-colored skin and white-colored slick back hair and thin hook-curved eyebrows. Above his head he possesses a blue-colored halo that autonomously floats above him. His apparel consists of a dark blue long-sleeved shirt with baggy shoulder pads that runs beneath his red-colored belt with the kanji symbol for great. The shirt is complemented by a matching color pair of baggy pants and white boots that run beneath his shins. This was the Grand Minister, father of Wiss, Vados and advisor of Zeno-sama. Welcome friends and thank you all for coming, Xenosama has made a recent discovery deep between the North and South Galaxy. Said the Grand Minister. This had surprised the gods and angels. Shouldn't the Kais have been informed of this earlier Grand Minister? Asked Wiss. The Great Minister nod, hi, but the energy Xenosama felt came out of nowhere, as I was informed I traced the source back, to our surprise it came from a place we have not heard from in centuries, Universe Zero, said the Grand Minister. The angels were surprised while the two gods were confused never hearing a universe zero. But Grand Minister, didn't both of those race perish? Vados asked. The minister nodded, hi, but it seems one has survived. A majestic Saiyan. The answer shocked the two destroyers as they never heard of another universe, except theirs, with their own Saiyans or even a majestic Saiyan. We followed the energy further leading us to a place called the Element Nations, which are ruled by ninjas, or as they called themselves shinobis. Just as the other universes they possess energy which is somewhat similar like Kai but they call it Chakra, a village by the name of Kanahagakur, was under attack by a man named Pain, claiming to be a god, a young teen boy by the name Naruto Uzumaki fought against him, to our surprise he managed to push Pain back, but the power the man possessed was too much for the boy. The Grand Minister showed the battle on a globe, and everyone watched. Beerus was watching this with interest, and to Vado's surprise so was Champa. It then showed Naruto who witnessed a girl's death by the enemy and started to transform into a Saiyan, but instead of a gold hair color, teal color eyes and gold aura, he had white hair, silver color eyes and a white aura. The destroyers were impressed at the power, Wiss was now interested in the boy, and Vados had a slight blush at his appearance. They then saw the boy manhandling the man and witnessed the spiral energy beam he shot at the enemy that finished him and ended. The Grand Minister spoke now I know the both of you have questions about this and I shall explain. Years ago, in Universe Zero there were two Saiyan races, the regular Saiyans and the Majestic Saiyans. 
The Majestics were the strongest of all Saiyans and lived on their own planet Sadala, but the regular Saiyans had conflict with them since they were jealous of their power and war broke out between the two that ended both of them, Xenosama plan was to have a Majestic become a god of destruction, but because of the war, Xenosama had changed his mind no longer interested in Universe Zero. The Grand Minister finished explaining. Xenosama said he is strong and I have decided to dub him as god of destruction of Universe Zero. This surprised the gods and their angels. The great minister nod hi Xenosama wishes for the boy to be a god of destruction, but he lacks the knowledge of it, this is why Xenosama is giving both of you an opportunity to train this boy, since you both have Saiyans of your own, but only one of you will be chosen. Explained the grand minister. Both of the gods of destruction turned and glared at each other. Now then. The two gods stood up and turned attention to the grand minister. Tampasan, why do you think you should train the boy to be the god of destruction? Asked the minister. Tampa stepped forward with a serious look and bowed Grand Minister, after watching the boy's power, I have no doubt I would be the perfect candidate for him, since I have trained some of the strongest fighter in my universe including a couple of Saiyans, with the strongest in Universe 6 being Hit the Assassin and Caulifla the female Saiyan. They would be a perfect challenge for him to grow stronger. The Grand Minister nodded and looked at Beerus. Beerusan, why do you think you should train the boy to be the God of Destruction? Beerus stepped forward and bowed Grand Minister, the boy is no doubt powerful, he may have potential to be a god of destruction, as for why I should train as him, well I have recently taken two Saiyans by the name of Goku and Vegeta under me, they're the most powerful fighters in Universe 7. They both have achieved a form beyond Super Saiyan called Super Saiyan Blue, which can give a god of destruction a challenge, and Goku has another form known as Super Saiyan God, which can push me back for a few minutes, with their help they can push the boy further into new limits. The Grand Minister nodded and looked at Xenosama, who was pondering as both gods made good reasons, but had made a decision. Zeno said you both have made excellent reasons, but only one can be chosen. Therefore. The one that will be chosen is. Both Beerus and Champa gulped and sweated bullets, while the angels looked calm, but were curious of who Xenosama would choose. Zeno gave a small smile. Beerus. Beerus was actually surprised and sighed, and Champa was livid on the inside, but had to keep calm on the outside to not make a fool of himself in front of Xenosama. I hope you don't make me regret my decision. Xena said in a solemn tone with no smile, which made Beerus sweat bullets. He bowed deeply I won't let you down Xenosama, you have my word. He said with slight nervousness. The Grand Minister excused everyone. While Beerus was walking with which he spoke. Whis, why is it that I never been informed of a majestic Saiyan? Beerus slightly annoyed. To be fair Beerusama you never had asked me, and as the Grand Minister said we had thought they had died off long ago in the war. Wiz said which was indeed true. Beerus just grunts annoyed but still, this was a chance for him to train another Saiyan, if indeed this majestic Saiyan is strong and studied under him, then the boy will give Vegeta and Goku a challenge which would help them grow stronger once the boy becomes a destroyer and if Goku can keep up. Beerus may finally have a challenge he has been waiting for. How long will it take to get their Wiz at light speed? Beerus asked. Who's looking at the gem on his scepter exactly 5 minutes and 42 seconds Beerusama. He informed me. Beerus smiled. Good, I hate long rides, please take us there. Wiz bowed as you wish Beerusama. He tapped his scepter on the ground and they glowed white and vanished. On Hagakur. It had been two days since the attack and the people of Kanoha started rebuilding homes, shops and other places. Naruto Uzumaki or as people call him now the savior of Kanahagakur was walking down the streets checking places out, he had been greeted by many thanks from the adults and flirts from many teen female citizens including some older ones. Kids would approach him and praise him saying they want to be strong just like him. He smiled and told them to always work hard and never give up no matter what. Today though he looked different, he noticed this morning his hair had grew a little longer back and his muscles grew, not too much like a muscle head, but enough for strength. He was wearing different clothes, he had his headband around his forehead as usual. He wore a sleeveless orange tunic and underneath was a long-sleeved black shirt with his necklace, cargo orange pants, black shinobi sandals. He had arrived at the memorial stone and knelt down and saw his sensei's name, Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Naruto smiled sadly, even though he and Jiraiya were mostly at each other's throats, they cared for each other throughout the years they spent training together, it was a bond not like sensei and student, but more like a father and son bond, something he had always wished for. He closed his eyes and prayed. They snapped open as he felt a huge energy appear behind him. He slowly got up and quickly turned around and saw a purple anthropomorphic cat, and besides him was a tall blue humanoid man holding a scepter and had a blue ring around his neck. Who are you, what business do you have here? He questioned having his guard up. Was bowed we mean no harm Naritasan, we come in peace. Naruto thought about it and slowly let his guard down. Who are you and how do you know my name? 
He questioned again. As I said Naritasan, my name is Wiss, I'm the angel of Universe 7, besides me is Birasama, god of destruction of Universe 7. Wiss introduced. Naruto was confused at all this, angel. Universe 7. God of destruction. He studied the cat closely and felt the wave of energy that had made him sweat. This guy's energy is just crazy and he's not even pushing out chakra. Thought Naruto. Ira stepped forward as Wiz said, I am the god of destruction or just call me a destroyer for short, the reason we're here is because it involves you. Said the destroyer and looked at Wiz and nodded. Wiz tapped his scepter down as everything froze which Naruto was in awe at. Wiz began to explain to him about the twelve universes, the twelve gods of destruction, the majestics and regular Saiyans war. Naruto jaw dropped at every single detail, the twelve universes, the destroyers, universe zero and the Saiyans. It was a gut punch to Naruto to know he was not human, but an alien race. He started to shake but clenched his fist taking a deep breath and calming down. Zeno-sama who is the king of twelve universes, was interested in your abilities and had declared you to be god of destruction. Wiz said, which shocked Naruto completely. But. The Grand Minister thinks you lack knowledge to be a destroyer, and with Zeno-sama's approval, has assigned Birasama along with me to train you to become one. Naruto couldn't believe it, being trained by a god, this was a huge opportunity for him than ever, he knew after the fight with Nagato that his skills still needed work, it was only cause of his sage mode that he lasted a while against him, and his majestic Super Saiyan form won the battle. He knew he couldn't rely on just those two forever. When do you think we can start? He asked. Iris gave a grin excellent, right now would be the best time. Wait, I still need to check in with my friends and the Hokage. Naruto said though it sounded weird, he didn't want to give them the wrong idea if he said Bachan. Beerus was in a thinking pose I don't know we are wasting time. Do you have good food? Asked the destroyer. Naruto raised an eyebrow, but an idea popped in his head and had a huge smile. I know just the place. He said which got the two curious. Raymond Ichiraku. The destroyer was on a stool waiting calmly along with Wiss, while Naruto gave an exciting grin. Most of the citizens were confused as they saw Beerus and Wiss thinking they were hinges. So, are you saying that Ichiraku has the best ramen? Asked the destroyer. Oh yeah trust me you're going to love it. Naruto assured him. They am, who was the daughter of the Tuchi, the owner, brought them their food. Alright boys, here you are, one Yuzumaki special each. Am served them. Ira smelled the food and gave a grin I must say it smells delicious. He said. The three picked up their chopsticks. The three said and broke the chopsticks digging in. Naruto was smiling enjoying the delicious ramen looking over at Beerus and Wiss. He could tell they love it seeing Beerus slurping the ramen like no tomorrow. This is the best ramen I have ever had. Cheered Beerus enjoying more of it. I must say Naruto-san, this is delightful. Commented Wiss. Naruto grinned and heard his name being called and saw Kiba with his big dog Akamaru behind. There are you, the gangs have been looking for you and. Kiba trailed off seeing a tall blue man and an anthropomorphic cat. Kiba leaned in close to Naruto on Naruto, why is this guy a cat? He whispered. Beerus's ears twitched at what he heard and had released a tiny amount of his energy that slightly shook the village worrying everyone, which thankfully elbowed his ribs stopping him, and they resumed eating. The hell was that? Questioned Kiba at the short earthquake. I'm not so sure, maybe just an aftershock. Naruto guessed. Kiba forgot the two people and had remembered something. Listen Naruto, you got to know something. Inuzuka said. Naruto listened then Kiba said Tsunade is in a coma. The answer left his stomach turning. What? What about Shizun and Sakura can't they heal her? He asked. Hiba shook his head sadly Sakura was the one that informed us, she and Shizun did everything they could, but nothing worked, they don't know if she'll ever wake up again. Naruto felt his world drop as another person he held precious to was injured, and there's nothing he can do. Hiba continued there's more. The daimyo had arrived and had a meeting with the councils, my mom told me they were discussing about a new hokage, she also mentioned a man named Danzo Shimura nominating himself, I noticed she growled his name and figured he must be bad news, right now the decision is about to be made. Naruto's energy flared without not noticing and took off. Wiss and Beerus finished their food and decided to follow him. Council room. The civilians and the seven of the clan heads had gathered including the three elders and were sitting before the daimyo as the decision of a new hokage had been made. But Tsune taking out of action a Rakide must be chosen therefore after many talks I declare. The daimyo was cut off as he heard commotion outside. Soon the door busted open as Anbu went through it and Naruto walked in. Naruto Yuzumaki, what is the meaning of this? You have no business being here. Kahara shouted. Naruto ignored the old lady and glared at Danzo. Danzo Shimura, you are the cause of all this destruction, because of your actions the Akatsuki became what it is today. His anger had risen, and his hair again flashed between blonde and white. Excuse me, young man, but may I know who you are? 
asked a fire daimyo. Naruto bowed down deep forgive me daimyo-sama for being rude and interrupting you, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, the savior of Konoha and last student of Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Ah, I see you're the famous Naruto Uzumaki everyone is speaking of, tell us Naruto-san what do you mean Danza-san is the reason for Konoha's destruction. Naruto had started to explain the story that was told to him from Nagato about Danzo making a deal with Hanzo the Salamander and sending his root anbus to kidnap Conan and the death of Yuhiko. Everyone was shocked at the story, except the elders and some arrogant OP civilians, the Daimyo frowned at this. These are serious allegations, Naruto-san do you have any evidence? Asked the Daimyo. Naruto was going to answer, but I may actually help with that. Everyone turned and saw a tall humanoid blue man, and next to him was a purple anthropomorphic cat, everyone was shocked. Who are you? What business do you have here civilians, you have no right be here, you think you can just walk in here. Iris was fed up with the fat man's mouth and just pointed one fingers at him, and soon the man started to glow like purple and disintegrate, the fat man started to panic. What's going on, what did you do to me? Screamed the man. Wiss with a smile, said it was not so wise to speak to Birasama in such a tone. The fat man screamed and disintegrated leaving nothing. This had shocked the entire councils even the daimyo was shocked at this. Wiss bowed I'm sorry of what you saw, allow me to explain, my name is Wiss, I'm an angel and attendant of Birasama, and of course besides me is Birasama God of Destruction. He introduced. The name God of Destruction had made the shinobi nervous, seeing what the man did to the fat fool, they didn't question this. Danzo had tried to manipulate the destroyer with his hidden Sharingan, but nothing happened which made him cursed. Daimyo-sama. I can testify to Naruto's words, observe. Wiz said and projected the image from his scepter orb. Soon a video showed Danzo having a meeting with Hanzo and making some deals. The root Anbu's kidnapping Conan, Yuhiko's death and Nagato's rage. The video ended and now all the shinobis were P.O. at the one eye bastard and were glaring at him, the daimyo narrowed his eyes and looked at Danzo. Danzo Shimeru, do you have anything to say? Questioned the daimyo. Danzo tried to come up with an excuse, but nothing could have helped, this wasn't supposed to happen. I see. I shall change my decision on making you Hokage Shimerison. The daimyo said in a cold voice making Danzo flinch. But daimyo will be Hokage then. Asked the elder Himeru. I may have a solution. Said Wiss again gaining the attention. Akatsuki hideout. Though Biaka Madara Ichiha was on a boulder listening to the Zetsu report. So, Pain was defeated. Asked Madara which Zetsu nodded. There's more, it seems the Jinchuriki didn't use the Kayubi chakra to defeat Pain. Said Zetsu which confused Madara. Explain. He said. Zetsu told Madara of the Jinchuriki transformation after seeing the death of a comrade, the energy that he summoned and used to defeat Pain. Madara was shocked at this, since he has never heard of such a thing, and if what Zetsu said was indeed true, then this may be more difficult. And the Hokage? Questioned Madara. They are still determining who it's going to be. Though it is most likely Danzo based on speculation. Said the plant man. Madara's eyes gleamed at that. It seemed like the perfect opportunity to start his plans. Conan is not coming back, we need another pawn to sink with Jito Mezo. Zetsu informed me. Madara remained silent for a moment contemplating his next move, he then looked to kiss him. Kissum goes after the Hachibi, I've got matters to attend to, Zetsu makes sure to monitor the event in Konoha and the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. Confirm the Danzo is indeed the Hokage, find me when you're done. He ordered and left in a swirling vortex. Soon the world will be in for embark of a new era, an era of peace that he will control. Konoha. Naruto lead Wiss and Beerus to a tent where Shizun was working on Tsunade who was lying in bed and was in her old age. Shizun saw Naruto and was shocked at the two people behind him. Shizun, don't worry this is Wiss. He's going to heal the Hokage. Naruto assured. Wiss walked forward holding his scepter over Tsunade and concentrated as a green light glowed around her and soon she started to return to her young form. Tsunade groaned and opened her eyes and saw Shizun, Naruto, a tall blue skinned man, and a cat. Okay, this has to be a dream. She started to sit up and Shizun cried holding her. Naruto smiled at this and looked at the angel and bowed thank you. Wiss waved it off. Naruto what's going on, who are these two? Tsunade asked. He looked over at Wiss and asked to tell her everything. Who had introduced himself with Beerus and began to tell her the same he had told Naruto, from the universe to the destroyers and the majestic Saiyans. Tsunade was just same reaction as Naruto, she knew Minato and Kishina were his parents, but an alien race, well she figured Minato was different since he was strong and fast than any other shinobi she's ever known, hell she remembers the time she made a bet with him at arm wrestling and well. Let's just say she lost lots of money, Tsunade was considered to be the strongest shinobi behind A the Rakage, and she couldn't believe she had lost. 
and with the king's permission, Beerusama will train Naritasan to be a god of destruction for Universe Zero. Sunade's jaw dropped at this, and so did her apprentice. Shizun. Please tell me you have sake she said. Shizun spoke, still in shock, hi. But pour me a drink. Sunade had a feeling a headache was going to come. Normally Shizun would go against this, but she could use a drink for herself too, and served a cup. If you don't mind, I'll take a drink too. Said Beerus, Shizun looked at Sunday who shrugged allowing it. Beerus was handed the drink and saw Tsunade drank it like nothing, Beerus smelled it and drank which made him cough. Too strong. Grinned Tsunade, Wis giggled. Once Beerus was alright he cleared his throat. Anyways moving on. I will be teaching the boy how to control his newfound power and the way of the destroyer. Naruto stepped in Hakajama. He said, which shocked her, there's more you should know. He explained to her about his confrontation with Nagato and him revealing the true Akatsuki leader. Many things were going through Tsunade's head, with the true leader of the Akatsuki out there still, and eight of the tailed beasts captured, it was not safe for Naruto. I want to go. She heard from Naruto and looked at him in surprise. Naruto explained this is a huge opportunity for me to get stronger, if I can learn how to control my new powers, I can finish the Akatsuki for good. Then I can try to find Sasuke. He looked down. Wiss and Beerus glanced at each other. Tsunade looked at her surrogate son. She sighed and closed her eyes all right then. I let you go. He looked up and had thought it would take more convincing. Before you go I need to speak to both of you, Naruto, find your friends and tell them I'm sending you on a secret training mission, no questions asked she ordered. He left the tent. Once alone she spoke what is the responsibility a destroyer has? She asked. Destroyer's responsibility is to watch over their universe, any threats and races that put their universe in danger, the destroyer will eliminate them, even if he or she must destroy a planet to do so. Explained Wiss. Tsunade's eyes widened at this. Yes, I do seem ruthless, but think of it as shinobi have done the same for many years. Am I not wrong? Wiss stated the facts. Tsunade didn't even argue and sighed knowing it was all true, every village is always paranoid of power, like Kumo and Iwa were when they destroyed the Uzumaki clan, fearing their power of Yuenjutsu, was she making the right decision to let Naruto go? Narutasen has potential to be a god of destruction, one that I think this universe might need. Wiss said. Tsunade looked at her drink that Shizun poured as thoughts were going through her head. She knows Naruto was a kind-hearted bright kid, but would he really have what it takes to be a destroyer? She looked at Wiss where will you be? She asked. Beerus answered he'll be on my planet, time will go by fast, a week's training would mean a day here. This shocked Tsunade. She nods looking at the two. Then please, take care of him. Tsunade asked Wiss, she got up from the bed face to face with Beerus and gave a hard glare I'll warn you. If I find out something bad has happened to him god or not. She let the threat hang and unleashed a small amount of green chakra. Beerus narrowed his eyes but saw no fear in her eyes, he grinned. He will be fine Hikajusama, I will assure that. Wiss cut Beerus before he said anything. Naruto was walking back after talking to his friends about his training mission, he remembered the hurt look on Hinata's face and had promised her he would return, he saw Wiss and Beerus. Well then it looks like we should be off now. Beerus said. Alright, let's do it. Naruto declared. Wiss took us away, Beerus said. As you wish Beerusama. Wiss tapped his scepter on the ground and the three had vanished. Chapter 2 Reacquaintance with an old friend. Naruto vs. the Yandame Rakage. Beerus home planet. Slightly the planet had shaken from the shockwave and loud impacts were heard. Who was standing by as he watched two speed blurs colliding and disappearing before reappearing. Naruto and Beerus appeared in the air as they continued to assault with a fury of punches and block each other's attacks. Seems Naruto has learned quite a lot in a short time, his speed has improved dramatically. When he first fought Beerusama he had used Sage Mode, I think he called it to keep up. However it seems when he goes Majestic Super Saiyan he pushes Beerusama to another level. Not to mention the more he uses it, the more his body adapts to the point where he can keep up with Beerusama in his normal state. Even though Beerusama was only using 3% of his power it's still impressive. The two fighter landed on the ground still exchanging punches. The time on the hurdless was almost up. That's enough. Commanded Wiss. The destroyer and his students stopped and stood back bowing to each other. I'm impressed. You're able to keep up with me in your normal state for a few minutes without going into your majestic Super Saiyan mode. When we first fought I only used 3% of my power against you in your Sage mode, which you managed to keep up with me for a minute, but with your majestic Saiyan mode, I had to increase my power by 5 more percent, but now weeks later you're able to push me to the point where I have to use 30% of my power, and that's against your majestic mode. It may not seem much, but it is impressive. Beerus told his student. Naruto wore what he had on before he left the village with only slight tears, but nothing Wiss can fix. During his time training under Beerus Naruto has learned much. 
first learning how to control his Kai energy and turn it into a weapon and to fly. He then learned how to control his majestic Super Saiyan mode. His Tejutsu wasn't that impressive at first, but with Beerus's help he was taught destroyer martial arts. He had been wearing black weight wristbands each weighing 5 tons, his black boots were also 5 tons, he had been wearing them for weeks. Once he gets used to them Whis will increase the weights. Naruto's stomach was rumbling as it was close to eating time. Being a Saiyan he had to consume a lot more food. Luckily Whis brought back a dozen of Raymonds for Michiraku for him and Beerus who took a liking to it very much. Him, Beerus and Whis were sitting crisscrossed with big cups of Raymond in front of them. They waited for the Herglist to end. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. The Herglist and time ended. All right gentlemen time for your reward. Whis said. The two had giant smiles on their faces and opened the top. The smell hit their nose making their mouth water. They picked up their chopsticks and broke them in two, I did Akamasu the three said, and began to chow down. Naruto was enjoying his ramen as he just ate away, Beerus was just taking long slurps of the noodles. He swallowed his food. Thanks for bringing back some ramen for Michiraku Wiss. Naruto appreciated the angel. Oh no problem Naruto, at least someone appreciates it. Wiss said as he gave a small glare to Beerus who swallowed his noodles and heard the comment. Thank you Wish for bringing me some ramen. Happy. Beerus said a little annoyed. Wiss gave a smirk. So, how strong are these Saiyans Goku and Vegeta? Naruto asked, slurping his noodles. Ever since Beerus told him of Universe 7 Saiyans that had been on his mind for a while. Wiss spoke as he projected the image from his scepter gem, showing a short man with tall spiky hair wearing blue spandex with chest armor. Well first there's Vegeta who was the prince of planet Vegeta due to his father being king of the planet before it was destroyed, he had worked under an alien overlord named Frieza, where him and his partner another Saiyan named Nappa, had went to earth to destroy it, but Goku had stopped them. He continued as Naruto silently watched at the image of Vegeta fighting Goku, but eventually defeated. Since then a rivalry was born between the two. Vegeta at first didn't accept that Goku was stronger than him because of his pride, but that changed when Goku had faced his toughest opponent Majin Buu. Naruto saw Goku who had looked completely different with long spiky gold hair facing a pink monster. Vegeta has always trained in any way to surpass Goku, it was amazing since he was able to hold himself against Birasama and landed a few blows where Goku couldn't when he first fought against him. Naruto was impressed, he knew this guy sounded just like Sasuke due to their pride, but he sounded strong, plus being able to land a few blows to a destroyer, that was something. He then saw an image of a man with a goofy grin and spiky black hair. He wore an orange traditional and loose guy that was secured together with a blue obi tied in a knot at the left of his waist. He also wore blue wristbands that cover nearly his entire forearms and blue boots that clasped together on the front of his shins. Goku on the other hand was sent to earth before planet Vegeta's destruction. He was found by an old man named Gohan, as the years passed growing up, Goku had faced many powerful foes. Becoming an adult he had learned of his Saiyan heritage from his brother Raditz, who was working to destroy earth. In the end Goku and a former enemy of his won the fight, but it cost his life. The image showed Goku holding Raditz and a green alien blasting a yellow energy beam right through both men's stomachs. But even in death he was able to be trained by the one person that could help him prepare to face Vegeta and his partner. Said Whis. Who? Asked Naruto. The Northern Kai. With only learning a little it was enough for Goku to defeat Vegeta and Nappa. Said Whis and continued. Goku along with his son Gohan and friend Krillin were on a mission to retrieve the Namekian Dragon Balls, I'm sure you remembered them after our lesson. Whis said. Naruto nods as he remembers talking to Whis and learning about the other planets, life forms and other universes including the Dragon Balls. Boy he wouldn't mind wishing for a lifetime supply of Raymond. Whis continued, but unknown to them there was another person who was searching for the Dragon Balls, Frieza. During the battle between the two, Frieza was able to survive one of Goku's powerful techniques, the Spirit Bomb. Naruto saw the image of Frieza, and just by looking at him he may not see much, but he had a feeling he was no pushover as he fought Goku, but was awful at the spirit bomb Goku had thrown at him. Frieza had then killed Goku's best friend Krillin, which triggered a deep rage emotion inside Goku, causing him to transform into a Super Saiyan. Was finished. Naruto saw Goku in a fit of rage after witnessing the death of his best friend, who had transformed into a Super Saiyan. Naruto would have asked more, but the image had changed showing his old comrade Sasuke battling his sensei Kakashi. What the hell, Wisensei what's going on? Naruto asked as he watched the battle. Hmm, it seems Tsunade-sama was invited to a meeting with the other leaders, but your former friend Sasuke Kachiha attacked everyone in the meeting for unknown reasons. Wis explained. Naruto's eyes were big. What the hell was Sasuke thinking? Does he realize doing this would consider him an international criminal, he thought he was smart, but this is the stupidest thing he's done. 
Naruto looked at Beerus and say, please let me go back, I know it's against the rules, but. Alright. Said Beerus. Naruto was surprised at his sensei's answer so simply, but he wasn't going to argue. Wis take us to the battle please. Beerus said and spit the please part out. As you wish, Beerusama. Wis bowed and had tapped his staff as the three glowed and disappeared. At the battle scene. Sakura was getting ready to stab Sasuke from behind, but stopped as memories of Team 7 came to her head. Sasuke turned around and grabbed her by the throat and took the kunai from her hand. Bakashi rushed trying to save her but was too far. Sasuke drew kunai back. Don't do it Sasuke. Kakashi pleaded as he tried to pick up speed. Sasuke then went for a slash, everything was just in slow motion, but as the kunai came close, Sasuke was stopped by a grip on his arm. He turned to look who it was, and to his slight shock it was his former comrade, the one he would bow one day to kill, Naruto Uzumaki. But something was different about him, it was not the clothes but something else. Naruto left palm thrust Sasuke in the chest, sending him back skidding across the water crashing in the earth wall. Sasuke fell down on one knee coughing blood, but looked up and glared at him. Iris and Wiss were floating above watching. Sakura looked in shock as she saw Naruto and what he just did. Kakashi was relieved that Naruto saved Sakura, but was too shocked at his student strength. It's been a while since my old friend. I didn't expect we would be meeting like this. Naruto said calmly. Sasuke got up wiping the blood from his mouth while Naruto continued. You know you were always known as the prodigy and being the smart one in our class. But after seeing you attacked five cages. I guess you being smart is out of the picture. Naruto taunted with no smile at all. Sasuke grit his teeth in anger, how dare he. I see you joined the Akatsuki too. Naruto said looking at the robe that Sasuke wore again not the smartest decision. Sasuke charged while Naruto told Sakura to move. He blocked Sasuke's punch with one arm. But Sasuke was not done and tried to low sweep him, but he just jumped over it and continued to block a combo of punches and kicks from Sasuke. Naruto having enough simply slapped the punch away and simply did a jumping back kick, sending Sasuke skidding on the water stopping himself. How is this possible, how strong is the dope? He made some hand signs Kakengakaku no jutsu. He blew out three huge fireballs. Naruto just lazily dodged two fireballs and stood seeing one coming towards him. Sakura and Kakashi shouted to move, but he didn't listen, and soon the flame engulfed him. Naruto. Shouted the two in horror much to Sasuke's delight, but that had changed. The fire exploded, dying down, showing an unharmed Naruto who was in his majestic Super Saiyan form, glaring at Sasuke. So, after all these years you really have decided to really forget everything we have done as a team for some petty revenge. Naruto said which struck a nerve with Sasuke. Shut up, you don't understand anything. He shouted and pulled his in charge while Naruto lazily just dodged the attacks. He's dodging my attacks like nothing, but how, he's just a loser, a dopey. Sasuke boiled with anger. He jumped back and thrusted his left arm out with a Chidori spear. A beam of lightning chakra shot towards Naruto who still stood calm and just simply grabbed the chakra spear. He shouted releasing his Kai energy and shattered the chakra lightning beam and vanished from the spot. Sasuke was shocked at his former comrade's transformation. He didn't have time to react as Naruto appeared in front of him kneeing him in the stomach, making him spit out a glob of blood and was punched up in the air. Naruto vanished and appeared above him hitting a double axe handle, sending Sasuke crashing into the water. Sakura on the sideline was just watching Naruto just handling Sasuke like a rag doll, she was amazed as he transformed, but most to her surprise. Naruto was really flying. Bakashi was just watching the fight going on, and just like Sakura was amazed at Naruto's transformation. He's even faster, possibly faster than Guy. But where on earth did he learn to fly? Sasuke exploded out the water as he was in his giant purple Susanoo form and had a rage expression. I've had enough of you Yuzumaki, you will not be making a fool out of me. He shouted. His Susanoo form created a bow and arrow pulling the arrow back. Naruto decided to try and use the Hakai, although he can't use its full power it should be enough. He extended his left arm out with his palm forward and closed his eyes. This should be interesting. It looks like Naruto is going to try to use Hakai, what do you think of Birasama? The angel asked a destroyer. Naruto is just toying with him, it's no different what I do when I'm challenged. Naruto knows he can destroy Sasuke with no problem. Said Beerus not taking his eye off the fight. Sasuke Susanoo shot the bow at high velocity towards the white hair Saiyan. Naruto's eyes snapped open Hakai he shouted, and as the arrow hit his palm, it had slowly started to turn purple and disintegrate into nothing. Sasuke was in disbelief at what he just saw. The white hair Saiyan appeared in front of him, unleashing a fury of punches that started to slightly break Susanoo. Having no choice he had to drop Susanoo. 
however Naruto didn't stop his assault landing a few blows to the body and face then a good hard headbutt, busting Sasuke's forehead open and sending him back again skidding across the water. Naruto walked towards Sasuke and just looked at him with pity. It could have been a different Sasuke. All of this would have never happened. You had everything a shinobi would want, you had parents, money, jutsus, the girls, you had it all. And it still wasn't enough. What would Itachi say now? He questioned making Sasuke give a deadly glare. Sasuke got up and activated his Yadori still glaring at his former comrade. I'm going to kill you, Naruto, if it's the last thing I do. Sasuke shouted with madness as he charged towards him. Naruto looked down in disappointment as he made his final decision. He had remembered Wiss words of being a destroyer, any threat that dangers the universe must be dealt with, he had planned on taking the masked man, but after learning that Sasuke is helping him, he's part that puts the universe at risk. Sasuke drew his arm back and thrust it forward, but to his disappointment, Naruto grabbed his arm. Sasuke looked up to Naruto who gave a cold look. I'm sorry Sasuke, but if I let you live the innocents will be harmed. I cannot allow that. Naruto said in a cold tone. He drew his right arm back and a white glass-like sword energy formed around his right forearm to his hand. He has to remember to thank Whis as he was the one who had told him that the majestic Saiyans have the ability to shape their Kai energy into shape weapons. Goodbye. Old friend. Naruto said as he thrusted his arm, but the blade passed through Sasuke's body as he was sucked into a vortex. I think that's enough. He heard the monotone voice which made his eyes narrowed and saw the orange masked man that Nagato said was the true leader. So, you're the real leader of the Akatsuki Naruto said and dropped his majestic Saiyan mode. You be correct boy. The last time we met I was Tobi, but as you can see it was just a charade. I am the true leader of the Akatsuki. The former leader of the Achiha clan and the most powerful shinobi to live. I am Madara Ichiha. Madara introducing himself. Madara Ichiha? That's impossible, he was killed at the Valley of the End by our Shadame Hokage. Kakashi accused. That would have been the case, but as you can see, the story was incorrect. Replied Madara. Zetsu appeared next to him, and Sasuke appeared out of the swirl vortex on his knees panting, and Karen went by his side. Karen heals up Sasuke's injuries to make sure his chakra is restored. He ordered as the two again vanished in the swirling vortex. Madara turns to the blonde Saiyan. You have made quite a name for yourself, Naruto Uzumaki. The hero of the Konoha. I must admit your newfound power has intrigued me. To be able to defeat pain that's quite impressive but of course. He could not understand the true power of the Rinnegan. Naruto didn't say anything as he just glared at him. I have given the cages a choice to hand over the Hachibi and the Kaiubi, but of course they foolishly said no. Now you have a choice, surrender and come peacefully or... You can throw your friends and sensei's lives away and will take you by force. Madara said giving the Saiyan an option. Iris, although trying to keep quiet, couldn't help but laugh out loud, causing everyone to look up in shock except Naruto seeing an anthropomorphic purple cat and a blue tall man with a scepter floating down. Iris wiped a tear from his eye. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting, I just couldn't help myself hearing a mere mortal giving a choice to my student, that's the funniest thing I have heard in centuries. Centuries both Kakashi and Sakura were shocked hearing this, looking at Beerus wondering one thing. Who was he? Madara leaked a kai towards Beerus whose eyes then narrowed dangerously leaked a little of his destroyer energy. This made Madara step back, and a bead of sweat dripped from his forehead. I am possible how is he holding so much chakra? No it's not chakra, what is he? No human being should possess this kind of power. Though Madara. Poor Zetsu surrounded Beerus to attack him which was foolish as he releases out his destroyer energy from his body, wiping the Zetsus from existence. Sakura and Kakashi had to cover their eyes from the energy, and once it died down they looked and saw the four Zetsus nowhere. Beerus was not happy at what just happened and looked at the real Zetsu. He pointed one finger at him. Hold on sensei, the Akatsuki are my problem. As my duty of being a destroyer I must handle it. Naruto said. Beerus was giving a hard stare, but Naruto didn't back down. Sakura and Kakashi now were lost wondering what was going on. Destroyer. Naruto turned to look at Madara to answer my choice Madara. You can go to hell. He smirked. Madara's lone eye narrowed at the Jinchuriki very well. You made your choice. Then I declared the fourth great ninja war. Madara Sharingan spun wildly. Kakashi and Sakura were shocked at what they heard, but Naruto gave a smirk. So, you say you're the strongest shinobi to ever live huh? Naruto crossed his arms. Then prove your words, when the war starts I will be expecting you to be at your best. Just to let you know I'm serious. Naruto spread his legs slightly apart and clenched his fist and shouted. He first transformed into his majestic Super Saiyan mode, but he was not done as he still was increasing his power, causing a hard gust of wind. Akashi and Sakura again held their hands up blocking the winds from their faces. 
Iris's eyes narrowed as he sensed his student energy growing higher, never did he sense this much energy when they fought. Was he holding back? Naruto's white hair stood up even more, slightly longer and rigid. His muscle mass slightly increased, and white lightning crackled around his body. The white aura around his body transformed into a jagged fierce flame-like appearance. This was majestic Super Saiyan 2. Naruto smirked as he saw Madara's nervous body expression. I hope you don't disappoint me Madara. I'll be waiting. Madara didn't say anything as he disappeared in the swirl vortex, and Zetsu sank in the ground disappearing. Naruto had dropped his MSSJ2, AE Majestic Super Saiyan 2, and looked at his sensei who glared at him while he gave his usual sheepish smile and scratched the back of his head. Did I do something wrong? He said and was grabbed between his cheeks and pulled close to Beerus. What was that I just saw? Have you been holding out on me? Why have you not used that power in our training? Beerus demanded answers. Naruto was sweating never seeing his sensei this mad, but luckily Whis came through. Oh, come now Beerusama. I have known about the Naruto transformation for quite some time. Spoke Whis making Beerus let go snapping his head at the angel. Whis why did you not tell me Beerus shouted comically. To be fair Beerusama, Naruto asked me to keep it a secret until the right time and I swore that I would. Pointed out Whis. Beerus couldn't say anything else but grumbled under his breath and looked back at his student. When we get back Whis will be doubling your weight. Said Beerus with a grin as he saw the horror look on his student's face think of it as punishment. Wiz saw his scepter gem blinking and answered it seeing a projected image of Goku with Vegeta. Hey Wiz. Greeted Goku with his goofy smile. Goku, what a surprise. What can I do for you? Wiz asked. I was just wondering if Beerusama was busy at the moment, I can use some training, and so can Vegeta. Goku pointing his thumb over Vegeta who elbowed him. Shut up Kakarot, I can speak for myself. Vegeta scolded. Wiz saw Beerus talking to a silver-haired mask shinobi and Naruto talking to a pink-haired teen girl. As a matter of fact he is at the moment with his apprentice. Wiss answered. This had surprised the both shouting what? Hold on, what do you mean apprentice, can we meet him? Asked Goku. Vegeta didn't say it but was too curious of this apprentice. Well you're both lucky because I was about to suggest Beerusama to bring the both of you to meet him. Wiss said. Awesome, I bet he's really strong to beat Beerusama apprentice. Goku commented and was excited. Wiss heard his name being called and saw Beerus approaching him. I must be going but we will visit shortly. Oh, and if you don't mind could you kindly ask Bulma if she has more of that delicious ice cream sundae? He asked. You got Wiss, we'll see you soon. The connection cut and the angel walked over to Beerus. Something happened Wiss? Asked Beerus. No my lord I just received a call from Goku along with Vegeta requesting for some training. The angel told Beerus. Really now? Said Beerus as he looked at his apprentice talking to the two shinobis. Perfect timing. Grin Beerus Wiss how far will it take to get to universe 7 from here? Asked the destroyer. About 3 hours 20 minutes and 10 seconds my lord. Wiss said exactly. Beerus was a little annoyed that it would be a long trip, but nevertheless. Naruto. Beerus called his student who came. I'm going to be gone for a couple of days to universe 7, so you better enjoy the days you have. Naruto was a little surprised at this, but at least he'll get to see his friends for a couple days. Beerus stood by whose side who tapped the water with his scepter making them glow and vanishing. But the five cages. I still don't trust you Tsunade. This happens to be the second time an Achiha no less goes rogue from your village. Said a huge man with muscles, dark skin and having slick blonde hair. The Yandame Rakage. Tsunade's eyes narrowed at the muscle head, but before she could say anything. You're a fool to think that. Said a voice. The cages and Mifune turned towards the voice and saw a person who looked exactly like the Yandame, shocking them, but one person exploded. Namaka's team. Shouted an old short man. Anoki the Sandame Tsuchikic. Naruto. Tsunade surprised to see him. Oh, I'm such a handsome young man. Thought a beautiful woman in a blue dress, long red hair with a bang covering her right eye. May Turumi the Gadi Mizukic. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this. Why would this old geezer think he was the Yandame Hokage? No, you old geezer, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. I'm a Konoha shinobi and the one that defeated pain. That's impossible, my men had died fighting this pain person, how can a mere kid like you defeat him? Shouted A. Tsunade was furious at the Rakage's accusation. If you don't believe me then prove it, Naruto taunted if you can lay one punch on me under one minute, then I'll admit I never defeated pain, but if you lose, I want an apology. But not to me. To her he said pointing at Tsunade. Tsunade was surprised at the statement, but then shouted at him to not be an idiot. The Rakage was in no mood after the fiasco with the Achiha and his brother still missing. 
he had already vanished with his lightning release armor on and was in front of Naruto, drawing his arm back to punch him, but he just moved his head lazily dodging the fast punch. Is that really all you got? Naruto said in a bored tone. The cages were shocked at this, even Tsunade. The Reikage's lightning release armor was the fastest jutsu behind the Yandame's Horation, and the kid just dodged the attack like nothing. They continued with faster punches that were lightning fast, but again to their surprise Naruto was too almost like a blur, dodging the lightning fast punches. You have gotten stronger my friend thought a red spiky haired teen with a red kanji mark for love on his forehead and a big calabash shaped gourd on his back. The god in Kazakiage, Gara of the Sand. Naruto continued to dodge the attacks and soon a minute had passed which meant time was up. Naruto simply put his left hand up grabbing the punch which the rakage thought was foolish as he would get shocked, but to his surprise, the lightning had no effect on him. A minute has passed rakage dono looks like I win, now about that apology. The hell with your apology. Shouted the rakage and delivered another punch to Naruto. Instead of flying and going through walls he still stood as he blocked the fist with one hand and just continued to block the punches. Each impact was louder and louder. Soon the rakage jumped back and was panting while Naruto didn't even break a sweat. AMV distributes to Pify 000405. My turn. Naruto grinned as he vanished appearing in front of A and set his hand near the chest and did on inch punch, sending the muscle head flying through the wall. Naruto went to the outside, but before he did he sensed someone behind him preparing to strike, but he vanished in speed as the sword came down. Nani C was surprised at this. Naruto appeared behind him and lightly chopped him in the neck, which knocked the Kumo Shinobi out as he dropped. Naruto saw a sword strike coming from above him from the Rakage's second bodyguard Derry, but he just caught the blade with just two fingers, shocking the Black Lightning user. Naruto kneed the man in the gut hard, dropping him as he coughed violently. Naruto saw the Rakage still in his lightning armor release flying towards him. He shouted and became a MSSJ sending A back a little. Tsunade was amazed as she looked at the energy surrounding Naruto, this wasn't chakra that's for sure, so this was the power of a majesty super saiyan that was spoke of. Naruto stepped sideways as he dodged the charging rakage, but not without giving him a chop to the throat. The rakage skid but was still on his feet but coughed hard feeling as if he got out of an iron choke grip. I'm still waiting for that apology said Naruto and moved his head slightly, dodging the rakage's punch which hit the wall destroying it. Naruto gave a hard headbutt colliding with A's pushing him far back. A straightened up and his lightning released armor intensely as a crackle of lightning danced around his body. Naruto is impressed at the man's strength, but still nothing he can handle. He got in a battle stance and made a gesture to bring it. A vanished as he charged at Naruto who took charge as they clashed fist creating a big shockwave and exchanging punch after punch or blocks. Naruto landed a low, medium and high kick combo, followed by a spinning kick which A blocked but winced feeling the power of the kicks. Naruto had sped up unleashing a fury of punches as A blocked them but was being pushed back to the outside. The cages and Mifune had followed them. Outside. The weather was snowing as the battle continued on. Naruto stopped attacking and vanished making A look around, but the Saiyan appeared in front of him hitting an uppercut sending him up in the air. He appeared in front of the rakage and started to punch fast left and right. A could only keep his guard up, but he didn't know how much longer he could hold it. The strength of this is unbelievable he thought. Naruto gave a double axe handle sending A crashing down hard, but only had little scratches. The cages had arrived to see Naruto in the air flying, which shocked them above the rakage and hit him with a double axe handle. Tsunade Sama has Naruto san always been this strong? asked the god in Mizukage. Tsunade didn't answer as she still was looking at the fight, as A again went to exchange punches with Naruto, who just blocked and smacked the attacks away and elbowed him in the sternum and then connected a hard right punch sending him down, but he landed on his feet holding his chest. Naruto had recently undergone a special training, and as you can see this is the result so far. The god in Hokage said. So far. So you mean he's not done with the training, then Hokage-sama asked the former Ichibi Jinchuriki. You are correct Kazakage-sama. Tsunade said. Ara had looked at his brother and was just amazed at how strong he had become. Disrespectful Gaki. Scowled at Tsuchikage. Naruto smack one of A's punch retaliate with his own punches and spun delivering a dropkick to the chest sending him back, but Naruto appeared behind kicking him, then appeared in front of him, unleashing a fury of punches to the face, and grabbed his arm and swung him around throwing him to the ground. The rakage looked up and saw the white hair saying. He only had one chance at this. With one last attempt he pushed more chakra into his armor and vanished. Naruto, having no time, was kneed in the gut making him hunch and was picked up powerbomb positioned by A. This is the end. Shouted the rakage as they both came down. Glad your bomb. Shouted A as the two were covered in lightning and as they came down a huge explosion was made making a shockwave. 
The hokage couldn't see due to the smoke, but once clearing up it showed a big crater and saw the rakage holding the power down Saiyan in a powerbomb landing position. Tsunade was worried and fearing for the worse. They pushed the Saiyan away. He sighed as he got up walking away, but something didn't feel right. He looked back which was a mistake. Naruto was now in MSSJ2 in front of A giving a cold glare. A had enough and punched him in the gut, but it had no effect. Naruto grabbed the arm tightening the grip and moving it from his stomach and delivered a punch of his own to the rakage's stomach, making him fall on one knee coughing violently and chopped him in the neck, causing A to be wide eye, and then eyes rolled back as he was knocked out. End. Naruto powered down and saw the black lightning user jump besides his leader and glared at him. Enough. Shouted an authority voice from Mifune the samurai general. Barry hesitated but did what was told, he was joined by C who helped pick up their leader and get out the crater, while Naruto just flew out and landed seeing Tsunade looking annoyed, and he gave a sheepish smile. Surprise. He smiled goofy. Chapter 3 Kanahagakur Dark Secret Naruto vs Danzo. When Saiyans Collide Part 1. In the Hokage's office. Naruto along with Tsunade had returned from the Five Cage meeting, as it was decided that they would form an alliance to fight against Madara. Right now we find Naruto in the Hokage office in front of her, standing behind her desk in her seat with her fingers interlocking. You said there's something important to tell me? He asked and saw her going Hokage mode. Yes I did. But before I tell. You have to promise me to stay calm. She said which confused him. Um? Okay what's this about? He asked. Tsunade took a deep breath and spoke. First, it's time to tell you about your parents. Naruto's eyes went wide. Your parents were strong shinobi, especially your father, he was a hero to Kanahagakur, and so was your mother. Her name was Kashina Yuzumaki, and she was the second of the Kayubi. Naruto's mouth dropped a little in shock, she came here from her homeland Yuzushiagakur before it was destroyed. Naruto had small tears running down his cheek and wiped it away and nodded for her to continue. Your mother was like you when she was your age. She was brash, loud mouth but a great shinobi. Tsune chuckled, making him laugh a little. As for your father? He was Minato Namika's better known as the Yandame Hokage. She revealed. Naruto felt his brain going to overload as he heard who his father was, but at the same time smacked himself for not realizing it sooner as that old bastard that Tsuchikage called him out. He felt two feelings, anger and happiness. His father had turned him into a Jinchuriki, but it understood why he did it. He was happy that his father was the hero he had always idolized since childhood. Now that you know them. There's more you should know. About the night you were born. Tsunade said, drawing the Saiyan's attention as he never heard much about that night. All he knew was the day the Kayubi attacked. I had looked over Sensei files and found something interesting. She pulled out the folder and opened it. Your mother was taken outside of Kanahagakur for safety as she was giving birth, which would weaken her seal, Minato, and Sensei's wife, along with her assistants, were the only ones that were with her. As you were born an orange spiral masked man killed the nurses and kidnapped you. Naruto froze as he remembered Madara's appearance, he clenched gripping his chair as it cracked, and a purple aura was radiating off him. Tsunade herself for the first time since her battle years ago against the fierce shinobi, the late Hanzo the Salamander, she felt fear. Realizing Tsunade was shaking a tiny bit he closed his eyes remembering his lessons with Whis. The purple aura had disappeared and gave an apologetic look, he was good. For now. She cleared her throat and focused back from what it also said was that your dad managed to take you back, but the bastard took your mother where he then ripped the Kayubi out of her and controlled it with a Sharingan. Naruto blood boiled as he couldn't believe he was face to face with his mother's murder, your father fought the man and managed to break the control over the Kayubi, and you know the rest. He had to seal it into me. Naruto concludes by making Tsunade nod confirming it. He now fully understood why his father did what he did, but something made him curious. Wait, what about dad's family? He asked. Minato was an orphan as far as his file said until he was adopted by a civilian woman named Kiran Amicus. Tsunade said. Meanwhile he was in his thoughts thinking that his dad was possibly a Saiyan, it all added up. He has to remember to ask Wiss about more history of the majestic Saiyans. What's this? He heard confusion from Tsunade which broke his thinking. She pulled out an envelope and recognized her sensei clan symbol. She took out a letter. Dear Tsunade. If you're reading this then that means you got him Hokage. I am proud of you taking the mantle just as your family did to protect the village. I assume you will or have met young Naruto, he reminds me quite much as Nawaki. Tsunade smiled wiping a small tear in end of the letter add chakra to my clan symbol, what you married may anger you and be disappointed in me, but with you now as Godaim Hokage, you can make things right like I should have years ago, thank you Tsunade. Sincerely your sensei here is in Siratobi. Tsunade saw the clan symbol and added chakra which poofed out a black folder and opened it. 
Naruto watched Tsunade's reaction seeing a horror look spread on her face and a minute later after reading through it her face turned. She tossed the folder on the desk close to Naruto who took a look at it and read through. His eyes hardened and threw the folder on the desk when he finished and was pissed. Why? Naruto growled out. Tsunade rubbed the bridge of her nose and pulled out a bottle of sake from her desk and a cup. She poured a glass and drank. Anzo Shimura has done many horrible things, but this by far is the worst. Unfortunately there's no evidence linking Danzo to the death of Shisui Ichiha, but I know for sure he had something to do with it. Why don't we ask then? Naruto said and Tsunade saw that he had an idea. What's your idea? She asked. Danzo was right walking towards the Hokage office as he was called. He had his root agent bodyguard Fu and Torin in the shadows following him. Entering the office he saw Tsunade behind the desk as she was expecting him. Danzo. Have a seat. She said but most likely it was an order. Taking a seat. She took out the black folder and read. As you know years ago, the Ichiha clan was planning a coup which resulted in extermination of the clan by Itachi Ichiha. However I see that there was alternate way stop them by Shisui Ichiha who unfortunately was murdered. Care to explain to me Danzo of your actions. Danzo remained calm I don't. He was cut off as Tsunade slammed her hands on the desk and rose up from her seat in anger. With the bullshit Danzo, I know you have something to do with the murder of Shisui Ichiha. If you have any dignity left. You'll confess right now. She coolly said at the end. Tsunade you are being ridiculous. I had nothing to do with the murder of Shisui Ichiha. Danzo retorted. She didn't break eye contact from the Warhawk. What do you say to this Naruto? She asked which surprised Danzo as he didn't sense the who appeared out the corner. Naruto's eyes were cold blue looking at the Ani bastard. You're lying. The minute Tsunade questioned you your left hand gave a tiny twitch, not to mention your chakra spiked enough for me to notice. Without warning his left hand formed a white kai blade and quickly slashed which Danzo dodged, but he smirked as the black robe concealing the old man's right arm fell, and so did his bandages including a gold bracer, revealing his right arm which was sickly pale, and in them were ten mature Sharingan. What do we have here? Naruto smirked, making Danzo grit his teeth in anger. Danzo Shimura, you have degraded not only the dead of the Ichiha clan, but my grandfather. Therefore as Godim Hokage you are hereby executed immediately. Tsunade said in an icy tone. What I did was benefit and for the good of Kanahagakur, if had the Ichiha succeed the Ku village would be nothing but rubble, Hiruzen was a fool to Danzo was cut off as Naruto had enough from his mouth disrespecting the Sandame, and delivered a flying kick to the face, sending him through two walls to the outside crashing through the streets, shocking the civilians. Naruto turned, and with his Kai blade, locked a Tanto blade from Torn. He put his finger against the root agent's forehead and flicked him, sending him out the window. Fuyamanaka attacked, but Naruto vanished and appeared behind him chopping him in the neck, knocking out the root agent. Not wasting time he flew out towards Danzo, while Tsunade called Anbus for reinforcements. He landed on the ground seeing the old fool getting up. Civilians were in a far away distance shocked at what they were seeing. Anzo Shimura, you are found guilty for treason and the murder of Shisui Ichiha. Naruto said out loud shocking all the civilians including Kanoha Ten and the clan heads who arrived on the scene except Sai as he knew. What's going on? Questioned Kiba. I don't know but from what we heard just now at all. Said Shikamaru. Shikaku began to explain Danzo Shimura is or was one of the elder advisors to the Sandame Hokage and was a former teammate of his. He was someone who could not be trusted, years ago he had created a force like the Anbu, but they were called rude Anbus, much like ours they take on dangerous missions. However they were taught not to feel any emotions or regrets. They would consider themselves tools and nothing more. He had wanted to have a position as Hokage, but luckily Hiruzen-sama was chosen by the Nidame and disbanded the route. How was he able to be an advisor for the Hokage if he was convicted of this? Questioned Tenten. Politics. Kakashi said watching what was going to happen. That one eye bastard had this coming to him. Tsum scoffed as she had never liked the man. Anzo glared at the as he tore the bandages off his right face showing Shisui Sharingan. At this point it was useless hiding it. You're mine now boy. He exclaimed as he activated the Manjiku Sharingan Kotamatsukami. Naruto stood unaffected and had disappeared before reappearing in front of him. Before Danzo had a chance to block, Naruto tore the eye right out the socket causing him to scream. He stumbled back holding his wound and gritting his teeth due to the pain. The Kanoha Chunins and clan heads were shocked as they have never seen the side of Naruto before, but mostly Sakura as she looked at her teammate. Naruto with a cold expression held the Sharingan in his bloody left hand. You think you can control me with the Sharingan? Hate to break this to you old man. But I'm not using Kyubi's chakra. I never was. He transformed into his majestic form what you see is my true power. He said in a cold tone pushing white energy out around him. What the hell happened to Naruto asked Kiba why did his hair change color and what's with that chakra? 
No one answered as they had the same question as him. Niji activated his Byakugan to look at the white energy, but the second he did he was almost blinded by it and grunted holding his eyes. Niji-kun are you alright? Asked a concerned Tenten. Niji regained his vision and was shocked it's not chakra, whatever it is it blinded my Byakugan. Hiashi was shocked hearing this. Anzo went through some hand signs and went for a jutsu, but Naruto again appeared in front of him and launched a kick to which he blocked, but the force had made him skid back, suddenly Danzo felt a heavy pain in his back and saw the Jinchuriki had a cage bushin made which punched him in the spine hard, sending his body skidding across the streets and crashing. Do slow Danzo, and here I thought you would be a challenge. Naruto mocked and went towards him, but suddenly he dodged multiple shurikens. Rude Anubis surrounded everywhere. How disappointing old bastard sending your lapdogs to do the job you can't do. The white hair say and mocked Danzo. Brutes attack. He commanded as the Anbus pulled their weapons out and charged. Naruto activated his white Kai blade and dodged one, slashing him across the chest and jumped with a spinning kick, taking out another one. He blocked a blade strike delivered a hard right punch to the gut, making another Anbu cough up a glob of blood as it leaked out of the mask and was pushed back falling flat on his back. Naruto kept walking towards Danzo while a rude Anbu charged at him, but he backhand the man sending him skidding down the ground. Danzo quickly went through hand signs Mokuten smothering bonding technique. His right arm turned into several wood tendrils which wrapped around Naruto. The root leader had a smug grin thinking he had won, but that didn't last long as the energy from Naruto bursted destroying the wooden tendrils. His eyes widened I am possible nothing can break the Shadames Mokuten Kanahagakur Anbu arrived, and Kanoha 11 including the clan heads, joined the battle against the root agents. Naruto with a grin kept walking towards the crippled bastard. Anzo again went through hand signs futon vacuum blade. He blew a gust of sharp wind. Naruto coated his right hand with his white Kai energy and cocked it back giving a hard punch destroying the attack. My turn. Naruto set his flew towards him, launching a fury of punches connecting the body and face. He gave an uppercut sending him high in the air and appeared up above him hitting an axe kick, sending Danzo crashing deep into the ground, causing a big impact. Once he was on the ground the dust had settled and there was a small crater, but nobody. Sakura saw Danzo behind her teammate. Naruto come behind you. She called out. Danzo was forced to use Izanagi which angered him. He appeared behind the Saiyan preparing to end the brat's life and stabbed him or at least tried to, but he grabbed the tip of the tanto and broke the blade. He connected a knee to the stomach and a punch to the jaw, sending the cripple crashing through the streets. He struggled as he got up while blood leaked from his mouth and glared at the Jinchuriki. Naruto observed him and saw one of his Sharingan gone. I see, so those Sharingan have some kind of ability to prevent you from dying, but you lose one every time you use it. Am I right? Naruto asked and got his answer seeing the bastard frown. I'll take that as a yes. He activated his Kai blade in his right hand which transformed into a tall scythe and twirled it around, then pointing at him. Anzo went through hand signs Futon great breakthrough. He drew his head back and blasted a large gust of wind towards Naruto, who pulled the scythe back and gave a huge slash, sending a razor Kai energy line, cutting through the gust leaving him. He proceeded to attack swinging the scythe around which Danzo was barely dodging, but was caught off when he felt a solid kick to his face. Naruto swung the scythe using the blunt side to hit the side of Danzo's head, but he substituted. Waiting patiently he didn't move until he felt an energy behind him and swung the scythe which stabbed into Danzo's chest. He coughed up blood, but he then started to dissolve like a mirage and soon appeared a few feet away, but was panting as he could feel his chakra low, since using Izanagi takes a lot, not to mention using the Mokuten. Naruto could tell Danzo was getting tired, so he decided to end this already. He vanished making the cripple look all around including up. Before he realized it, Naruto popped out of the ground with a solid kick to chin, sending the warhick high in the air. Naruto appeared in front of him as he tried one last attempt to attack, but Naruto grabbed Mokuten's transplanted arm. He gave Danzo a cold stare, and his silver eyes were tinted dark. Danzo who for the first time in his life was feeling. Fear. Never has the man ever showed fear even back in the war. Naruto extended his right palm out in front of Danzo. Any last words? He questioned. I do not have any regrets, you will never understand the true meaning of being Hokage, the sacrifices I made were for the good of Kanahagakur, without me this place would be nothing. Bitterly, Danzo said. You're wrong Danzo. The sockled sacrifices you made were not for the good of Kanahagakur, it almost led to its destruction. As god of destruction of universe zero, it is my duty to eliminate any threats and you Danzo. Are finished. Akai he shouted and suddenly a bright purple light flared around Danzo who screamed in agony as his body started to disintegrate, he tried to use Izanagi, but to his horror it was not working. Naruto smirked and explained Hakai is a powerful energy, once caught in it, there's no way to escape unless you have the power of a sage. 
The sounds of Danzo's screams would forever be scarred in the minds of the Root agents as they witnessed the demise of Danzo Shimura. Once the Root saw the Saiyan looking at them with his cold eyes, they had felt the same thing as their former master. Fear. We surrender. One of the Root Anbu said, dropping his tanto. Others had started to drop their weapons, surrendering, while Kanoha Anbu arrested them. Naruto soon came back down to the ground and dropped his MSSJ form back to himself. He saw his friends coming up to him asking so many questions, but luckily Tsune did, alright that's enough. Naruto will explain everything but not here, in my office. She told them and turned to the civilians. Citizens of Kanahagakur, what you just heard was indeed true. Danzo Shimura had caused many treasons and was responsible for the attack of our home, he had also defiled the grave of not only the Achiha clan, but to our Shadame Hokage she spoke. The civilians were all shocked which turned to disgust at the man's action. Naruto said I apologize for what you just saw, it's not my intention to make you all fear me. I made a promise to myself to protect this village from any threats, and Danzo Shimura's actions proved that he would harm you all, instead of protecting you. But as long as I breathe I Naruto Uzumaki Namikas will protect you all. Even if it costs my life. Naruto said out loud with very deep determination. The last name had everyone wittied except Tsunade and Shikamaru who had been suspicious for a while. The civilians and Shinobus were shocked. How could they have been blind, he was practically a copy of the Yandame. The blonde spiky hair, blue eyes, even the tanned skin. After hearing his speech the civilians and even the Shinobus respected him more not because of his power, but because he had inherited the same will as their past four Hokages and his father. Naruto smiled seeing the villagers cheering for him, but unknown to him he was being watched. Universe 7. Beerus and Whis along with Goku, Gohin, Piccolo and Vegeta saw the battle. Gohin and Piccolo were impressed by the young man's power, especially his skills meanwhile Goku was so eager to fight him, especially seeing the MSSJ form, Vegeta much like Goku, wanted to fight the Saiyan and see if his race was strong, just as Whis said. Be strong and fast. Most of those attacks that were thrown at him didn't even make a scratch. Piccolo said. Yeah he is. I'm surprised he's able to shape his Kai energy into a blade, I didn't think that was possible. Gohin said. Aw oh man, I can't wait to meet him. Goku exclaimed excitedly, what do you think of Vegeta? Hmm, I'll admit I'm interested in the boy's power. Especially that majestic Super Saiyan form. Vegeta said. Goku grinned you're not the only one. He said. Beerus was silent as he listened to the Saiyan's conversation Vegeta might be able to slightly push Naruto back, but it won't be enough even in Super Saiyan Blue. However Goku on the other hand with the combination of his Kaiken and Super Saiyan Blue form, he'll be a match. Now that you see my apprentice's strength and power. We'll see how you fare against him. Beerus said. Goku looked excited and ready while Vegeta was calm, but was ready to take his training up a notch. Whis please take us back to my planet. Said Beerus. Beerus had a tick mark and turned to who's who didn't hear him as he was enjoying an ice cream sundae, Beerus's tick mark grew bigger. And where's my ice cream sundae? He demanded. On a night time. The blonde Saiyan was taking a walk during the night. After explaining everything to his friends about him being part alien called a majestic Saiyan they were shocked. But they still saw him as their friend, except for a certain Hyuga girl and a pink hair medic. Naruto gave Tsunade the Sharingani that Danzo stole from Shisui and to be placed away. While doing that she gave Naruto a map to find his father's compound which he found. He was standing outside the gate which was closed and saw a seal. Biting his thumb he swiped over it as it unlocked. He had entered the house seeing a beautiful living room and looked inside a nice kitchen, he went upstairs and opened one door, the room wall was a sky blue color with white cloud designs, there was a white crib in the middle of the room, inside was a white sheet with a pillow, a small red blanket and an orange stuffed toad with other baby toys. He picked up a toad and gave a small smile, knowing this was supposed to be his room. Setting the toad back in the crib he left, closing the door. He looked around more and saw a room that had a seal on the handle. Taking a closer look at the seal it looked like it required Kai energy. Grabbing the handle he pushed his Kai energy which unlocked the door. Entering the room was dark. Finding a switch he flipped on the lights. In the middle of a room was some kind of machine, going up to it there was a hand scanner. He put his hand down and figured he had to use Kai which he did. The machine scanned. Scanning complete, confirmed Naruto Uzumaki Namikas the machine said. A holograph appeared and standing there was his father, Minato Namikas who had on his coat. Naruto. If you're reading this then that means you have unlocked your Saiyan heritage. You probably are confused on what a Saiyan is. He explains what Naruto knows about the majestic Saiyan. I was sent off the planet being the only survivor and landed near Kanahagakur. From there I took the study of being a shinobi and kept my powers hidden well except my Horatian, since technically I used Kai energy, chuckle. 
Once this message is over you will receive my battle gear, a weapon that was once your grandfather's and a scroll that has some of my Kai moves. I love you son and so does your mother, take care. Once the message had ended the well behind him slid open, revealing a mannequin wearing a black form-fitting short-sleeved shirt and black pants with black kung fu shoes and stockings. A flowing white vest with a long backside that is secured with a white obi tied over it at his waist and white armbands. Basically Zeno Goku costume except different colors, next to it was a beautiful black metal power pole, and on top of it was a scroll. He put the scroll in his tunic and picked up the weapon. He was fascinated at the design on the staff which was a gold dragon. It seemed really light, he twirled it and did a few tricks. He stopped and looked at the weapon again with a smile. He looked closer at his old man's gear and felt the fabric of the vest. Mom. Dad. I'll make you proud. He said to himself. He put the clothes away in a scroll. He's gotta remember to thank Fukasakusama for teaching him Fuinjutsu. It really comes in handy. He then took out two empty scrolls writing something in them. Once finished he slung the power staff behind him and put the scrolls in his orange sleeveless tunic. He then said everything the way it was and left the room locking it. As he was about to leave he turned to see a picture of his father hugging a beautiful red-headed woman from behind, what stood out was her bulged stomach. This must have been his mother. Picking up the picture he traced her face and gave a smile. He set the picture down and left his home. Locking the gates he turned to face his first sensei Kakashi. Hey Kakashi sensei what's up? Asked the Saiyan. Just wanna speak with you if you don't mind. The mask shinobi said. Sure. Naruto said as they walked. Five minutes passed by. How are you holding up? Kakashi said. Good, training has been really hard for me, but I've been learning a few new tricks. Unfortunately when I get back to it, Beerus sensei is going to double it as punishment for not showing him my majestic Super Saiyan 2 form. Naruto said. I'm sure you can handle it, after all you are in Uzumaki too. Kakashi said. Naruto chuckled and nodded. A minute passes by them. Naruto, I never said this to you before, but. I'm sorry. For not being the proper sensei to your Sakura, I was so focused on Sasu to try to make him stay in the village, but when I found out he used my move against you, I knew he was a lost cause. Even now attacking the five cages has made him an international criminal, and he almost killed Sakura. He's beyond hope. Naruto was quiet as he continued listening to his sensei. The day I wanted to train and make it up to you, you had already departed with Jiraiya. From there I had thought you wouldn't need me anymore, but I didn't give up, I promised to your father I would make it up to you, that's why I trained you for your wind element. Yeah I remember that. Be honest with you I was angry at first when I left with Hirosenin, but years went by and I started to mature more. Well, maybe half. Naruto scratched the back of his head laughing. But I have to admit if it wasn't for your help and Asamasensei's I wouldn't be able to finish something my father couldn't with the Rasengan. I know he would be proud now. Bakashi nodded yeah, he would. So when do you leave? Before the shinobi Saiyan appeared in front of them were Wiss and Beerus. Speak of the devil, said Naruto. You put on quite a show against that Danzo man. Beerus commented and noticed the power staff around his apprentice's back. You were watching. Naruto said in surprise. Oh yes, even Goku and Vegeta did too. Seeing your power has the mitching for a fight against you, which is common for Saiyan of course. Said Wiss. So are you ready? Questioned Beerus. Naruto nods but pauses. Hold on. He took out two scrolls and looked at Kakashi. Please give one to Sakura and Hinata. Tell Bachan I'll see her again soon. He handed him the scrolls. Kakashi nodded as he took them. Stay safe Naruto. His students nod and went to stand by Beerus and Whis who tapped down his scepter as they vanished. Beerus Planet. Vegeta and Goku were sparring waiting for the arrival of Beerus and his apprentice. The two Saiyans had stopped before they launched an attack at each other. They saw a light that had died down showing Whis and Beerus along with his apprentice. So eager for a battle aren't we? Said Whis. Goku gave a goofy smile, chuckling and scratching the back of his head, while Vegeta just scoffed. So you're Goku and Vegeta, Whis has told me about you too. I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Naruto walked up to them and introduced himself. Namikaze? What's up with that name? Questioned Beerus. It turns out my father was the only survivor and was sent near to Kanahagakur before the war. He had learned the way of the shinobi and became the leader of my village. Explained Naruto. Whoa. Your father must have been really strong Goku commented. Naruto gave a small smile yeah he was. Alright, enough chatting. Naruto you will be fighting both Vegeta and Goku, we'll see how far your training has come. Beerus told him. Naruto nodded as the three Saiyans separated. He stabbed the power staff in the ground and rolled his shoulder and neck stretching his arms and popping his knuckles. He did a couple of lighting speed punches. Goku was warming up while Vegeta was studying Naruto seeing his punches and kicks. Once finished Naruto looked at them. 
So who's first? He asked. Oku was about to volunteer, but Vegeta beat him to it. That'll be me. He said. What? Come on Vegeta, I wanted to fight him first. Complained Goku. Well too bad. Vegeta ignored him as he stepped forward. Goku had joined Whis and Beerus. The two Saiyans were staring at one another waiting for the other to attack. Naruto suddenly vanished and was behind Vegeta, who turned around launching a punch, but hit nothing. I'm here. Naruto said as he again appeared behind the Saiyan who turned fast with a kick, but again hit nothing but air. Naruto again appeared right behind Vegeta and went for a kick which he turned in time to block, but had skidded halfway across the ground. Vegeta looked to see his opponent gone till he felt a solid elbow blow to the stomach and was sweeped from underneath hitting the ground and rolled out the way as Naruto came down with an axe kick, causing a small crater. Vegeta with his chance flew fast towards Naruto, launching a combo of punches and kicks, but the destroyer's apprentice kept blocking them with just one hand. Gritting his teeth in anger he sped up faster, but it still didn't make a difference with Naruto continuing blocking the punches. Vegeta jumped far back while Naruto dropped his hand. Let's make this interesting. Said Vegeta as he got in a stance focusing. A blue energy surrounds him as he transforms into Super Saiyan Blue. Naruto was surprised at this. Whis didn't inform him of this transformation, but this made it challenging. I've only seen you and Goku in Super Saiyan form. So what do you call this? He asked. This is the strongest Super Saiyan form called Super Saiyan Blue. Vegeta smirked. Naruto gave his own smirk. Impressive. But let's see how you hold up against this. He got in his stance concentrating and cried out summoning his Kai energy which grew bigger blinding Vegeta and Goku, but Whis and Beerus were. Once the light died down Naruto's eyebrows were wide as was his hair which was spiked up with his bangs framing his face. His body was covered by white energy and his eyes were silver. He smirked. Unbelievable, his energy is just growing higher and higher. You better be ready Vegeta. Goku thought. Both Saiyans flew at each other in such speed and launched a punch at the same time, causing a big shock wave as they collided. They flew high in the air launching punches, knees, elbows at each other's till Naruto went defense against the attacks. At that moment he caught and locked a hold on Vegeta's arms and hit a knee strike to the chest sending him back, but he stopped and looked up seeing Naruto gone. Vegeta looked around quickly trying to sense his energy. His eyes widened and looked down quickly seeing a foot coming under him. Luckily he was just able to dodge it and retaliated with a kick, but Naruto again vanished. Looking up he saw Naruto coming down with a punch which Vegeta blocked. He felt another energy below and looked down seeing the majestic Saiyan kicking him in the chin and was sent back. Vegeta rubbed his chin what how did he? He stopped as he saw two of the majestic Saiyans. You like it, this is called cage bushin. Usually I would use another energy source for it, but thanks to Barusensei's training, I'm able to use my Kai energy instead, which makes it stronger. Vegeta gritted his teeth. Whoa just like Tien, but this clone really feels like another him. Goku said. The move is very useful in a battle, especially if he can master it, he can create an army with them, imagine facing an army of destroyers. Whis said. What no way. Goku exclaimed in shock. Whis nodded to confirm indeed he could if he can master it. Vegeta now knows he's in a tight situation and he hasn't managed to land a single blow, but Naruto has. Bira said. And by the looks of it Vegeta is getting frustrated. Whis pointed out. Then that will be his downfall. Bira said. Both Saiyans were staring at one another. Even in my Super Saiyan blue form he's still faster than me. So with the power of a majestic Saiyan, I'll have to give everything I got. He got in his stance releasing more energy as the blue aura around him grew. Naruto meanwhile was waiting and was impressed by the energy that the blue-haired Saiyan was pushing out. Vegeta you're just like Sasuke except you didn't abandon your friends, you know the true meaning of being strong, even though you don't want to admit it. Vegeta vanished appearing right behind Naruto who turned and caught the punch retaliating with a punch of his own, but Vegeta caught it. Blue and white energy clashed against each other for dominance, both had the same thoughts as their knees clashed, then punches and kicks making small shock waves. Well look at them go at it, it's been a while since I saw someone push Vegeta this far except us. Goku said. Seems Vegeta has managed to control his anger. Wiz said with an impression. Vegeta has learned from mistakes thanks to his anger, but now seeing this power it will keep him focused. Beerus. Naruto and Vegeta jumped far back charging their Kai. Final flash. Vegeta blasted a huge yellow Kai energy. Majestic spiral wave. Naruto blasted a white spiral stream of energy. Both attacks collided and were pushing one another back. Vegeta grit his teeth adding more Kai into his attack, while Naruto did the same. Vegeta you truly are a warrior, but I'm afraid this is the end. Naruto said transforming into his MSSJ2, and the attack became more powerful and overwhelmed Vegeta's attack pushing it back. 
Vegeta was pushing his Kai into his attack as much as he could, but unfortunately it wasn't enough, and soon was consumed by the attack, causing bright light blinding Goku. Once it died down down Vegeta was on the ground as his armor was torn in half and suffered some bruises, but all in all he was knocked out. Goku ran to check on Vegeta while Whis and Beerus stalked. It seems you were right my lord, Vegeta managed to push Naruto back and even have him go majestic Super Saiyan 2, I had thought for sure Goku would be the one. The angel said. Naruto only used a fracture of it against Vegeta. Now it's Goku's turn. Said Beerus as Goku set Vegeta by him and Whis went to heal the Saiyan. Naruto dropped his MSSJ2 form into his regular majestic form and floated down to the ground. He saw Goku walking to the opposite side. The orange G.I. Saiyan gave a sheepish smile and laughed while rubbing the back of his head. I have to admit you really are strong, to be able to knock out Vegeta takes a lot. Naruto gave a small chuckle. Since I saw his Super Saiyan Blue, why not show me yours? Goku gave a grin all right then. He said and focused. Soon enough the blue aura covered his body as he transformed into his Super Saiyan Blue. Naruto's eyes slightly narrowed as the energy was a little stronger than Vegeta, this got interesting. Naruto pushed out more wide energy around his body you ready? He questioned getting in his stance. Goku gave his answer as he went into his stance. Sure enough both flew at each other in neckbreak speed and raised their fist going for a punch at each other. Chapter 4 When Saiyans Collide Part 2 Naruto vs Goku, Battling the Inner Demon. AMV to Lie Collapsed by Eminem 059. Majestic Naruto and Blue Goku collided with each other, creating a big shockwave. They were in the air as they battled it out exchanging punches and kicks. Their knees collide with each other creating sparks of energy pushing one another back. Naruto broke the hold vanishing and appearing behind Goku, but by the time he did the blue, Saiyan had vanished too and appeared behind him with a kick which Naruto barely blocked. It seems Goku has been watching my moves closely against Vegeta. He thought. He retaliated with multiple right kicks to which Goku dodged but didn't see the left knee connecting his gut knocking the air out of him and was hit in the back with an elbow sending him down to the ground catching himself, Goku had looked up and in time dodged an axe kick from Naruto, creating a small crater. In the air he sensed another presence behind him and looked to see a clone coming towards him quickly. He tried to block the attack but a punch landed to the gut taking him off guard but the clone did not finish continuing 10 hard left and right punches. Goku caught the left and right punches and threw two knees to the chin and a heavy kick, sending the clone away as it poofed. Naruto appeared in front of him as they went back and forth exchanging fast punches and kicks. He landed two blows to Goku's face, but in surprise felt three blows to his own face. Goku has managed to land a few blows to Naruto, now this should get interesting, wouldn't you say Birasama? The angel asked a destroyer who did not answer as he kept watching the fight. The two were still exchanging punches until Naruto kicked Goku's leg throwing him off and cocked his right fist back covering it in white Kai energy and went for the punch, but luckily Goku wrapped his legs around the arm stopping the attack. Naruto was surprised by this and Goku took this advantage as he flipped backwards, throwing him down to the ground. He landed on his feet and looked up seeing dozens of Kai blast energies which he dodged and was in the air. Goku appeared above Naruto and went for an axe handle, but Naruto did a rising knee breaking the attack and did a spin kick which Goku blocked an axe guard but was still sent back. Naruto appeared in front of Goku and threw fast hard left and right repeated punches which Goku was blocking but was being pushed. Going for a fake jab Goku fell for it and Naruto delivered a hard right hook to the gut, making the Saiyan spit a glob of saliva as he was then kicked far back. Naruto blasted white Kai energies which Goku flies around dodging. Goku has been doing well against Naruto even though he is in his majestic form, I'm surprised he's still able to keep up with Goku's blue form without going to majestic too. Wiz said. He's holding back too, remember the Kaiken that he learned from the Kai. Once he feels Naruto's power grow I have no doubt Goku will go all out. Bira said. The Saiyans were again clashing with punches, blocks and kicks, punches landed Naruto to Goku back and forth, the two men eyes narrowed with small smiles as they were enjoying this. Goku went for a kick to the head, but Naruto had his forearm up blocking the kick and retaliated with a right punch to the face, but Goku shook it off and went for a left hook to the gut, but Naruto caught the punch with his own punch. He went for a left punch of his own, but Goku blocked it with his forearm. They broke off and connected a right punch to each other's face creating a shockwave. Beerus and Whis looked on. Naruto gave a chuckle as did Goku, they two men floated back. I guess I've been going easy on you for too long. Said Naruto. Goku gave a small smirk guess you have, show me what you got. He got in his stance being prepared as his blue Kai energy flared more. 
Naruto's eyes got serious getting into his stance focusing his energy and gave a loud shout as his kai shot up high and his hair became slightly longer and rigid with bangs in the front, his muscle mass slightly increased, white lightning crackled around his body and his aura became like a fierce flame. He looked at Goku with a serious expression. Things are now about to get serious. Bira said seeing his student transform. Who's heard a groan seeing Vegeta starting to wake up as he sat himself up. Right on time Vegeta. He said. Vegeta started to get up and saw the majestic Saiyan in his MSSJ2 form and Goku in his stance. Naruto took a step vanishing, Goku looked back quickly and then up seeing an axe kick which he barely dodged and had to block left and right kicks. Goku had retaliated with a kick, but Naruto caught it and threw him far away and followed. Goku saw Naruto above him and X blocked lightning speed left and right punches but was still being pushed down to the ground. Goku with both his feet managed to kick Naruto away. Naruto stopped himself and sent more Kai blasts which Goku dodged easily and vanished appearing behind, but surprisingly Naruto spun around kneeing him in the stomach. Naruto cocked back his right palm and formed the Rasengan easily. Rasengan he cried out slamming the orb in the Saiyan's stomach. Goku felt the air knocked out of him as he was sent down to the ground hard creating a large impact. And AMV 420. Vegeta went witty at this, while Beerus and Whis had a passive expression. Naruto slowly floated down, and once the smoke had cleared he saw Goku in a small crater sitting up and shaking his head. He rubbed his stomach while his shirt had a tear from the Rasengan. Oh man that packed a punch. The blue Naruto gave a small smile. I hope this isn't all you got, Goku. He said. Goku shook his head nope. He said as he got in a stance. Time to take this up a notch. Goku said and shouted as the blue aura around him had another color around which was red, but so was his skin. Naruto waited for Goku to see what he was planning. Haken times 5. Roared Goku as the red aura around the blue energy grew big. Vegeta saw this and grit his teeth and clenched his fist in anger. He's done it again. Well now, this might change things around. With the combination of Goku's Super Saiyan Blue and the Kaiken times 5, he may have the advantage. Whis. Beerus kept his eye on the two warriors. Naruto was surprised by this power which was a mistake as Goku appeared in front of him and connected a right hook of his own, connecting the face of the majestic Saiyan, sending him back. Naruto looked up seeing Goku above connecting fierce punches which he blocked but felt tremendous power in the punches. Goku decided to take a page out of Naruto's book as he faked a left punch which Naruto fell for and connected a right hook to the gut. He was not done as he continued the assault with combinations of punches and kicks to the face, pushing back the majestic Saiyan, and then was uppercutted further into the air. Naruto turned around barely catching the punch from the blue Saiyan unfortunately it was a distraction as Goku had then connected a knee to the chest, sending him crashing down to the ground through the trees. Whis was surprised at this while Beerus was a little witty, Vegeta scowled at this. The white glow grew in the ground before exploding as Naruto rose, his right sleeve was torn halfway and a small hole in his pants, but he looked alright. Naruto had a little blood dripping out his mouth which he licked and spit out. So I assume this Kaiken of yours doubles up your speed and strength, he said. Goku chuckled that's right including my senses, but instead of double it's more like five times. He admitted. Naruto was impressed by the technique and had thought it was time to try out his own technique. He sat on the ground crisscrossing and closed his eyes concentrating. Goku couldn't wait to see this, Beerus was confused along with Vegeta, but who's had a small smile looks like he's going to try it. AMV Shippuden Kaisei Jayakuten. Naruto's wide aura started to be surrounded by an orange energy that roared with power, around his eyes he had orange pigmentation forming. Once he opened them slowly his iris was yellow, but the toad pupil was silver. Standing up, Naruto's eyes were cold and serious as he stepped forward and vanished. Goku looked around sensing the energy, but it felt everywhere. Naruto appeared with his fist in the gut of Goku who hunched over and was uppercutted. He followed up in front of him throwing fast blurs of punches which made the orange-clad Saiyan guard up. His energy, it's like he's all over the place. Goku thought. The majestic Saiyan broke the block with a kick, sending the blue-haired Saiyan back. It looks like Naruto has done it. Said Whis. Beerus and Vegeta looked at the angel confused who explained. Naruto has been working on a technique by combining his sage mode with majestic Super Saiyan 2. Unlike the Kaiken Sage mode doesn't have any after effects as it uses natural energy, but like the Kaiken his speed and strength doubles, but thanks to the Majestic 2 form, it's probably four times as powerful now. Beerus and Vegeta were surprised at the technique. Goku looked around and had tried to again sense the Majestic Saiyan's energy, but again just like before it was all over the place. He was forced to break out of thoughts as he felt a pain in his gut and saw an elbow in it which belonged to Naruto, who then hit a hard axe handle, sending Goku crashing down to the ground. Hakurit should have been able to feel the boy's energy and block that attack. Vegeta noticed. 
yes if Naruto was just in his majestic Saiyan 2 form, but because he's also using sage mode, he's able to blend his Kai everywhere. The trees, the grass, the air. The water, any natural life he can blend in, even in Super Saiyan Blue, it would still be difficult to find him. Vegeta was startled at this looking at Whis and looked at Kakarot who burst out the small crater in speed, leaving a gust of wind. The two Saiyans fist collided creating a huge shockwave, and each blow created a small blue and white mix shockwave. The two warriors flew around throwing kicks after kicks with blocks and more punches, their elbows collided and the aura around them growing bigger. They blocked each other's kicks and retaliated with punches. They again were locked in a clash with the energy around them growing enormous, they flew high leaving streaks of blue and white. They broke apart as they were far away from each other. Why don't we end this with one last attack? Naruto suggested. You're on. Goku accepted the challenge. The two of them got in their stance and powered up cupping their hands back. Hamahim. A blue orb formed in Goku's hand. Majestic spiral. A white orb formed in Naruto's hands. Ha. Wave. Two of the Saiyan's main techniques clashed at each other, pushing one another back for dominance. Goku sent out more energy as did Naruto making their attacks large but still locked in battle. They gave one last shout as they pushed whatever they could, making their attacks large which resulted in a bright explosion. Vegeta's eyes squinted a little, but Beerus and Whis were used to it. Once the brightness died down, both Saiyans were panting as they were exhausted but still standing. And AMV 252. The two had floated down to the ground where Goku fell on his bottom panting. Oh man. Pant. Your strong Goku regained himself. But what happened when I tried to sense you Kai energy during the fight and what's with the makeup? Asked the Saiyan. Naruto had a little tick mark on his head at the makeup reference, but knew Goku didn't mean it. It's called Sage Mode which is like your Kaiken as it doubles my strength and speed however, in order for me to enter this, I have to gather natural energy, but with the combine of my majestic Super Saiyan 2 form, I was able to blend my Kai energy with natural energy all around us. Explained Naruto. So that's why I sensed your energy all over the place, even in my Super Saiyan blue form, I still couldn't find you. He pouted at the end. Naruto chuckled, but for a minute I honestly was worried that I wouldn't be able to pull it off. He admitted scratching the back of his head. Looks like I need to train harder if I want to fight Sage Mode again. Goku said. Whis and Beerus came over to them. Well now that was quite a performance from the both of you. Who's commented. Looks like you will have to up your training more. Said Beerus with a sadistic grin making the poor majestic Saiyan gulp. Same goes for you, Goku and Vegeta. Whis said with an innocent smile, but the Saiyans had gulped. Naruto's stomach grumbled who's hungry. He asked everyone. Three days later. The weeks had gone by fast for Naruto who continued to train, but harder than ever before, ever since his fight against Goku, he realized he still needed more training on his majestic two form and sage mode. He was able to train with Whis in the Angel's Scepter, what he found surprising was that time was much faster than on Beerus's planet, as three days of training was three years worth. His speed was now three times faster thanks to the weights, as he wore ten tons on each limb. He had read some technique that his father had used, and within the years he's mastered them, first was the Rassing Bomb and the Mouth Beam which was called Break Cannon. The last one was an enhanced Kai Rassin Shuriken which he still was working on. Naruto had asked who's on how he can transform into an Azeru, but to his surprise, the angel had no idea as he never found records of a majestic Saiyan turning into an Azeru. He would worry about that another time. Right now we see Naruto throwing fast left and right punches to the angel who was blocking the attacks with ease and dodging a kick. Naruto had grown much taller, near 6 feet, his left spiky hair lock grew more. Today he was wearing an orange tank top, his weight wristbands. Black GI pants and lastly his weight boots. Finding an opening he went for a right, but who's caught it, thinking quickly he went for a kick which again Whis dodged with no problem. Turning around the angel tapped the orb against Naruto's nose, which felt like a light snapping his head back, but it was not over as Whis thrust the scepter against the chest, sending Naruto away. The majestic Saiyan stopped as he regained himself and bursted in speed with a punch which almost landed, but Whis dodged as he was behind locking a hold. Naruto transformed into his MSSJ2 and managed to throw the angel over his shoulder who landed on his feet. Naruto charged at the angel as he was now throwing lightning speed attacks of combinations to Whis who was blocking them with his scepter. With one last attack he threw a hard Kai punch connecting Whis' scepter, which made a blast of wind and shockwave. The angel gave a smile alright Naruto looks like your training for this time is finish. Said the angel. Naruto fell on his but and on his back. I wonder how strong Goku and Vegeta are now. With sweat dropped on Naruto son it's only been three days since the fight between you and Goku and Vegeta. He reminded. Oh. Right I keep forgetting we're in your scepter. Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Well it's time to head back now. 
Wiz tapped the ground with his scepter as everything glowed, and soon they were back on Beerus' planet. About time you two got back. Beerus said as he relaxed on a lounge chair with his hands folded behind his head relaxing. Seems you've been enjoying yourself my lord. Who's commented. What can I say? Said Beerus as he took a drink of his refreshment through a straw. While the angel and destroyer were talking, Naruto left on his own as he needed to do something. Once changed to his regular gear he found a place somewhere in the woods and sat on the ground crisscross, closing his eyes in concentration. Mindscape. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he was in the familiar sewer and looked up following the pipes. As he continued to follow the pipes he stopped as he sensed a presence behind him and turned back fast. There was nothing, Naruto hesitantly turned back forward, but as he did he was startled by what saw. Himself with its head down. He got closer and was a couple feet away. Who are you? He questioned. The clone lifted its head up and what Naruto saw surprised him, instead of blue eyes. They were pitch black, but the iris was blood red. He gave a grin. I'm you, the dark side of you. The dark side. Naruto was confused. Don't play foolish, I am the hate that was created by you so many years ago, from the day you've walked till now. I'm the truth that you've been running from for so many years. Just call me. Menma darkly chuckled and named. What truth? Demanded Naruto. The truth of how you feel about Kanahagakur and the people, the ones that called you a monster, the ones that threw you out of the orphanage, the ones that treated you as a demon. Menma growled, summoning up Kai energy pushing Naruto back. Menma transformed into majestic Saiyan 2, but the white energy had flowed with darkness, this made Naruto transform into his majestic Saiyan 2 form quickly. The two charged at each other landing a kick at the same time creating a spark along with punches. Naruto caught the punch and went for a knee, but Menma put his own knee up blocking the attack. Menma then headbutted Naruto's nose forcing it to break. Naruto winced at the pain and felt a punch to the gut sending him skidding across the ground. He flipped himself up and had just dodged Kai blasts and went for a left kick which Menma caught and threw him into the wall hard making Naruto cough a glob of blood. Menma appeared in front of him why do you continue to fight me, why don't you just accept who you truly are. He unleashed a fury of punches to the body, making Naruto cough more blood and felt a grip on his throat while he tried to break it. Never. Wheezed out Naruto. You truly are pathetic. Menma started pulling him out the wall and throwing him across the ground. He tried to get up but was then kicked in the face, sending him in the air where he was used as a punching bag by Menma and was axe handled, sending him to the ground making a crater. Now you're just starting to bore me, I gave you a chance and you refused to accept. Menma dropped and slammed his foot into the chest of Naruto, creating a web crack underneath. He coughed more blood and felt his transformation drop. AMV Deft and Change 016. He was dazed as he opened his eyes. How? How can I beat him? He knows all my moves and techniques. Not to mention he can transform. This can't be how it ends. I still have to help my friends with the war. My promise to fight Goku again. Bachan. Sakura. Hinata. I can't let them down. Menma created a black eye energy of a blade and gave a grin. Once I finish with you, I will take my revenge on Konoha and take those two precious females of yours as my slaves. Naruto's eyes went wide at this, and a surge of anger rose, and he shouted as he transformed into his MSSJ, throwing Menma off who was shocked at this. He kept shouting as his energy grew higher and higher roaring with power. The mindscape started to shake and was soon covered by a bright light. Menma was holding his hands up blocking the light from his eyes, he gritted his teeth in anger, how is this possible where is this power coming from? Once the light died down Naruto was in his MSSJ2 form, but what happened then was the white aura around him formed into a white solid glow surrounding his body. Naruto glared daggers at Menma. What Naruto did know was that he had unlocked another stage for MSSJ2, Ultimate MSSJ2. No this can't be happening, you will accept who you truly are. Roared Menma who charged at Naruto who stopped the attack with one hand. It's no use. You cannot win. Naruto said. Menma sneered at this and went for another punch which was blocked easily and then a knee, but the result was the same shocking Menma. I warn you. Said Naruto as he grabbed the wrists of Menma, slamming him to the ground three times, then tossing him up doing a kick and vanished appearing behind Menma and elbowed him in the back, sending him crashing into the wall. Menma broke out of it and charged at lightning speed with punches which Naruto was dodging easily as if he was not trying. How? How? Angrily shouted Menma as he continued relentlessly attacking, not managing to land one punch. Naruto caught the punches and kicked Menma in the chin, sending him crashing on the pipes, but as he came down in midair, Naruto unleashed multiple rapid punches to the body and a hard right slamming him into the ground, creating a big web crack. Menma winced at the pain and formed a Kai blade in his arm and went to slash Naruto who had flipped backwards avoiding it. Naruto extended his right arm out forming the Kai blade which glowed intensely. 
they charged at each other clashing blades making a huge spark as they exchanged attacks. They were on par for a minute till Naruto started to pick up speed and the attacks were getting harder pushing Menma back. They locked their blade against each other until Naruto put his left hand out in a palm, blasting a Kai energy sending Menma deep across the ground. Naruto turned off his Kai blade and walked towards the injured Menma, who was up to his knees coughing a glob of blood, he stood in front of him. He spoke to himself quietly this was not supposed to happen, I was supposed to be free. Away from this darkness. Loneliness. Naruto noticed the sorrow in his voice and it reminded him of his lonely childhood days. He got down on one knee looking at Menma who looked up at him. He gave a hug which shocked Menma. You're not alone, I realize that I did need you, but not because of the hatred, but because you drove me to become stronger, reminding me of what the villagers said to me only made me more determined to prove them wrong. You won't be alone again. Menma was frozen, and soon tears started to build up, the eyes had transformed back to normal blue. He started to fade away. Thank you. Was the last thing Menma said as he faded away. End AMV 300. Naruto got back to his feet sensing the Kyubi energy and heading to its direction. Finally arriving he saw the two huge golden gates with a paper seal and saw the creature behind it. The Kayubi no Kitsune who gave an evil glare as usual. Long time no see and I'm greeted by an evil glare, didn't you miss me? He sarcastically said the majestic saying. Naruto. Growled the Kayubi. Naruto floated up. Yeah. Where'd the real one go? I don't sense him questioned the Kayubi. Naruto was in front of the paper this is me. The real me. He said as he tore off the paper and found the lock. He lifted up his orange tunic and long sleeve shirt, holding them with his teeth seeing the seal on his stomach. He pulled his right sleeve back and his fingertips had blue chakra as then the key appeared on his arm. He slammed the hand over the seal and seemed a little hesitant but had a determined face and unlocked the gate. The lock started to open until there was a loud click which made the Kayubi bust out the gates giving a terrifying roar, but Naruto was not affected by it and transformed into his ultimate MSSJ2 and charged. He dodged swipes for swipes from the Kayubi's tails and vanished as a claw came at him. He appeared above the Kayubi and dived a kick to the face, sending the beast back skidding across the water. Nani the Kayubi was shocked but didn't have enough time to think as Naruto appeared unleashing a fury of punches, making the Kayubi block with its tails as it was being pushed back. He gave a hard kick, sending the Kitsune back crashing against the wall. Kayubi shook his head, regaining himself and glared with a growl at the Saiyan. You insect. Kayubi roared in anger and lifted its head up, opening its mouth as a purple orb was forming big, until it then became small and aided. Naruto was confused but went eye wide as the Kayubi opened its mouth ready to shoot a beam. Thinking quickly Naruto drew his arms back cupping his hand together forming a white Kai energy. Majestic spiral wave. Naruto cried out, thrusting his hands forward shooting the attack, Kayubi shot the beam, and both attacks clashed. Naruto pushed more of his Kai into his technique which overwhelmed the Kayubi's attack, and the blast struck the beast in the chest, sending it skidding across the ground. Naruto charged at the Kitsune and dodged a slash from its claws. He grabbed the paw flipping the Biju over his shoulder, slamming it into the ground. Naruto created a cage Bushin Kai to fight the Kayubi while he sat down and meditated. Kai clone Naruto unleashed fury of punches to the face of the Kayubi and gave a hard kick, making it stumble back and fall. Naruto opened his eyes as he was in Sage Mode, but it felt different, this was the first time he was using Sage Mode with his ultimate MSSJ2. Kayubi sat up and growled, but seeing Naruto appear in front of him at great speed shocked him. Naruto gave a right hook, sending Biju crashing against a wall. He then charged, grabbing a hold of the beast, and felt a tug which he pulled as a stream of red chakra came out. Naruto continued to pull till he felt something that made him shiver down his spine. Kill. Monster. Demon. Revenge. Why did you kill my brother? So many words Naruto heard reminding him of his childhood and other poisonous thoughts, he felt red chakra pulling him. He desperately tried to pull back the Kayubi chakra, but he was losing it, thinking he couldn't do it anymore when he heard something. Are you really going to give up? A warrior never gives up, he will fight until his dying breath. AMV Ost ship you in heaven shake event. Naruto's eyes went wide at this, and soon they turned to determination. He gritted his teeth I never give up. That's my. My ninja way. Naruto roared as his energy flared up more and he began to pull the beast's chakra back. Kayubi was shocked but turned to anger. Naruto smirked at the Kayubi and had put a cross sign. Taji Cage Bunch and No Jutsu. An army of shadow clones appeared and flew towards the beast as they all formed a Rasengan. Multi Rasing Bomb. They shouted as they threw the Kai made Rasengan, but as it made contact with the Kayubi it exploded which soon covered the Kayubi blasting it away, but it was not over, one of the Naruto's jumped and gave a huff. Ayubi got up but didn't expect what was coming next. 
Naruto roared in which sounded like an ape shooting a large beam of white energy, sending the Kyuubi away farther. The real Naruto flew up high towards the Bijuu, the Rasen Shuriken was formed, but slowly the color started to change to white, with the whistle sounds of the blades being louder. It's over for you. He declared as he slammed the attack into the face Rasen Kai Shuriken. Naruto shouted as the technique expanded blasting the beast back. What is this power? Thought the Kyuubi as it still was being blasted back till it fell. Naruto had soon felt the Kyuubi chakra being absorbed in him, and everything went bright. End AMV 102. Once the brightness died down his whole body glowed like flickery flame yellow, his sleeveless orange tunic was now black and had yellow designs of down across, his sleeves had black markings down, his iris was red and had a slit pupil. His hair still had the majestic look. Naruto looked at his hands and then at the reflection of the water. So this is the power of the Kyuubi no Kitsune. He was amazed. Kyuubi had looked at this and felt nothing but pure rage. Naruto. You bastard. Roared the Kyuubi as it opened its mouth and started to form a giant Bijuu bomb. You still have that much power. You really are strong. Naruto said with honesty, he placed his right hand over of the seal turning it, and soon red lock slammed on the Kyuubi's neck, cancelling the Bijuu's attack soon, the giant golden gates closed, and the seal was locked again. Watch yourself. Naruto Uzumaki. Darkness took over the beast. Naruto sighed in relief. I knew you could do it. Said a voice startling him as he turned around and recognized the person. Dad? Naruto asked cautiously but relaxed, seeing a smile. I'm proud of you, no matter what situation you're in, never give up, because you are a warrior, don't forget that. Minato smiled as he faded away. Naruto gave a small smile and left his mindscape. Real world. Naruto opened his eyes and looked at his hands, seeing them lick with yellow flickering flames. I did it. He said. Well now this is interesting. A voice said from behind making Naruto turn to see his senseis, Beerus and Wiss. I agree, so start talking. Said Beerus in a serious tone. Naruto sighed as he told them of the fight between his counterpart Menma and the Kyuubi, and getting the beast's chakra. That's about it. Naruto said. Those had became interested with this form and was excited to learn about this new power. Beerus was just more and more impressed by the Gaki every day. At some rest, tomorrow I'm going to test that new power of yours, so be prepared. Beerus told him. All oh, right, sensei. He bowed to them and left. The Gaki grows stronger almost every day, I won't be surprised in a few years he'll be ready for a position as a destroyer. Beerus said. Sounds like someone has a soft spot, Whis giggled. Beerus's eyes went wide. Don't be ridiculous. He yelled and marched off I'm taking a nap, see you tomorrow. Whis sighed, shaking his head. Okage's office. Tsunade was standing up behind her desk in anger as she glared at the two cages. As we said the rakage and I have agreed that the boy must be locked away. Said the old man Anoki. Do you two even hear yourself, you're talking about locking away my shinobi like he's a piece of property. Tsunade growled. It's nothing personal Tsunade, but the power the boy possess it's too risky, if Madara ever gets a hold of him, it's all over for us. A said who of course felt the power firsthand, he still felt his ribs sore. We're sorry Tsunade, but our decision has been made, Naruto Uzumaki will be locked away for the good of the war. Anoki said with little sincerity. But that the cage is left. The slug princess fell back in her seat as her fist was just clenching so hard that her knuckles popped inside. She heard a knock and saw it was her student with a worried look. I guess you heard. Tsunade said, getting a nod reply from her student. This isn't fair to Naruto, he's done so much for all of us, who the hell does those two get to decide what's good for the war? Shouted Sakura. Tsunade took a sake bottle and poured some into two cups while she was listening to her student. I know Sakura. She handed her student a cup. You really care about him don't you? Tsunade asked her pink hair student as she drank her glass. Sakura sat down looking at her cup and drank it down, she nodded. Tsunade poured another glass for the student and herself, this would be a long talk. Beerus Planet. Naruto stood in the same gear as yesterday, he meditated in his MSSJ1 form last night and concentrated on using it with Kyuubi Chakra mode. Iris was across from him who was ready to test this new power. Get ready. Naruto snapped out his thoughts and concentrated going in Kyuubi chakra mode as his body flared up in yellow energy, his eyes got serious. Naruto and Beerus burst in speed towards each other and collided their fists against each other, causing a big shock wave that could be heard throughout the galaxy. Naruto continued with punches and then a high kick to the chin, but Beerus flipped backwards. As he regained his stance he saw two flaming long arms coming at him which he dodged as they smashed into the ground causing a crater. Naruto flew in the air and battled hand to hand, throwing many kicks which Beerus blocked them. Suddenly the flaming arm spouted out hitting the destroyer in the gut, sending him back as the arm followed and went for another blow, but Beerus dodged it with Naruto coming at him as they collided kicks. 
Naruto smirked as did Beerus. Breaking apart they traded punches and blocks Beerus landed two chops to the chest and neck, while Naruto landed two punches, followed by a jumping back kick which Beerus blocked but was sent back. The Kai clone appeared before Beerus, who was taken back and managed to block the rising kick, two chakra arms sprang out from the clone's back at the destroyer, but he kicked the clone back, followed by a Kai blast destroying the clone. Beerus dodged from left and right seeing two clones. He then looked below to see two more clones coming at him with a rising kick, but Beerus stopped the attacks as he grabbed their legs and swung them at the other clones, destroying them as well. The real Naruto came at Beerus again exchanging kicks. He switched as he relentlessly started to punch left and right, his chakra arms sprouted out from the back and attacked the destroyer with punches. Beerus still had his guard up blocking the punches and saw an opening as he elbowed the Saiyan in the stomach, making him cough a glob of saliva. But he was not done as he went behind elbowing the back and came back in front delivering a spinning kick, knocking Naruto far back. Beerus charged as he was in front of him who threw a kick which he blocked easily and had landed a punch to the stomach, but Naruto didn't flinch and was going for a knee however Beerus did the same causing their knees to collide. They broke apart as they again charged at each other. Naruto collided his elbow with the destroyers pushing one another back. Thinking quickly Naruto used one chakra arm to attack Beerus who easily dodged it, but what he didn't expect was another chakra arm coming out the same arm forming a Rasengan. Naruto went for the attack, unfortunately being a destroyer for Santerius, had a big help for Beerus who redirected the attack back at Naruto, who was sent down to the ground but landed on his feet. Who's looked over at Naruto who seemed to be fine as if he never the attacks. It's astounding he's able to withstand that attack, I can tell Beerusama had to increase his power to redirect that attack. What else can you show naruto -san? Naruto had stepped forward and disappeared in a flash before appearing behind Beerus and delivered an axe handle, sending the destroyer crashing into the ground, kicking up smoke. The majestic Saiyan stood in the air as he waited for the smoke to clear. In a burst of speed Beerus came out the smoke at him launching a series of kicks and punches that Naruto managed to block but felt a combination of kicks and punches to the body and face sending him crashing down. He stood up and shook his head clear while he popped his neck. You're doing much better than before, I can see how this technique of yours is useful. Bira said. Naruto chuckled, scratching the back of his head. You're holding back aren't you? Beerus menacingly asked his student. Naruto swallowed a lump um maybe a little. He said sheepishly however that changed as Beerus appeared in front of him and punched him the gut hard and was kicked far back into some big boulders, destroying it into rubble. I'll just beat you down till you get serious. Beerus sent many Kai blasts at the rubble, which resulted in an explosion that showed no sign of Naruto. He appeared in front of Beerus launching a chakra arm to uppercut the god, sending him further into the air. Naruto with a burst of speed went up following until he was in front. Both had exchanged blow after blow to one another as they flew through the air all around. Naruto flipped back and sped towards Beerus who launched a punch. As his fist was centimeters away from the Saiyan's face he again vanished, surprising Beerus who turned quickly and dodged an incoming kick. He threw a kick of his own at the Saiyan which connected sending him away. Beerus followed as he then landed two more kicks and a knee, sending Naruto crashing hard into the ground. The majestic Saiyan got up as he was still in Kaiubi mode, he again vanished appearing behind Beerus, then appeared in front and was flashing all over the place. Beerus concentrated and at that moment had turned, connecting an elbow to Naruto's face, but to the destroyer's surprise, he poofed away. Beerus's eyes went wide as he turned to see Naruto in front of him and saw the Rasengan, but was ready to counter it, unfortunately Naruto vanished and pain was felt behind the destroyer's back and saw Naruto above him with the Rasengan connecting. Rasengan! Shouted the Saiyan sending Beerus into the ground crashing into trees. Whis was surprised at this amazing, he deceived Lord Beerus into attacking a clone before closing in, but knowing Beerus could redirect his attack close range, he just needed that split second. Beerus burst from the trees, but he was covered in a purple aura. That's what I was waiting for. Naruto grinned seeing Beerus charging at him and had two charge battling it out, though it didn't last long, as Beerus had the advantage landing blow after blow to the body and was thrown hard to the ground where Naruto caught himself. Beerus cried out as his body glowed purple, shooting out thousands of purple Kai blasts, Naruto used giant chakra arms to shield him from the attacks. He was soon forced to drop his chakra arms and flipped backwards to get space. He shot many white kai towards Beerus, causing a small explosion as black smoke covered the air. Naruto, not wasting time, had transformed into MSSJ1 while still in Kai Ubi Chakra just in time as Beeru attacked. Naruto blocked it with no problem and began to match his sensei speed, dodging his attacks and blocking them countering with his own. The majestic Saiyan unleashed an assault with blurs of punches from both his fist and chakra arms pushing Beerus back, he had a third chakra arm come out slamming into the destroyer's face and a kick to the body sending him back. 
Beerus again ever since his battle against Goku a year ago started to feel the excitement, his destroyer blood stir, and his thirst for battle quenched. Both destroyer and majestic Saiyan charged at one another creating many shockwaves as they traded big punches. They locked in a grapple battling for dominance as their energies spiked really high, they then kicked each other far away. Beerus gave a small grin show me that power. He rushed towards his student as did Naruto as they connected their feet against each other, causing a booming echo. They broke apart and gave a shout as they charged at each other, white and purple collided. Universe 7. Goku and Vegeta were eating outside of Capsule Corpse with a family, Vidal and Gohan came with their baby Pan and were talking to Bulma and Chichi. With Android 18 played with their daughter Marin. Piccolo was also there who was just sitting up on a tree with his eyes shut, Trunks and Goten were playing tag flying. The Namekian's eyes snapped open as he felt a powerful Kai energy, he had an uneasy expression with a bead of sweat. It was not nearby, but it was powerful enough to feel from a distance. Even Gohan and Krillin felt it. Goku and Vegeta had stopped their eating as they too felt the Kai. Bulma and Chichi looked at their husbands. What's wrong guys, is it trouble? Asked Bulma. Piccolo jumped down, going over to them. You feel that right? The Namekian asked the Saiyans. I did for sure. Gohan came over to the group. Same here. Added Krillin. Goku looked at the sky from a distance. Is that you Naruto? Vegeta looked to Kakarot who was in thought causing the prince to narrow his eyes and looked out the sky distance feeling the energy, he gritted his teeth is this your true power boy? Universe 6. Tampa was on a lounge chair stuffing his face in a bucket of food. Vado sighed at her master. She suddenly felt a powerful Kai energy. Tampa stopped stuffing his face and felt the energy as well. Why Vados, where is that powerful Kai coming from? He asked the angel. Beidos looked at her scepter jewel following the energy which had led her to Beerus's planet and projected the image showing Naruto fighting Beerus exchanging punches. Beerusama seems to be training the majestic Saiyan that the Grand Priest spoke of, judging how the battle's going Beerusama is holding back, but I can see he's using half his strength, it's incredible for a mere mortal to push a god of destruction that far. Beido said with an impression. Tampa grit his teeth in anger. Damn you Beerus, I don't want to see any more turn it off he ordered. Beidos did as she was told, however she still watched the fight through the jewel orb, as she now became more interested in the majestic Saiyan. Universe Zero Kanoha. Anata was in her family's dojo as she was practicing her new improved Jukan moves. Just as she was about to finish she felt a powerful chakra, but this chakra was one she recognized. Naruto-kun. Hinata thought as she stepped outside and stared at the night as stars were in the sky. Please be safe. Naruto and Beerus's fists were connecting blocks that they put up and tried to counter with a knee, resulting in a clash however Naruto then flipped back landing a kick to the chin of the destroyer. He followed it up as he launched a chakra arm with a Rasengan which Beerus dodged and was again forced to dodge two more of them, however a fourth chakra arm came from below and struck his stomach, sending him in the air as Naruto followed. He connected a knee into the back of Beerus and slammed down an axe handle, sending Beerus crashing in the ground. Naruto had then cupped his chakra arms back as they created a large white Kai energy, big majestic spiral wave. He roared as his arms thrusted shooting a large white powerful spiral stream of energy at the ground. The large energy digged into the ground however it started to show Beerus who was covered in a large purple aura, blocking the attack with one hand which he soon destroyed. Beerus faster than light rammed an elbow in the gut of Naruto hard making him spit some blood, then a rising elbow to the chin and an axe handle of his own, sending Naruto to the ground, but Beerus appeared below kicking Naruto back up in the air and shot up in front with a knee to the gut followed by a spinning kick, sending him flying across the water and crashing into the trees and into the ground. Naruto Kaiubi chakra mode dropped as he was now in MSSJ form, he sat up and tried to get up, he felt some crack ribs, but refused to stay down as he got to his feet. Is that all you got, I was expecting a challenge Gaki, is this the so-called power of the majestic Saiyan as you say? Naruto grit his teeth. It's time to release that deep power that you have now, show me your roared Beerus as his energy flared up high. Naruto ignored the pain as he roared going into MSSJ2, but he kept pushing more energy out, which made the planet shake, the white aura around him grew enormous pulsing with power. He flared up Kyubi's chakra mode, and the aura died as it now glowed around the chakra. BBZ Bardock theme heavy tripost 029. He soon blasted towards Beerus who too charged as they clashed, causing a huge energy shockwave throughout the galaxy. Naruto and Beerus exchanged blow after blow to the body, but neither cave into the pain and kept attacking each other, Naruto landed punches to the body, while Beerus connected kicks. Naruto blasted Beerus away with a punch and sped towards him appearing beneath and landed a double kick sending Beerus up and quickly launched a chakra arm, punching him further into the air. Naruto followed with a knee that Beerus blocked and returned one, but the Saiyan blocked it as well. 
They vanished appearing all over the place connecting attacks creating mini shockwave after shockwave and booming echoes. They blasted into the air seeing only white and purple aura streak clashing each other. Iris and Naruto attacks were nothing but blurs as the punches were connecting each other. They pulled back and smashed their fist against one another, creating a powerful gust of wind. They vanished, appearing on the ground continuing the assault. Whis was impressed with Naruto's power, judging from the transformation he knew the Saiyan went ultimate MSSJ2, but not only that he managed somehow to combine it with this new technique, however the angel could tell that this is the first time Naruto is using it. It's amazing he's progress so far in such little time, I can tell now why Beerusama wanted to test him, I have a feeling though there's more to Naruto than right now the angel was broken out of thought as he sensed someone approaching which he knew it was his sister Vados. Naruto and Beerus skidded back on their feet before they again went at each other, right at the same time their kicks and punches connected each other, stopping their attack. The destroyer and Saiyan had the same thought as they slammed their heads against each other, releasing powerful Kai energy. It's impressive that a mere mortal is able to push Beerusama this far. The female angel complimented. Whis nodded as he agreed it won't be long for Narutasan to receive the title of destroyer. Vados looked at the two fighters who were still engaging in combat. They both gave a hard punch to the face blowing each other away. Naruto skied through the ground and crashed. Beerus went through some trees and into the ground. Naruto managed to sit up and get on his feet. He felt the planet shake and had seen Beerus busting out from the ground with his destroyer aura covering him. He knew he couldn't keep this long and decide to use one last attack. He put his hand up and chakra arms came out forming a Raisin Kai Shuriken, but the size doubled. Raisin Kai Shuriken. Called out Naruto as he launched a stretch chakra arm holding the shuriken like Kai however, Beerus had merely tilt his head dodging the attack, but then the chakra limb turned back and threw the Kai shuriken. The destroyer had flipped back as he again avoided the attack, but as he came back down, Naruto appeared in a white flash holding the Kai. Beerus went eye wide and quickly put his hands up as Naruto connected the attack, sending Beerus blasting away into the air. You truly are something else kid. Beerus had thought but broke from his thoughts as the attack he held began to expand bigger. Giving a roaring cry Beerus flared more of his destroyer Kai. The Rasen shuriken exploded into light that made Naruto wince, but the angels were fine. End AMV 231. Universe 7. Goku and Vegeta were having a small spar while the boys watched. Then suddenly they stopped and the others felt the same tremendous Kai energy, only it felt a little bit stronger. Geez what the heck is going on, this power I'm sensing is just crazy. Krillin said. I know what you mean, this is the same energy we felt earlier, but now it's even more stronger than before. Gohan agreed. What makes it more interesting is that this power is not even close to us. Said Piccolo. Goku had looked at the sky and then saw a bright white small light shine for a few seconds and slowly died. He clenched his fist and his body trembled with excitement, he gave a grin. I know that's you Naruto. I didn't expect you to become this much stronger so fast. Man, we got to have that rematch soon. Vegeta saw Kakarot looking up at something in the sky and looked to see the bright white small light for a few seconds as it died away. The Saiyan prince looked at his hand and clenched it, remembering his humiliating defeat at the hands of the majestic Saiyan, while Kakarot was able to keep up with the boy. When we meet again, the results will be different. Vegeta had thought. Beerus planet. Once the light had died down Naruto fell on his bottom, dropping his KCM, Kyubi chakra mode, and his MSSJ2 form. He panted feeling exhausted from the battle. Vera stood in the air as he was unfazed by the blast, however there was a tiny bruise on his face. He floated down to the ground walking to his student who got up to his feet slowly. He was in front of the Saiyan with no expression which made Naruto uneasy at first, but a grin formed on his sensei's face. You gave me quite a bruise. Rubbing the mark. Naruto gave a small laugh but winced feeling the cracked ribs. He had suddenly felt a warm sensation as his body was being healed. Figuring it was when he turned to thank the angel however, instead of being Whis it was a tall blue humanoid female, his breath caught in his throat as he admired the beautiful angel, examining her figure mostly her nice round ass and breast. Man those have to be at least a D cup, what the hell you're not a pervert Naruto, you're not a pervert Naruto argued with himself shaking his head. Once he felt his body healed up he turned to her bowing. Thank you so much miss. He said trying to figure out her name. She said, Vados, my name is Vados Naritasan. I'm the angel of universe 6. I've heard so much about you from my little brother. Little brother? Naruto said in confusion, but blinked for a few seconds as his eyes turned saucer. He looked at Whis you have a sister. Whis gave a small laugh. Yes that's right, 10 siblings to be precise, and Vados is my older sister. Naruto's eyes almost popped out. Beerus cleared his throat, getting their attention. Not that I have anything against you Vados, but why are you here, is my idiot brother here as well. He whined at the end. 
No Beerusama, Champasama is on his planet, as for why I'm here, will Champsama throwing a fit seeing the battle between you and your student. Vados explained. Beerus laughed at this aw oh man I wish I could get a picture of it. He wiped his eyes. Wis shook his head at his master's behavior. If I may ask Naritasan, what was that technique that turned your body into those yellow flames? She curiously asked. Naruto felt his throat dry feeling a little nervous, but managed to explain to her about having the Kyubi inside of him and what it was, and how he managed to tame half its power. Fascinating, and judging by your transformation you can combine that with your majestic Super Saiyan forms. She concluded. He nodded, but when I entered it in my ultimate MSSJ2, it was a lot harder to control, since it was my second time using it. Admitted Naruto. So you're saying you took a chance knowing you couldn't control it for very long? Questioned Beerus. Pretty much yeah. He answered bluntly. Beidos had a call from her scepter gem and knew it was Champa. I must be going, Champa-sama is probably wondering where I am. She bowed to her brother and Beerus. She looked at Naruto and bowed to him. It was a pleasure meeting you Naritasan, I do hope we meet again maybe under. Different circumstances. She said in a seductive tone next to his ear and gave a wink as she tapped her staff and vanished. Naruto felt a little his cheeks burned bright red as he knew what she meant. He snapped out of his hypnotic state and had to think about his training, knowing he still had a long way to go. Unknown planet. An alien-like enemy charged at Naruto who was dodging blurs of punches and proceeded to grab and twist its arm, tearing it off causing it to roar and was blasted away. He wore his father's battle gear as the coat was swing as the breeze washed over him. Beerus had assigned Naruto to destroy a planet that was on the verge of extinction due to some vicious alien species, destroying the life on it. This was perfect for him to test how far his training paid off. After the battle training he had with Beerus, he had first worked on his ultimate MSSJ2 by staying in it as long as he could, it took a lot of time due to it using lots of Kai, but surprisingly, he managed to pull through and now can enter the form with no problem. He found more techniques that he can use with the KCM and invented one which was his most dangerous one of them all, it was a mixture of the tailed beast ball and a small dose of Hakai energy, which was enough to destroy an enemy or a planet. Two days had gone by when Naruto landed on the planet. He took his time exterminating the vicious aliens, they were not dumb or weak, nor were they intelligent and strong, but it was no problem for him. Naruto saw two more coming at him at insane speed, but he stood still. As they were centimeters away they had their razor claws out ready to shred however Naruto blocked the claws as he summoned out his black power pole and proceeded to sweep one of its feet and then swung the staff connecting the alien's head sending it away into a giant boulder. Before the alien got back up Naruto shot a small Kai energy destroying the last of the alien. He looked all around and sensed no sign of life. He activated his KCM and then called for the Whis. Whis can you hear me? He called out. Oh Naruto right on time, how's the assignment so far? Asked the angel. Take care of those aliens, I'm ready. He said and had his hand out while his chakra arms formed a purple ball which soon glowed a little light. Naruto floated up as Whis appeared behind him, he launched his chakra arm, slamming the Bijuu Hakai ball into the ground. Soon beams of light came out the ground and the planet shook. Let's get home Whis, I'm hungry. He said. The and Whis had soon teleported just as the planet exploded. Beerus planet. Both Saiyan and Angel appeared on the ground and saw Beerus who of course was laying back on his lounge chair. I took it, the assignment was no problem. Said Beerus as his student nodded. Yeah, but to be honest it was kind of boring, I mean I didn't even need to transform. Naruto said. Well you're just in luck cause you're going to be captain. Said Beerus which made Naruto confused and looked at Whis who explained about a tournament between Universe 7 and 6 that Beerus' brother Champa proposed, if Universe 7 win they would get to make a wish using what are called Super Dragon Balls. However if they lose Universe 7 would have to switch Earth with Universe 6, which didn't sound bad for Naruto, until the angel explained the war and extinction of Universe 6 Earth which shocked him. Geez, talk about lots of pressure. He said while he laid on the grass on his back. So any rules of this tournament? Well the first part will be a writing exam, said Wiss. What? Naruto sat up with his eyes wide comical. It was suggested by Vegeta that if other fighters with low intelligence will not participate, you'll need at least 50% to pass. Bira said, waving it off. Great I suck at writing, but this is not like Chunin exams, hopefully the writing will be a piece of cake. He thought. Anything else? The fight will take place in an arena. If thrown off you lose, weapons and killing are not allowed, otherwise you'll be disqualified. Wiss named them the rules. Naruto had thought about it as it sounded simple enough, but had a feeling these fighters from Universe 6 would be tough. Now as he thought about the six universes his mind drifted on a certain female angel. Beerus had a tick mark seeing his student wasn't responding to him. Oh I rat. 
he roared, sending a gust which snapped Naruto out as he flew and hit a tree. Ow, ow. Ow, ow, Naruto felt pain rack through his back as he got out the tree and turned to his sensei. Sorry sensei what did you say? He asked. I said we're going to Universe 7 to meet with Goku and Vegeta, are you coming? Beerus asked. Nothing better to do than Naruto nod, and Whis tapped his staff as they vanished. Universe 7. Goku and Piccolo were exchanging attacks connecting punch after punch, Goku blocked a kick and retaliated with many punches, which made Piccolo guard up. Goku swept a kick making the Namakian fall, but he caught and pushed himself up before again blocking many more punches and kick combinations. Vegeta was on the side watching the battle until he felt the same signature, but it was close. Goku and Piccolo stopped midway as they felt it too. He's here. Goku said with an excited grin and soon took off back to Capsule Core where Vegeta and Piccolo followed. Chapter 6 The Tournament of Destroyers, Naruto vs. Hit the Assassin Part 1. Naruto along with Beerus and Whis arrived on Earth, the blonde Saiyan looked around seeing the environment, it certainly looked different than his home. Beerus on the Whis, Naruto. Goku waved at the three giving his trademark smile. Yo Goku. Naruto greeted back, walking up to him. I can tell you've been training hard. Goku noticed. Naruto nodded and grinned. Yup I trained with Whis back at Beerus planet in his scepter, I got three years worth of training in three days. Well no kidding no wonder Yukai is much stronger, but you're not the only one. Goku gave a small smirk of confidence. Naruto knew what Goku meant as he sensed the orange-clad Saiyan's Kai and felt it much stronger than last time which surprised him a little but was excited at this. Good, our rematch will be much more of a challenge. He smirked back, still feeling confident. Don't think Kakarot is the only one getting stronger. Vegeta said as he walked over with his arms crossed. We'll see. Naruto said with a challenge grin. Hate to break this up, but it's best we leave now, Whis is everyone ready? Beerus asked the angel. Hi Beerusama everyone is already in the cube. Wiz said. Alright then let's not waste time. Said Beerus walking in the cube along with Vegeta, Goku and Naruto. Who was at the top as he tapped down his scepter making the cube float, with the group taking off in light speed. Naruto sat on the floor crisscrossed with a plate full of meat and started to gobble it down, along with Goku and Vegeta. Few minutes later the cube slightly slowed down as they were at their destination planet, but what awed everybody was the sight of the humongous dragon balls. Even Naruto was in awe of the sight. Now we know why they're called Super Dragon Balls. Naruto said, still in awe. Goku and Vegeta nod in agreement. The group came through the dome and admired the place and arena. Not bad but I like the arena. Naruto said. Goku nodded with a smile. This is perfect, this will just be like the world tournament. Vegeta looked around and saw Champ. Kakarot. He elbowed Goku, gaining his attention pointing out to Champa. So that's Beerusensei's brother. Naruto sweat dropped at the physical appearance of Universe 6 God. Goku nods. Yeah though they can't stand each other for some reason. Edo spoke. Now if you will, please follow me. I will guide you to the first challenge. She looked over at Naruto giving him a wink which he noticed making the blonde Saiyan cheeks blush. The group followed the angel as Bulma shouted about not failing the test. The group went up to some stairs and as they arrived to the top they looked at the other competitors, Naruto looked seeing a huge robot, a big gold space bear, a short boy who looked around 14 to 15, a blue alien with black horns and had armor-like skin. Finally a purple-skinned tall muscular humanoid man wearing a trench coat and boots. He felt the man's kai and it was impressive. Out of everyone he seemed to be the strongest, things may get serious now. Everyone had settled in their desks as Beidos explained the rules. Naruto had been going through the answers with no problem which on his part was a big relief, but not the same for Goku who was struggling. Ten minutes later the group came together, but there was only one problem. Why are there only four of you now? Beerus demanded. Goku had an apologetic look rubbing the back of his head sorry Beerusama. When Buu falls asleep he never wakes up. The group looked back at a sleeping Buu. Well there's no complaining, it's four on four now which still doesn't make a difference right? Naruto said. Beerus grumbled at this. The fight was next as an alien referee announced the fight which the first round started with Goku vs. Batamo. The match didn't take long as Goku at first had trouble against his opponent as it seemed every punch and kick was absorbed, but he managed to take the golden bear off its feet, dragging him near out the ring, where he then let Batamo go for a punch, only for the Saiyan to catch it and flipped him over his shoulder out the ring. That's how you do it Goku. Cheered Beerus along with others, but Champa was angry at this. Naruto knew Goku would win the match, but now the second match. The next match will be Goku vs Frost. Announced the alien referee. Goku saw the alien that looked like Frieza floating down to the ring. Naruto noticed some people were tense and wondered why, but it remembered why the alien looked familiar, he looked like Frieza the alien tyranny who destroyed Universe 7 Saiyan race. 
The match began and Frost startled Goku as he locked the legs around the Saiyan's neck and spun real fast before slamming him down. That was pretty unexpected, he looked like he was going for a punch, but instead came in close, where he knew Goku wouldn't have any room to attack leaving him exposed. Piccolo said. Goku had told Frost about him testing his power and slowly transforming into his final form. So I took it. Frieza did the same thing. Naruto asked Piccolo who nodded as they saw Frost transformed into his sockled final transformation. The match had picked up as Frost and Goku fraud all around flying and exchanging punches and Kai Blast, Frost managed to land a couple of punches before knocking Goku down the arena and unleashed a barrage of dark pink Kai Blast. The arena filled with smoke which soon cleared showing Goku alright as he wiped his GI that had marks. It's not over yet. Piccolo said Naruto nodded. Goku transformed into a Super Saiyan and called out Frost to show his true form which he accepted, unleashing a huge amount of energy blinding most of everyone. It died down showing Frost's true form. So that's his true form. Seems this fight is about to get intense. Naruto paid attention. Frost charged at Goku as he threw a hard right, but Goku caught it as the shockwave showed the power in the punch, the Saiyan retaliated with his own punch, sending Frost back in the air, making him hit the dome, he shook it off as he charged in full speed, but Goku kicked him in the chin, sending him back this time across the arena. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he knew something wasn't right, Goku is no doubt strong, but from the looks of it, Frost seemed to purposely miss his attacks. Frost was barely getting up covered in bruise marks and went for a punch which Goku blocked easily, but something happened, Goku started to look drowsy and weak as his body started to sway. Something is wrong. Naruto told Piccolo. Taking the chance Frost used his opportunity giving a hard swift kick to the ribs, sending Goku out the arena onto the floor. The guys along with Universe 7 were in disbelief, Kai Kai called out to her husband along with Goten. Goku is eliminated by ring out, the winner is. Frost. Announced the referee. Tampa laughed in satisfaction, way to go Frost. He turned to his brother giving a cocky grin. It looks like your strongest fighter has been eliminated. Beerus grit his teeth but kept his composure, as long as Naruto and Vegeta are in the tournament he still has a chance. The recovered Goku flew over to Piccolo, Naruto took a seat on a couch a few feet from Vegeta. You smell something fishy about that match. The Saiyan prince grunt in agreement. They watched the match as Piccolo was charging up his special attack, but had been dodging barrages of Kai beams, which he had been doing well, until one pierced through his leg throwing him off, but managed to endure the pain, he soon made multiple Depelgingers confusing his opponent. Frost started to blast all around till he found the real one and got close range attacking with fury of punches and a kick to the injured leg and another solid one to the chest, sending the Namekian back making him drop his attack, thinking he would win Frost didn't expect was Piccolo's arm wrapped around him. Naruto listened to Piccolo's explanation of his strategy which really impressed him. Damn he's smart just like Shikamaru, and that's saying something. He looked over at Frost and saw him tucking in his arm and then all of a sudden Piccolo started to react the same way as Goku, with no choice he let go of Frost who appeared in front of him and blasted a Kai through his chest, making the Namekian cry in pain as he flew back hitting the floor. The referee checked Piccolo for a heartbeat which he did and declared Frost the winner by knockout. Universe 7 were shocked again, Beerus was more angry than he was shocked, Naruto examined Frost closely, he went to sage mode and saw what looked like a tiny hole on the alien's wrist. Narrowing his eyes he stood up walking to the balcony. I call it a challenge. He yelled, gaining everyone's attention. Hey, what's the big idea? Demanded Champa. You almost fooled everyone but not me. Naruto told Frost and looked at the ref. Referee checks Frost for weapons. How dare you accuse one of my fighters of cheating. Champa was angry at the accusation. You're not getting out of this brother, referee. I demand you to search Frost for this instance. Beerus called out. The referee, scared of being destroyed, walked quickly over to Frost and examined every inch of him until he spotted a tiny hole in the wrist, looking closer he barely saw the needle covered in some kind of purple substance, he barely poked it and all of a sudden felt dizzy. Regaining himself the referee announced. Frost has been caught with a weapon, therefore he is disqualified. Tampa was angry at this and demanded from Beidos why she chose him, but she explained she was following Champasama's orders and that was to find a fighter that will win by any means necessary. Champa was angry at himself for his choice of words. Beidos continued further about the true Frost and what he does which shocked everyone, but Frost had an evil smile as he admitted that his nice persona was nothing but all imagined to hide behind his true motives. Naruto Kai leaked out after hearing Frost's motives, he was about to call out to the ref, but Vegeta beat him to it as he asked the referee not to disqualify Frost and that he'll fight him, he even asked him to allow Frost to use his poison. 
The match had begun, but Frost still was cocky as he charged, but what he didn't count on was Vegeta appearing in front of him in Super Saiyan form and delivering a hard punch in the gut with so much force that it blew Frost back in the air and broke through the dome sending him out. Frost has been eliminated by ring out, the winner is. Vegeta. Referee announced. Universe 7 cheered mostly Trunks and Bulma. Well that didn't take long. Naruto joked making Goku chuckle. I'm going to skip over Vegeta's two matches, the same as canon. The next match will be Vegeta vs. Hit. Announced the ref. The tall muscular man floated down the arena calmly. Vegeta analyzed his last opponent and could tell he was strong. But he would not lose. Naruto went over to Whis and asked. Whis and say any information on that guy. His name is Hit, he is known as the most skilled assassin of Universe 6. Whis informed me. Naruto looked at the man known as Hit while Whis continued. He's never failed to catch his target, he is called Hit the Infallible. Whoa is he that good? Goku looked impressed as he now watched the match. The match started and Vegeta transformed into blue SSJ, electricity crackled around him, Hit went into a stance. Vegeta mocked him about his stance, but Hit made no movement even his face expression didn't twitch. From Naruto's point of view there was no opening for Vegeta, this guy was serious, he looked over at Goku who grinned at this. Vegeta took a step, but Hit vanished in such speed shocking the Saiyan, then he appeared in front hitting Vegeta in the face sending him back. The group was shocked. What happened? Goku in shock. I didn't even see it. Piccolo said as he had the same reaction. Naruto was shocked at this. Even in my regular sage mode I couldn't follow his movements. Vegeta went again for the attack, but the man just appeared hitting the chest, head and throat, sending the Saiyan prince back who barely caught himself but spat a glob of blood. All those shots no ordinary person would walk back up from much less be alive, no wonder he is called the ultimate assassin, but that speed though. Naruto thought as he watched the match. Skip till Vegeta gets knocked out. The winner by knockout. Hit. The referee declared. Hit walked away with his hands in his trench coat pocket. It fell two eyes on him as he turned back to see Goku and then Naruto only for a few seconds and walked away. Naruto saw Goku fly over to his friends while he went over to Whis. Something tells me there's more than just pure speed with that hit guy. Naruto said to his teachers. Whis nod. You are right Naruto. What hit has been using is a technique known as time skip, which allows the user to skip time for a brief moment. Naruto whistled at that. That's an unbelievable technique. He looked at Goku warming up. Iris didn't show it, but was growing concerned about his chances of winning. It seems Goku will be next, I hope he can find a way to beat this hit guy. Do not forget about Naruto, Birasama after all he is your apprentice, and we have yet to see what he is capable of since he sent him off to that mission. Said Whis. Beerus looked at his apprentice who watched the match. Began. Called the referee. Goku charged at hit, vanishing and appearing behind him, and went for a low kick which looked like it could have connected, but in a second hit need Goku in the stomach, sending him back. The Saiyan was not done as he again charged, vanishing from spot to spot trying to throw hit off and went for a punch, however, in a second hit elbowed the Saiyan in the throat, sending him back again. Goku recovered and gave a small laugh, making his opponent confused. I think I'm starting to see your attacks now. Goku said, which didn't phase the assassin. What's he saying? Vegeta asked the Namekian who had no idea, Naruto was confused as well. Goku went for an attack as he was close which in a second hit had his knee up, but instead of hitting the body, Goku blocked it with his forearm shocking everybody. Goku had gone on the attack and in a second blocked Hit's punch and went for his own, but slipped however he used his maneuver doing a back fist which grazed Hit. He grazed him. Naruto said in shock. Goku went SSJ blue, and the two collided landing punches after punches, but Goku was getting the upper hand and had uppercut Hit sending him back. Everyone cheered for Goku. That's it Goku. Beerus cheered. Time skip till Goku uses Kaiken times 10 with SSJ Blue. He released an energy that most of the fighters recognized, Kaiken. He didn't stop as the Kaiken energy grew bigger combined with his SSJ Blue energy. Naruto was taken back by this. Was Goku holding back this much against him or did he train to this level? He looked at his hand and clenched it as he shook with excitement as he couldn't wait for that rematch. Kaiken times 10. Goku shouted out as the energy roared in power, and his skin was red while still in his SSJB. He charged at insane speed at Hit who didn't expect such speed and was nailed across the face sending him back, but Goku didn't stop as he unleashed a barrage of kick and punches that Hit was barely dodging. He used his time skip to attack, but to his shock Goku still moved at fast speed continuing the attacks. Goku felt his SSJB energy draining thanks to the Kaiken, with one last attack, he appeared on the ground and cupped his hand back, forming a big ball of blue energy. He unleashed a powerful Kamehameha which hit held back while being pushed back against the dome as it cracked. 
it still held the attack and saw Goku flying at him ready to deliver the final blow, the amount of energy unleashed broke the dome. Everyone was getting pulled from the space vacuum, but thankfully Whis and Beidos had repaired the damage. The audience looked once the smoke cleared and didn't see both fighters wondering where they were. Naruto looked up seeing the fighters on their god portraits and pointed it out. Everyone looked up to see both fighters breathing hard and Goku looked like he was going to drop. Beerus had a trickle of sweat while Champa was sweating bullets. Goku all of a sudden fell forward off the portrait onto the arena floor. Everyone was shocked, even Naruto. The referee checked over Goku, feeling his pulse beating. Goku is unconscious, therefore the winner by technical knockout. Hit. It floated down to the arena looking at the unconscious Goku who started to wake up afterwards, feeling his muscles on fire, he gave a weak smile towards the assassin. Looks like you win. Goku admitted. It for the first time gave a small smile. Gakusen you are the first person to have pushed me to another level, never had I thought I would face a fighter like you that would push me that far. He gave his respect. Goku gave his trademark smile laughing a little, but was in pain too much before he passed out. Piccolo picked him up and brought him back to the group. The haha nice one hit. Cheered Champa giving a cocky grin to Beerus infuriating him. Looks like it's my turn. Naruto took his coat off and left his staff, imagine Zeno Goku's costume without a coat. The next match will be hit versus Naruto Uzumaki. The referee announced, Naruto floated down to the arena. So does anybody know how strong this Naruto guy is, I mean he looks no older than 16 or 17. Bulma pointed out. Krillin rubbed his chin. Goku did tell me and Piccolo that he and Vegeta fought another Saiyan named Naruto from another universe, he beat Vegeta with no sweat and he was able to keep up with Goku. He informed them, shocking everyone. No way dad lost against him. Trunks asked in shock. Well if he was able to keep up with Goku hopefully he can beat this hit guy. Yamcha put in. Naruto looked at his opponent who looked a little beat up and a little fatigued, but still could fight. That hit guy doesn't even look that tired, it's amazing he can still go on after that attack from Goku. Piccolo traced his eyes from the hit to Naruto sensing his energy. This kid's energy is unbelievably high, much like Goku's, but I can feel another energy source in him, what is it? It all comes down to this, Naruto vs hit, let's see how far he has come along. Wiz said. I hope it can pull this off. Bira said with little nervousness. So this is the Saiyan my brother has been training, Beidos how strong is that kid? Champa asked his angel. From what I have seen from him he's able to push Birasama to an impressive level. Beidou said while not taking her eyes off Naruto, she could see his six-pack abs from his tight black shirt, making her lick her lips. Ah I'm not to worry, look what happened to his Sokol two strongest warriors. Champa is not worried at all. Beg hold on. Naruto called out confusing the referee and everyone else. The blonde Saiyan looked at Champa. Hey Champa, why don't we make this interesting? This gained the god of universe 6 attention. Why not take this match up a notch and throw the rules out the window? Naruto called out. What what is that idiot thinking he's doing? Beerus screamed in outrage. This seems interesting. Wiz said. Naruto looked at Hit. You're called an assassin for a reason even though you're strong, but you didn't go all out against Goku due to the rules, you maybe would have lost, but if it was the other way around I say he would have lost, right? He gave a fox grin. You seem to know about being an assassin. Hit said. Naruto shrugged, I've had my studies. Referee the rules no longer exist in this match. Champa called out. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, due to the request of Naruto Uzumaki this match will no longer have rules. What, is he crazy? Bulma shrieked in anger. As I was saying. Begin. The ref called out. Naruto charged at Hit who was in his stance and vanished appearing behind low with a rising kick in which in a second Hit blocked with his knee, but he was not done as he kicked with his other leg, with much force pushing Hit in the air. Naruto was not done as he unleashed multiple bicycle kicks which Hit was blocking until the Saiyan vanished. Hit looked up seeing Naruto ready to deliver a punch, but he time skipped elbowing the Saiyan in the throat, but instead of flying away, he vanished into a cloud of smoke. Hit was wide-eyed and looked down to where he felt his chin being cracked as Naruto uppercutted him further in the air and followed appearing above and went for a punch, but in a second he blocked Hit's attack but felt multiple punches around his body, sending him back as Hit landed with ease. Naruto landed down on the arena on his feet rubbing his chest feeling the pain. Looks like it's time to get serious. He said as he took his stance and cried out as he transformed into MSSJ2, but he was not done as he pulled more energy out as it roared like flames, but it started to form a solid glow around Naruto's body which glowed bright white. Its eyes narrowed at the transformation, this was much more different than Goku's even the aura around it was much different. Okay I've seen blonde, red and blue Super Saiyan, but white. Bulma said. Something's different about it thought, it's not just like Goku and Vegeta, I can't really describe it. Krillin said. 
in case you're wondering, this is a different form of Super Saiyan which is called Majestic Super Saiyan, but this form is known as Ultimate Majestic Super Saiyan 2. Naruto informed him of his fighting stance. He charged at insane speed and was close for a punch, but hit again used his time skip landing multiple blows in 3 seconds, sending Naruto back, but again was gone in a poof of smoke. When did he? He was cut off as he turned to block a knee, but didn't see the elbow connecting the side of his head, followed by a kick to the chest sending him back, but still stood his ground. How is he doing that, Beidos what is he doing? Champa asked angrily. Beidos shrugged at this. I'm not sure about Champa-sama. She told him but was interested in what the Saiyan did. Keep it up Naruto. Beerus cheered. Vegeta and Piccolo watched the match, while Goku was still unconscious. Whatever the kid is doing it's throwing hit off. Said Piccolo however Vegeta remembers what Naruto can do as he can create clones out of his Kai. Just like Kakarot blocking the attacks however he is switching it up as he's replacing himself with his clones to take the attacks, while the real one attacks from behind or front. Vegeta fist tightens at anger. Naruto charged, vanishing from spot to spot, four clones of Naruto appeared surrounding the assassin. Come on, try to find me. He taunted. It got in his stance not bothered by the clones surrounding him, with time skip he managed to attack all the clones in the vital organs destroying them, but none of them were the real Naruto. Looking up he saw the white-haired Saiyan charging up an attack. It threw a swift kick shooting a fast sharp Kai-like blade which forced Naruto to stop and barely dodged the attack, but felt a cut on his cheek, he touched his cheek seeing blood and licked it before he spat it out and gave a small grin. So I was right, there's more you have up your sleeves than your time skip. Said the white-haired Saiyan. Well now I would say this match just went up to a whole new level. Vado said. I incredible. Kaba in awe. So the kid was right. Said Piccolo. He heard a groan and turned to see Goku waking up. Good, you're awake. Piccolo took out a beam throwing at Goku which he caught with his mouth. Seconds later Goku started to get up but still felt his body sore. What happened? He asked, not remembering what happened and looked at the arena, seeing Naruto in the air and hit standing in the arena. Oh man, don't tell me. Complained Goku but Piccolo nod. You passed out. He answered. Oh man, I guess I still have to work more on the Kaiken. Goku gave a small laugh but then felt a pull on his cheek from none other than Beerus. You better hope Naruto wins. Beerus threatened to make Goku laugh nervously. Hey I got a feeling he got this in the bag. The orange clad Saiyan said with confidence. While you were taking a nap, they decided to ask Beerus on his brother to throw the rules out. Vegeta said as he still watched the fight. Huh, why? Asked Goku. Wiss answered. Hit is strong, but the problem was that most of his attacks are assassin moves, and as you know killing was against the rules. Oh so now with the rules gone Hit can unleash his other powerful attacks. Goku said as he got the idea. Wiss nod. Naruto charged, unleashing a fury of punches which Hit had been blocking, he went for a knee which Hit blocked with his own, and both elbows collided. They released a huge amount of energy. Naruto didn't look like he was struggling as he had a small grin as he was enjoying the fight. Both warriors broke as they jumped back. Hit time skipped as he was closer to Naruto, and his hands glowed a dark indigo color and unleashed a fury of punches to every vital organ. Naruto all of a sudden dropped on his knees coughing up a glob of blood. The referee ran over in concern. Can you continue? He asked Naruto. The Saiyan's body shook uncontrollably from the pain, coughing up blood he managed to get up to his feet, he nodded at the referee. I'm impressed, you managed to stand up on your feet after such an attack, believe that that was only a small amount of my strength, no doubt you would have been dead if I used my full attack. Hit said. Naruto gave a small chuckle which confused the assassin. Looks like I'll have to make you more serious. He said as he wiped the blood from his lips. He sat crisscross while concentrating, and soon wind had pick up which everyone felt. Hit, don't stand there, do something now. Yelled Champa. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he was in his sage mode. He stood up looking at it and did a bring it gesture. Taking up the challenge hit used a time skip appearing in front of Naruto, but to his shock, the blonde Saiyan managed to block his attacks and landed a solid straight punch to the chest, creating a shock wave making hit spit up saliva while skidding back. Hit held his chest feeling the pain and looked at the white spiky hair Saiyan, but noticed something different about him, not only the eyes, but the aura surrounding him. Seems you've noticed the aura surrounding me, let me explain. It's called Sage Mode which increases my speed and makes my attacks more powerful, even my pain endurance increases. Not only that, but I'm able to blend my Kai into anything natural let's say like this air we're breathing for example. The best part was that I was able to combine it with Super Saiyan Mode, which means my attacks and speed are more powerful than ever. Naruto explained impressing the fighters. Oh yeah that move, I had a hard time against him when he used that against me. Goku remembers the scenario between the two. 
From what he described, it seems Hit will be in a tight spot, said Piccolo. Vegeta grit his teeth in anger remembering his loss against the assassin. Whis and Beerus looked on. Here I come. Naruto said as he vanished appearing behind Hit, the assassin turned but saw nothing. Over here. He said in front, but again Hit looked seeing nothing he looked all around sensing his energy, but it was like he was all over the place. At the last second he blocked a knee strike, but Naruto didn't stop as he continued with a combination of punches, Hit continued to block the punches, and was ready to retaliate until a foot connected his chin, sending the assassin back. Naruto knew it was his chance, he gathered Kai in his right fist and charged, he closed in clocking his fist and was ready to land the blow, but he felt a tremendous pain and looked to see the assassin's fingers in his chest. The audience and guys were shocked. Naruto coughed blood and saw Hit holding his fist while his fingers were still in the Saiyan's chest. Just as Goku san you forced me to advance, the moment before you attacked I advanced giving me time to attack and stop you. Said Hit. Naruto coughed up and was kicked being sent back crashing on the ground arena as he reverted back to his normal self. Oh no. Goku exclaimed wanting to rush in, but Piccolo stopped him. Don't, he's still alive, I don't know how but he still is. The referee checked over at Naruto and felt his neck feeling a pulse. Naruto Uzumaki has been. No. Naruto weakly grunted out as he slowly sat up and started to shakingly get up. It's not over. Until one man is standing. He said while catching his breath. It didn't show it, but started to grow respect for this young man. No. This young warrior, even with a critical injury he still chooses to fight. Naruto gave a weak chuckle. I never fraud anyone this strong ever since finding about my Saiyan heritage well except Goku. He said. It looked over at the orange-clad fighter who was awake as he had his sheepish smile scratching the back of his head. I never thought I would be pushed this far into transforming again. To be honest I was hoping to save this against Goku for our rematch, but since I saw his Kaiken that I know he was planning to use on me, it should be fair that I show you my third transformation. Naruto said with a serious look. Whis did you know anything about this? Beerus asked the angel. The angel shook his head negatively nope. Naruto has another transformation. Goku is curious and excited about this. Has he really? Vegeta asked. We're about to find out. Piccolo said. Think about Goku's SSJ3 transforming against an embassine. Naruto screamed as he powered up to his MSSJ2, but continued as electricity crackled out his body and his Kai grew bigger, the pebbles on the ground started to pick up, and the arena started to crack in gusts of smoke, he kept shouting, forcing more of his Kai out which was roaring in power. The whole entire planet started to shake and everyone was trying to hold on. What's he doing? Shouted Bulma. This feels just like Goku's SSJ3, but this is crazy. Krillin said, holding on to his family. Unbelievable, he keep getting more stronger. Piccolo said with a beat of sweat. Goku can feel the energy irradiating off Naruto and knew something big was going to happen. Show me how strong you've got Naruto. Vegeta didn't know how to feel about this, he was angry that now the boy has a new transformation, but at the same time was impressed by the Saiyan's pride to keep fighting. Beidos make it stop. Cried out Champa trying to hold on. Beidos however wasn't listening as she watched Naruto and was awed by the power he was summoning out Naruto Uzumaki, you are one interesting man. Naruto screamed with all his might as a bright white Kai exploded from his body blinding everyone, even hit, the energy died down, and the smoke cleared showing Naruto Uzumaki who was completely different. His spiky hair was now a little dark white smooth and longer down to his waist, his muscles grew a little and were more sharply toned to find. White lighting is static around his body. Naruto's face had no expression and his eyes were now a little dark silver, he turned looking at hit. This. Is my power. The power of majestic Super Saiyan 3. Naruto was a little gruffed. Hit got in his stance. Here I come. Naruto charged ready for round 2. Chapter 7 Naruto vs Hit the Assassin Part 2, The Fourth Great Ninja War Begins Part 1. Rob Zombie Demonoid Phenomenon AMV 011. Naruto rushed at such speed appearing to the side shocking Hit and was kicked in the face sending him back but was still on his feet, however again Naruto appeared in front connecting a knee to the gut, making the assassin spit blood, but the majestic Saiyan was not done as he gave a elbow to the back of the neck and swiftly turned around connecting a kick to the side of the head, but Hit put his arm up blocking it but still rolled back on the ground and quickly got back up. Naruto still had a stoic expression, but a small grin formed, he vanished and appeared connecting a punch to the face, but Hit also connected one of his own, but neither fighter stopped as they relentlessly attacked each other with fast and hard punches, neither caved until their fist clash against each other, creating a shockwave sending both men back. Naruto flew high, sending a white Kai blast which hit backhand away, sending one of his own which Naruto slapped away, sending another Kai ball which soon ended up with both men blasting back and forth, dodging each other's attacks. 
looks like Naruto has indeed improved, that majestic Super Saiyan 3 seems to be able to keep with hit. Wiz said. Iris wasn't listening as he was cheering Naruto on making the angel sweat drop. Goku had looked and didn't see any effect that MSSJ3 had on Naruto just like his SSJ3, which at first would drain his Kai due to the amount of power being used, but over the years he was able to stabilize the form. Vegeta had remembered Kakarot fighting against Kid Majin Buu when he was in SSJ3, but this form that the Gaki was showing was something beyond SSJ3. Naruto slapped another Kai blast out the way and leaned his head back and roared, firing a large energy Kai wave, obliterating the assassin's attacks. Hit eyes widened at this and banished avoiding the blast. The smoke had cleared showing the damage that Naruto's blast did, as the arena looked like it was about to split in half. Holy shit. Yamcha blurted out and was hit by both Bulma and Kai Kai, as they scowled at him about kids being here. Unbelievable. Piccolo said as he was shocked at the display of power that was shown just by that blast. Goku was now all excited as he knew his rematch with Naruto would be greater and better than ever. Vegeta wouldn't admit it, but was slightly jealous of the boy's power. When he gets back to Earth he's going to train harder than he has ever done in his entire life. Naruto floated down looking around for hit, but just before he could dodge the assassin popped out of the ground, landing a rising knee to the chin sending him in the air, hit was not done as he unleashed a barrage of kicks, releasing multiple Kai blades which Naruto was dodging quickly. It closed in and a barrage of chain punches to Naruto made him spit blood and was kicked hard in the chest, sending him crashing down hard. It was not done as he formed a ball of energy and shot a powerful beam towards the ground, creating a big explosion, making the crowd shield their eyes from the debris, once the smoke was gone, the spot where Naruto crashed was nothing but a crater. Its eyes narrowed as he knew it shouldn't be that easy, on instinct he turned around putting both arms up blocking a kick that was going to connect his chest, but was still sent down crashing on the arena, Naruto floated down slightly panting as was hit. Naruto gained a small smile as he was enjoying his battle, but unknown to him so was the assassin. Both fighters vanished appearing all over the arena, Universe 7 crowd were confused as they heard the battle, but couldn't see anything except for Piccolo, Vegeta, Goku, Whis and Beerus. Naruto connected two punches as Hit retaliated with two of his own, they clashed kicks, elbows and punches. Hit connected a punch to the chest of Naruto who connected an elbow to the chest, both fighters clashed headbutts as their energy spilled out from their bodies. Both vanished again continuing their assault against each other, Naruto managed to lock a hold on Hit as he kicked him away, he formed a glass Kai blade charging at Hit and swiped at him, but the assassin avoided the attack and blew out a purple laser Kai which Naruto just in the nick of time blocked with his blade, and the laser redirected slicing Champa's portrait. New my beautiful portrait. Champa cried out however found this very funny as he laughed hard. Hit was backflipping away from his opponent as he jumped in midair and gave a swift kick, sending three Kai blades towards the majestic Saiyan, but he then transformed his Kai blade into a tall scythe and cut right through the attacks. He twirled his scythe and sent a gust of wind-like blade, Hit avoided the attack, but felt a scratch on his cheek and wiped it seeing blood. Naruto flew towards him swinging the scythe around in which the assassin was dodging and backflipped away, when he landed on his feet, he leaned his head back just on instinct, as the scythe went over him, quickly he grabbed the handle of the weapon and threw it back at fast speed, however Naruto caught it. He put his Kai scythe away getting in a stance which hit did too, both vanished before appearing in the air connecting more knees and punches, but each contact was blocked by the other, Naruto connected a good knee in the gut, but received an elbow to the face, both slammed against each other, locking in a grappled, and threw repeated knees that connected one another. They kicked each other in the chest, sending them back on the arena ground where they landed on their feet. Naruto landed back in his stance waiting for his opponent, but hit took a different position which Naruto recognized. He grinned. About time you take this more seriously. And AMB. It focused and in a few seconds he yelled as his Kai energy released out as it grew, however the Kai was much larger than it was against Goku. He's been holding back too. Piccolo said as sweat dripped from his forehead due to the strong Kai. Was nod. It's no wonder Hit is the strongest of Universe 6. This doesn't look good. Beerus's mood slightly changed as he saw the event. Vegeta said nothing as he looked on. Goku kept his eyes on the battle, wondering what Hit's plan is next and what will Naruto do. Finally the Kai that surrounded Hit vanished. Naruto knew what was coming next, he put his arms up, blocking the combinations of chain punches that still pushed him back. The majestic Saiyan had then felt the air knocked out of him and saw the assassin's knee in his gut, the pain almost made him drop his guard, but he held up and began his own assault to which Hit was matching, but started to land blows to the stomach, chest then to the throat, Naruto held his throat trying to get air, Hit used his time skip technique, landing about 50 solid punches. He stopped the attack and breathed calmly as he walked away. 
Naruto was shaking in pain as he fell down on his knees, vomiting up a gob of blood, he was forced to drop his MSSJ3 back to his normal MSSJ. Ira stood up Naruto get up. He cried out. Jamp laughed at this. That'll teach the boy. The crowd of Universe 7 were worried about this. Naruto felt like most of his vitals were going to explode, but thankfully the Kyuubi chakra was fixing it. He should have known that Hit was holding back more. He got up to his feet and clenched his fist to get his body to stop shaking and breathe calmly getting into his stance, Hit stopped and turned back to see Naruto panting. Figuring Hit would not attack he vanished and appeared delivering a knee, but the assassin caught it, but Naruto was not done as he continued with a combination of punches, but his opponent was having no trouble dodging each of them and connected an elbow to the sternum of the majestic Saiyan and then a Kai-infused back kick, sending him rolling on the ground but stopped himself while kneeling. Naruto coughed up more before he wiped the blood from his mouth while panting. I can see now how this guy kept up with Goku, what an amazing display of power. I hope that's not all you have, said Hit. Naruto chuckled as he stood up on his feet. Well you're not going to be disappointed cause this match is about to turn up to another level. He put his arm in an X guard concentrating summoning out his chakra. He gave a shout throwing his arms down, releasing a powerful pressure of chakra and vanished in a blink of an eye surprising hit, but before he could counter Naruto was in front of him delivering a powerful rising kick to the chin, sending the assassin in the air, however he was not done as he jumped continuing with multiple bicycle kicks to the chest before vanishing again. It was about to turn around, but was locked in an iron grip with the Saiyan's arms around his own, he tried to break free, but it was no use. Here's a move thanks to a friend of mine. Naruto spun with hit which turned to a cyclone heading straight down headfirst, creating a big impact kicking up wind and smoke. No hit. Champa cried out. Yes. Beerus cheered. Whoa I've never seen Naruto perform that before. Goku was amazed at the new move. Did you notice the increase of his energy, not only that, but that was pure speed. Piccolo said to Goku who nodded. Naruto jumped back panting and slightly winced from using the primary lotus, plus opening the first gate, it was only thanks to his Uzumaki bloodline and Saiyan DNA that he was able to handle the pain. The smoke cleared and showed Hit who was flat on his back, everyone was shocked. The alien ref ran over to Hit checking his pulse, before he could call for the winner Hit stopped him which not only surprised him, but everyone else, Naruto knew it wouldn't be that easy. Hit sat up and got to his feet but still felt his head pounding. It was only thanks to his Kai energy he was able to slightly break the fall, but the damage was still there, analyzing his opponent he could tell whatever move that the majestic Saiyan used seemed to have affected his body. It popped his neck getting in his stance, Naruto got up getting ready for what was about to come, but it was not till he felt a solid Kai punch straight to his heart which he felt stopped, he fell flat on his back. It knew it was over and looked at the referee. It's over, his heart is stopped, there's nothing more. He walked away, the alien referee ran to check on Naruto feeling his pulse, but there was none. The alien referee shook his head, shocking everyone, even Wiss and Beerus. The winner by death is. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he shouted, unleashing a powerful Kai energy surprising everyone, even the assassin who turned back, only to be surprised with a Kai-infused punch to the face, sending him skidding across the arena. Naruto was in his MSSJ form, but unknown to everyone Naruto had opened the second gate. It got back up rubbing the bruise on his face. Naruto vanished appearing with kicks to the assassin as the speed increased, making it difficult for Hit to dodge, the Saiyan landed a kick to the face, but the assault didn't stop. Once Naruto vanished appearing behind Hit attacking the spine with multiple punches and again appearing in front with a rising knee sending his opponent in the air. Appearing above he gave a hard double axe handle, sending the assassin crashing down to the arena, Naruto then leaned his head back and gave a giant roar, shooting out a bigger wide energy sphere, creating an energy wave towards where Hit crashed, creating a big explosion of white Kai energy. The audience closed their eyes due to the energy blast, the only ones that were not affected were the angels, destroyers, Goku and Vegeta. Naruto waited for the smoke to clear, his eyes widened as he leaned back dodging the purple laser Kai, but was cut on the chest, Hit appeared with his hands coated in Kai, connecting a fury of chain punches to the chest and connect a hard one to the chest, which no doubt cracked a few rib cages. Naruto fell down but barely landed on his feet. His muscles felt they were on fire and even though the Kaiubi chakra was healing him, he knew he had a limit. Looks like at this point, I can handle so much, so why don't we take this match up a notch and let's finish it. The majestic Saiyan said to the assassin, he got in a horse dance and unleashed a pool of chakra which danced around his body. So that was the second energy I was feeling from the kid, what's he planning next? Piccolo thought. That ready hit because this technique I'm about to unleash is going to change this battle around. Naruto said while gritting his teeth. The ground underneath him cracked and chunks of stone were lifted due to the power he was releasing while covered in a green aura. 
Everyone noticed that Naruto's skin was slightly changing red and his muscles also increased, finally his white Kai and chakra exploded out his body dancing around him roaring in power. Whoa that looks like the Kaiken with my SSB. Goku was amazed. This energy he's using, it's growing rapidly. Piccolo said in shock. Vegeta didn't say it but wanted to see this power that the boy was unleashing. Naruto looked at Hit giving a small grin. Just like the Kaiken, this technique will increase my speed and power, also with a combination of my MSSJ form, there's no telling how strong and fast I'll be, prepare yourself. It was nervous as this aura felt similar to the Kaiken that Goku used against him, he needs to finish this match now. Third gate gate of life open. Naruto roared and looked at Hit, who saw the Saiyan's eyes were fully silver. However Naruto didn't stop, fourth gate gate of pain opened. The veins on the Saiyan intensified. Naruto knelt down and took off at sonic speed, leaving a blast of gust and smoke, making the audience shield their eyes. AMV spin and burst 011. It used his time skip technique to counter, but it was useless as the Saiyan was too fast, shocking the assassin who was elbowed in the gut and assaulted with many punches. It's no use, your time skip is useless now. Naruto snarled at Hit and relentlessly attacked his body with Kai infused punches before uppercutting him in the air, where the Saiyan again vanished, appearing behind Hit, connecting a knee and elbow to the spine, sending him crashing down to the arena. Naruto again appeared in front, kicking both his feet up into the assassin's chin, sending him back in the air. Everyone looked up in the air, seeing Hit all over the place like a pinball, as Naruto vanished and appeared all over, unleashing other attacks. Hit was guarding up and many times tried to use his time skip, but just like the majestic Saiyan said it was useless, his guard finally broke, feeling a fury of punches and kicks all over him. Keep it going Naruto. Beerus cheered on. Whatever technique Naruto is using is very similar to the Kaiken. Wiz said. Tampa was sweating bullets, never seeing the assassin being manhandled. Beidos was impressed by this power that the majestic Saiyan was showing, like her master, she has never seen the assassin being handled. Goku became more excited as he couldn't wait for that rematch. Naruto landed a blow to the stomach and front kick, sending the assassin further in the air, Naruto felt his Kai draining fast, due to the combination of using the gates, he needed to finish this. Appearing on the ground he cupped his hand back forming a bluish white energy ball. Super majestic spiral wave. He thrust his hands forward shooting the ball that turned to a wave of energy. It vanished as he was inside the attack and saw Naruto speeding towards him. You're mine. His right arm cocked back holding a Rasengan that was infused with his Kai, with a shout that sounded like an Azeru, he slammed the orb into the stomach of the assassin, which also unleashed a powerful energy blast, sending Hit into the roof dome. The brightness of the attack blinded everyone except Wiss, Vados and Beerus. End AMV 146. The energy attack died down which showed Hit on the dome roof that cracked and he fell straight down landing body first on the arena. Naruto landed and fell on his knees breathing hard, feeling his right arm useless and his muscles slightly torn, he looked over at his opponent who didn't respond, the referee checked him over feeling a pulse, making him sigh in relief. Hit has been knocked out, the winner is. Naruto Uzumaki. Therefore the winner of the tournament is the 7th universe. The referee announced making the U7 crowd cheer. Naruto had a tired smile and fell on his back breathing in relief, thank goodness. Wiz smiled. What a match right Birasama. He said turning to his master. Yes, yes yes, cheered Beerus, making the angel giggle. The destroyer cleared his throat, regaining himself. Yes indeed it was. Goku and Vegeta flew over to Naruto who sat up. Yo Naruto, that was incredible, I didn't know you had a technique like the Kaiken. Naruto gave a tired smile. Yeah, it's called the Eight Gates, as I said before it increases my speed and power, but the cost of it is my body due the amount of stress, but it was thanks to my MSSJ form my body was able to stay together without breaking down, to be honest, this was my first time using it with my MSSJ, I knew if I messed up there would be a heavy consequences on my body. So just like Kakarot you took a chance. Vegeta said with his arms crossed. Naruto nodded as he slowly got to his feet still feeling his body ache, with his good left arm he caught a bean that was tossed by Piccolo who came by. Eat one, it'll help you. He said. Naruto chewed the bean, swallowed it, and started to feel his body rapidly heal. Whoa. He was amazed, feeling his energy restored. He looked and saw Hit getting up, he walked over to the assassin coming face to face, no words were said till Naruto held his hand out surprising the assassin. A good match. Naruto said, giving a small smile to the assassin. Hit for a few seconds looked at him before returning a small smile and shook the Saiyan's hand. Both warriors departed back to their team. Naruto flew over to U7 but heard U6 God and looked over seeing the fat cat holding two Hakai energy balls, saying that he can destroy them now if he wanted to. He was furious at the sore loser, both him and Goku wanted to do something, 
but Beerus told them that it was not their business and it was U6's business. Tampa continued to rant on until Vados told him to look down the arena which he did which instantly made him cry out in nervousness, Wiss did the same to Beerus who looked and had the same reaction as his brother. Both Saiyans were confused and looked down upon seeing a small alien-like child in the arena with two tall men. I'd it can't be. Champa sweating bullets. I'd it really is. Beerus felt his mouth dry. Xenosama. Both destroyers appeared before him and bowed deep as did three other Kais. Sire it's an honor to meet you. The Supreme Kai of U7 is sweating a little. We hope you're having a good day, my king. The old Kai greeted. Same as canon. Anyway I came here because I felt a battle going on and was to warn you, but I watched a fight and it was very fun, and fun is good right? Zeno asked them. Yes sire. Both destroyers responded and bowed. Which then gave me a good idea, a tournament with all the universe together, I think we should try it sometime, wouldn't that be fun? Asked Zeno. Hell yeah. Both Naruto and Goku shouted out as they agreed. I'm always up for more challenges. Naruto walked up to Zeno, but was stopped as the two alien guards blocked his path. He put his hand up in defense. Whoa take it easy guys I just want to talk to him. They shook their heads no. Pretty please. Asked Goku. They still shook their heads no. You fools, what are you doing? I can understand Goku, but you are Naruto. Beerus cried out. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. You are the majestic Saiyan of Universe Zero correct? Zeno stepped forward as the guards cleared away. Naruto nodded and bowed. Yes Zeno-sama. You are both strong and both had good matches. Zeno smiled and complimented. Goku laughed, scratching the back of his head. Thanks, if it's not too much trouble, can we have the tournament soon? This shocked the destroyers. Zeno thought about it and. Okie dokie, we can have it really soon. Sounds like a plan. Goku held out a hand, shocking everyone except Naruto. After the two shook hands everyone calmed down as Zeno left with his guards. You morons, don't you realize you could have destroyed us all? Beerus yelled. Naruto waved it off. Oh come on Beerus and say it wasn't that bad besides then he wouldn't have the tournament. Beerus slapped his forehead and groaned. It had been two days since the tournament and Naruto decided to stay a while in U7 traveling through different planets, he realized that he would need to up his skills for the tournament that Zeno said. Naruto found a planet called Yardrat meeting a peacefully alien race, he was able to learn from them a move called instant transmission, it took a whole month to get the technique down. He then went on a planet called Nunamak, meeting another alien race called Namekians, who were like Piccolo, as they were extremely smart and strong. One day the planet was being overrun by space mercenaries, but Naruto took care of them. As a token of appreciation the Namekians had offered Naruto the seven Dragon Balls, he wanted to refuse, but remember learning about the Dragon Balls and what they can do. He accepted it, and a young Namekian spoke the language summoning Purunga who was a giant muscle dragon, Naruto jaw drop at the size. What would you like to wish? Asked the young Namekian. Naruto was thinking about it, but got an idea. Can you ask him if he can bring back two of the strongest Saiyans alive? The young Namekian spoke and soon Puranga spoke. This will require two wishes, but it is granted. The red eyes glowed. Soon a figure slowly revealed showing two people, Naruto was surprised seeing a man who just looks like Goku except a scar was on his cheek, he wore a beige battle armor with shoulder pads and boots, blue armbands he also has an additional thin scar running horizontally across his right bicep. His tail is also draped loosely around his hips. The other was a woman of average height and slender build. She had a lighter pale skin complexion, onyx eyes, and shaggy black hair reaching her shoulders. She wore a sleeveless black bodysuit and pink combat armor highlighted with green and outlined by white, in addition to purple armbands and white boots. Her armor also had a thylang hoop. You have one more wish. Said the young Namekian. Naruto was pondering this and got it. I wish for a device to find the strongest warriors around. The Namekian spoke the words and Puranga spoke it is done. Puranga's eyes glowed, Naruto felt an object in his hand, seeing it was a scouter. The dragon said his goodbyes and disappeared as the dragon balls turned to stone, Naruto thanked the young Namekian and waited for the two Saiyans to wake. Ten minutes later the man woke up, he sat up shaking his head. What happened? He questioned himself but remembered his last defense against Frieza, and he failed, panicking he looked all over wondering where the hell he was at. Seeing his wife he checked on her. Jine, Jine wake up. The man slightly shook her, making her groan and started to wake up. She saw her husband Bardock and without thinking jumped on him hugging and crying. Bardock held his wife tight. I'm here Jine. He comforted her. Oh good you're both awake. They heard and saw a young man. Who are you? Question demanded Bardock standing up shielding his wife. Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki, I was the one that brought you both back to life. He told them which confused them. Oh? Asked Jine. 
Naruto smiled scratching the back of his head. Well it was actually thanks to the Dragon Balls. Dragon Balls. Both Saiyans thought. Their stomach growled in hunger which they blushed in embarrassment, Naruto chuckled. Come on, I got some food. He led them as they followed. Ardok and Jain were eating their twelfth bowl of ramen, lucky for Naruto he sealed away many foods from U7. He had told them about the twelve universes, the god and him being a different Saiyan race called the Majestic Saiyan. Bardock gave a big burp as did Jain who closed her mouth and blushed in embarrassment. Bardock chuckled at this. There's more of a reason why I brought you both back to life. You see there's a tournament that will involve the strongest from each universe and where I come from I'm the last of my kind. Both Saiyans listened. There are Saiyans that will join and are very strong, both named Vegeta and Goku are precisely his Saiyan named Kakarot. Jain dropped her bowl of Raymond after hearing her son's name, while Bardock was shocked too. Recently I helped his team win a small tournament and their powers are no joke, especially Goku and Vegeta. Now seeing as you both reacted to Goku's name, I assumed he means something to you. Naruto said. Bardock set his food down and sighed. He began to explain about them being Kakarot's parents and sending him away as Frieza attacked planet Vegeta. Jain wiped the small tears away, remembering the last time she saw her second born. Naruto listened to Bardock's story and felt a similarity between him and Goku, both parents sacrificed their lives for the sake of them, as their parents believed they were destined for great things. He heard his scouter beep and looked and saw it detected something. What did you pick up? Bardock asked, recognizing the scooter. A strong energy spiked up. He stood up looking out the distance. You're going to follow it? Bardock asked but knew Naruto was going too. Naruto nods. I'm coming along. Bardock said. You sure? Naruto asked. He nodded. Naruto was in a pod that the mercenaries used to fly here, he punched in the coordinates and told Bardock, who arrived after telling Gina to stay with the Namekians, entered a space pod, and soon both flew towards the planet, they soon landed in their destination. Both stepped off the space pod looking around. About 10 minutes passed as they continued searching till the scouter beeped. He or she is around here somewhere. Naruto looked everywhere as was Bardock till they noticed a cave, taking precaution Naruto summoned out his Kai blade, while Bardock created a blue energy Kai, they were in front of the entrance. If anyone's in there, please step out now. Naruto called out, both waited for a minute and heard nothing but footsteps approaching, and stepping out was an older man with grey hair, a beard and a scar over his right eye. Bardock gasps in shock. Paragus. The man known as Paragus was shocked as well seeing one of his old friends. Bardock is that you? He asked. Both men dropped their attack and stepped forward, but they heard another footstep, and behind Paragus was a huge man who was 7'5", he had shaggy black hair, darker tan skin with a scar across his left cheek, left bicep, and an X-shaped scar on his left pectoral, and was fairly muscular. He wore purple skin-tight pants with white boots that have a yellow striping at the toes. He also wears a green fur pelt draped around his waist and flows on the backside in blue wristbands. However, Naruto notices the silver collar around the man's neck. The man was confused wondering who these people were. It's alright Broly. Paragus assured him. Bardock was shocked to hear this. Wait, is this really Broly? He questioned as he remembered seeing the child before was sent off. Paragus nod. Yes King Vegeta. He spat the name like Venom sent Broly only a few weeks after he was born, in fear of his power. Bardock sneered at the thought of King Vegeta, who didn't even have the backbone to fight Frieza. Naruto was disgusted by Vegeta's father to do something inhuman all because of power. But how are you alive? I heard about planet Vegeta's destruction, and the Saiyan race was wiped out by a meteor. Paragus asked. Bardock sneered at that, but told Paragus about the truth of the planet's destruction, and the one held responsible was Frieza. Paragus had remembered Frieza once when he was with his father King Cold, but was shocked at this. I don't understand, then how did you survive? He asked. Bardock pointed over to Naruto. Ask him. Naruto stepped forward introducing himself and told Paragus the same thing he told Bardock, once he mentioned Vegeta, he saw the older Saiyan's face scowling. So with that said, I want your son to participate in this tournament under my universe team. Paragus had thought about it and looked at his son, then thinking about revenge against Vegeta, Paragus nod as he accepted this. Naruto was about to continue but felt something was wrong, so he contacted Whis who thankfully answered. Oh Naruto, I can tell you feel something wrong from your universe correct? Wiss asked as he knew. Yeah, I just felt many spikes of chakra out of nowhere, what's going on? Naruto asked. I had looked into it and it seems that man you said was called Madara has started the war, from what I can tell all the shinobis are fighting some white creatures who have the ability to shapeshift. Naruto knew this was the work of Zetsu. I'm going. Tell Barasensei I said. Thanks. He dropped the connection. What's going on? Bardock asked. 
my universe is at war, I have to stop it. He told them. I'm coming, I've been dead for years and I'm looking for a good fight, he said. I shall come along as well, Broly hasn't been on a battlefield before, but he's strong enough to hold his own. Paragus assisted. Naruto looked at both men for a few seconds and nodded, all right, hold on to my shoulder. He told them as the three men did. He concentrated on finding one of his friend's energy and instantly disappeared. Battlefield. Bakashi and Sakura were holding back the reanimation of Zabuza and Haku, but they were in trouble as backup were attacked by six other legendary swordsmen of the mist, thinking the battle was about to be in Kabuto's favor, both Zabuza and Haku were blown away and crashed. Sakura and Kakashi were shocked, wondering what happened. Looks like I came just in time. They heard a familiar voice and looked up to see their favorite knucklehead, but he was not alone as he was with three other men, but one of them was big. Narutakin. Sakura said quietly. Bakashi was relieved to see his former student. Ardok, Paragus, Broly, help the others, I'll be facing these two. The Saiyan told them. The two men nod while Paragus leads Broly. Naruto floated down and saw two people that were another reason why he chose to protect his home. Zabuza. Haku. Naruto gave a sad smile. Both of the Mist Shinobi got up as their limbs were restored. You've grown, kid. Zabuza said. Narutokin. Haku thought. I never would have thought we would be facing each other again. Naruto said. I can say the same thing. Zabuza chuckled. All right enough of this. Kabuto activated a ram, and both Haku and Zabuza tensed as chakra leaked out of their bodies. Naruto-kun. Please stop us. Haku said. Naruto was angry as it reminded him of the battle at the bridge, but he knew he had to do it. Naruto transformed into his MSSJ, shocking both Shinobis. All right. Prepare yourself. He charged at the Shinobis. Chapter 8 The Fourth Great Ninja War Begins Part 2, Backup Arrives at the Attack of the Saiyans. Bardock was dodging attacks from the three of the seven swordsmen, even though the mist was there he didn't have trouble sensing them. Be retaliating with a series of punches, elbows and a backflip kick sending them away, the Saiyan saw two more in the air and fired a Kai Blast, destroying parts of their body and fell, but were slowly reanimating back, giving the SEAL team a chance to seal the two bodies, he continued on fighting three of the swordsmen, but one of them left to go after Broly. Broly slammed his fist against the jaw of the last owner of Samahata sending him away, he then turned around swiftly giving a backfist to another swordsman, sending him crashing into a tree, a flying needle pierced into Broly's shoulder, making the warrior shout in pain. Broly. Paragus called out to his son. The weapon proceeded to wrap around the giant Saiyan and was squeezing him however it didn't last long as the pain turned into rage as he broke free and turned to see the one responsible, locking eyes on his prey, Broly charged grabbing the masked swordsman, by the face proceeding to slam the ninja into the ground repeatedly and relentlessly, creating a deep body crater. Enough. Paragus ordered however his son disobeyed, he pulled out a remote from his hip and clicked a button. Broly felt a voltage of electricity shocking through his body, forcing him to drop the ninja and slowly calm down. Paragus what the hell. Bardock called out while kicking away two of the Kiri ninjas and blasted them away where they were being sealed, he floated up in front of the Elder Saiyan, with his arms crossed with a look that said to explain. Naruto vanished in the mist before appearing before the revived Kiri ninjas, with fast punches and kicks, they barely were able to dodge the attacks as they were too fast, however elbow to the gut, followed by a snapping swift kick, sent them skidding back. The Budo was already getting annoyed with the and these newcomers, let's see how you like this. He activated a ram seal. Zabuza went through hand signs. Suit and water dragon jutsu. A huge water dragon popped out a river rushing at Naruto who shot a white kai destroying the dragon, this shocked Kabuto behind the scenes. Naruto jumped as he turned around, connecting a knee to the chin of Haku, sending the Yuki member into the ice mirror, destroying it, he then grabbed the legs, spinning the ice ninja into Zabuza crashing into him. Naruto, you have to weaken them in order for us to seal them. Kakashi called out to inform. Hearing his former sensei he nods. He opened both his hands creating two kai balls. He looked at the two people who showed him the true life and meaning of being a shinobi. Zabuza. May you find peace in the afterlife with Haku. Haku-chan. I know why you lied about your true self. And all I can say is. I'll never forget you. He quietly said and threw the attacks in which exploded a powerful blast on contact. Once the air cleared the reanimation was slowly reforming, not wasting time the sealing team went ahead and proceeded to seal the bodies. Haku looked at Naruto, giving him a smile. Thank you Naruto-kun. She said for the last time as the seal was complete. Naruto felt a tear drip down his cheek and clenched his fist in rage. He shouted in the air releasing his kai blinding the shinobis, once it died down, it revealed the majestic saiyan with lightning crackling around his body and was a little muscular. His hair was a little spikier, but most noticeably his kai flared in power. 
The Shinobis were shocked at what they had just seen as were Kakashi and Sakura, but remembered the transformation against Madara. Naruto saw Bardock, Paragus with Broly regrouping after finishing their opponents, he flew and landed next to them. Bardock was shocked seeing this strong Kai energy, so this was the power of the majestic Super Saiyan, can the SSJ of legend really match up to it, Paragus was shocked as well, he might be stronger than Broly who too was surprised. Alright from the looks of it we're gonna have to split up, Naruto created two Kai clones. My Kai clones should be strong enough to aid you when you need it, plus they'll let my friends know your allies. He informed them. Before he continued he stopped as he felt a familiar dark powerful chakra, his eyes narrowed as he looked to the west. He only knew one chakra that had this feeling. The Kyubi. What is it? Questioned Bardock. I'm feeling a familiar power that I know of and if I'm right, this will change the battle if we don't stop it. Naruto said. Broly and I will take care of it. Paraga said. The majestic Saiyan looked at both men and then at Broly, feeling his power grow. Alright then but be careful, if I'm corrected watch out to not get hit by the tails. He advised them to nod, they placed their hands on the Kai clone shoulder and vanished. He looked at Bardock. I'm going to find the bastard who controls the reanimation, I'm sure once the user is killed the jutsu will drop, I need you to help my friends against these white creatures. The Saiyan father nods. Before Naruto left he heard his name and turned to be hugged by Sakura. Be careful. The damned Suchikage and Rakage want to lock you up. She told him quietly. Naruto broke the hug and gave a grin. I'll be fine, don't worry about me. He winked before he flew off shocking more of the shinobis. The Kashi looked up at his student flying away. Good luck Naruto. Wishing his students safely. Headquarters. Reikijama, Naruto Uzumaki has appeared on the battlefield along with three other men. Said one the shinobis. Where is he? Barked a. We can't tell Reikijama, he and the three men had banished. Said the man. The Reikij was furious at this, Tsunade however had a ghost smirk, as she knew the battle was going to be in their favor soon. Give them hell kid. Battlefield. Barry was battling against Kinkaku who had transformed to the second Kyubi chakra form, he was dodging the tails as each stabbed or slammed into the ground, many of the alliance shinobi threw jutsu after jutsu, but it was not effective. Kinkaku Kyubi formed a black purple ball and aided, Dari eyes widened as he had seen this move before. Earth squad defense. He called out as the earth team formed many giant earth wells. The beast blasted the attack obliterating the defense and was about to destroy them, however, a green wave of energy clashed against the attack, pushing it back into Kinkaku creating a big explosion, sending shockwaves as many shinobis shield their eyes. Once the smoke cleared Kinkaku got back up and growled looking for whoever did that. Hey. Asshole. Up here. Naruto called out as he was floating, Kyubi Kinkaku growled and used his tails to attack however, the majestic Saiyan was dodging them with ease before shooting a Kai blast, sending the beast back slightly. Attack Broly. Paragus commanded. Broly gave a shout as his energy spiked up and flew towards the beast, while dodging the tails and connect a bone-breaking punch to the face making it fly back, but the Saiyan was not done as he flew after the beast and grabbed it by the face giving many headbutts, but the last one sent the Kyubi Kinkaku away before crashing into the ground. Naruto was impressed with the power Broly possessed, even though this was a weak version of the Kyubi chakra it still had some power, but Broly had no trouble. Barry watched the battle and saw the kid from the meeting and remembered the Rakage's orders, however seeing the power the kid and his companions had, it would be dull to fight right now. Broly charged at the beast slamming his fist into the gut, pushing it deep while flying forward with it. Not done yet he slammed his knee into the spine, followed by a hard axe handle, sending the Kyubi Kinkaku into the ground which created a crater. Ayubi Kinkaku roared trying to get up, but Broly quickly slammed his feet into the beast and repeatedly stomped on him before jumping back and shooting many green Kai blasts, creating a big explosion. Once the smoke cleared the Kyubi Kinkaku looked beaten, never has anyone one been able to take down the beast and all of a sudden this big newcomer shows and took down the enemy like child's play. Enough Broly. Paragus commended making the giant Saiyan stop. Barry sealed Kinkaku inside the Kahaku no Jme and saw the kid floated down along with Paragus and Broly. Look, I got orders from the Rakage to apprehend you if you're in this battle, but considering you just saved many lives and mine, I'll turn a blind eye. Said the Black Lightning user. Naruto gave a nod as he appreciated it, before he spoke the ground shook and came out as a humongous humanoid monster. What is that thing? One of the Shinobis shouted. Naruto flew along with Broly and Paragus. Once they were close the majestic Saiyan saw the one person that made his blood boil. Madara Cha. His Kai flared more and flew at sonic speed, then without any warning the mask, Madara was greeted by a solid punch to the face sending him back, but was still on his feet. Madara glared up, but didn't expect the Kai Ubi Jinchuriki to be here, but this was a better time. 
Before he had a chance to speak he was dodging Naruto's Kai blasts, again he was hit this time in the chest by a kick, sending him back more. This was ridiculous, how was this so strong? He took a closer look and saw that he was using the same transformation he saw before. Naruto had dodged a stomp from the Jito Meizo and fired mini Kai blasts, but it had no effect. He blocked a punch that sent him through some huge boulders. Everyone thought he was dead, but to their surprise he bursted through the rocks. Ow, 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 that's going to leave a mark. Kai Naruto clone rolled his neck popping it. Ergus commanded Broly to attack to which the Saiyan sped towards and launched a hard punch which surprisingly made the monster step back. Broly unleashed many more punches to the monster, but soon it began to get irritated and punched the Saiyan who blocked it but still crashed through the earth. Naruto flew towards the monster and leaned his head back before blasting a white Kai wave from his mouth, making it drop on a knee, however it started to get back up. Before the majestic Saiyan could attack again a figure sped by him revealing to be Broly who gave a nasty punch to the Jito Meizo jaw, again making it step back this time a little farther, the Saiyan's punches became louder as each blow landed. Broly is getting more powerful so fast. Naruto said who floated next to Paragus who nodded. Yes, I trained Broly to the best of my knowledge, what's astounding is each damage he takes his power grows and his battle instincts increase, he learns just as he fights. Paragus said with pride. Naruto looked at the Saiyan and knew there was more in Broly, but that thought can be for later, he went into a stance getting his signature move ready. The Inoshika Cho trio looked on at the battle. I'm glad he's on our side. Choji said. Shikamaru was analyzing the battle and then looked over to the knucklehead who was in a stance with his hand cut back forming a white Kai energy. What's Naruto doing? Questioned Ino. I don't know but I have a feeling it's going to be big. Said the shadow possession user. Naruto was ready. Move. He called out as he thrust his hands forward shooting the attack majestic spiral wave. Broly heard this and moved before the attack hit on target, making the Jito Meizo roar before falling back. Thinking that it done it everyone sighed in relief, but that didn't last long as the monster roared shooting lightning out its body taking out some of the shinobi's force. Broly was hit by the attack and was sent flying into a cliff. To the elder Saiyan's horror the collar around the neck had broken. No 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 no, it can't be. Paragus repeated in fear pulling out the remote and trying, but it was useless. What was that? Naruto's eyes narrowed at the Saiyan who flinched at the glare. Do made a device years ago for Broly to keep him under control as his power is too dangerous. In one of our spars he somehow lost control of it almost killing me. With no choice I made the device should he again lose control. Finished the elder Saiyan. Naruto was feeling his blood boiling hearing this, before he said anything, they felt an energy spike really high and saw Broly showing a tint of green Kai around his body, not only that, but his hair seemed to slightly look untamed. Broly's head snapped up and gave a loud shout breaking out of the cliff and flew, launching a punch to the monster's face, sending a shockwave. He continued with big lefts and rights relentlessly. Naruto eyes wide at this. His power again increased, but this time even greater. The muscled Saiyan shot out a large green energy Kai wave from his mouth to the Meizo face which cried in pain, but he wouldn't let up who again connected a bone shattering punch to the creature making it fall back, but the Saiyan didn't stop as he started to pound the head forming a crater with each blow. Ladara was getting nervous as he didn't know how long the Jito Meizo would hold up, he needed what he came for. He saw the Nojime and teleported next to it and was about to disappear with it, but the majestic Saiyan appeared surprising him and was met with a solid front punch to the front face. Madara stepped back feeling the effect even with the mask protecting him, he was about to be kicked by the majestic Saiyan, but thankfully he used his Kamui as the attack went through him. Naruto grabbed a large pot and floated up. He smirked at the angry Madara. I'm guessing you need this in order to feed the Kayubi chakra to that monster. Naruto concluded by pissing the Achiha off. Naruto Yuzumaki, you are starting to become a nuisance. Madara clenched his fist. The majestic Saiyan threw the big jar to him which he caught but was confused. Go ahead feed that to your monster, I'll be happy to show you my true power and destroy whatever you throw at me to prove to you Madara, it's useless to fight against me. If I were you. I would be getting ready. Madara didn't take reconsideration in this threat and left in a swirling vortex, along with the Jito Meizo vanishing, causing Broly to snap out of his rage. Naruto turns to see an angry Derry. You fool, do you realize what you have done, he questioned demanded. Oh relax, it's nothing that I can't handle. The majestic Saiyan waved it off and excused himself as he flew towards Paragus. All right, by the looks of it, night time is already coming in, so that means we're going to have to fly and be on the lookout for the enemy and for those white creatures. He led them as they flew off. Medical base. Bardock was looking around seeing many Shinobis injured and were being treated, seeing this brought flashbacks of his time he was under Frieza which angered him. He broke from his thoughts as he sensed something wrong. 
Floating up he flew over to the strange energy he was sensing, he spotted the figure and landed near a tent. He peeked over seeing it go into the tent. Ardok acting fast ran into the tent and saw two of the shinobis, Sakura he knew, since Naruto told him but the man with long hair and wide eyes he has never seen. Ardok is something wrong? Sakura asked, seeing the look on the Saiyan's face. I felt a strange Kai energy that I was not familiar with and saw something come in here. The Saiyan said and narrowed his eyes towards the man. Before Sakura asked, the man pulled out a kunai and lunged towards her, but she turned around nailing a fist into his gut and slammed him down, creating a small crater. The man transformed into a white zetsu. So you're able to manipulate the chakra you absorb transforming into your victims. She gave an iron grip around the throat. Ardok was impressed by the woman's logic, not to mention strength. I have a feeling there's more of them. Out there. He added. Looks like I got work to do. He turned around with a grin that craved for battle and left as other shinobis came in. But the real Naruto. Naruto was able to get information from one of the white zetsus of the perpetrator behind the Ido Tensei. It revealed to be the one person he was irritated by and hated just as much as Madara, and that man was Kabuto. He also learned that the man had fused himself with the DNA of Orochimaru, after extracting the info he obliterated the white zetsu. Right now MSSJ Naruto had transformed into his Kyubi chakra mode, with his coat flaming yellow with black markings and a swirl on the back, without knowing it, it slowly transformed into flaming white. Kabuto. I will show you no mercy for what I'm about to do to you. He flew faster out in the distance. He looked down seeing shinobis throwing weapons at him, but knew these were the enemies, he created four chakra arms that shot out Kai energies, destroying many of the enemies that turned back to white zetsus. Naruto saw a giant one charging at him, he held a finger up creating a mini Kai Rasen shuriken, and tossed it which sliced through the creature before exploding into a blast. He decided to try his new move that he had been working on to finish half the group of enemies. He raised his right hand concentrating his Kai into his hand, while adding his wind chakra which formed a swirling white blue ball, he clenched it tight and threw it towards the enemies hitting one which in three seconds exploded into a force of wind, sending the enemies scattering. Looks like everyone will need my help, let's do it. He said and created thousands of KCM, Kaiubi chakra mode, Naruto spreading out. He turned to leave but saw two people that he was familiar with, he landed in front of them. Itachi. Nagato. Naruto, it's been a while said Itachi. It is good to see again, although I wish it was under different circumstances. Said Nagato. Naruto nodded as he felt the same way. Me too, I promise you both that Kabuto and Madara will pay for this. He bowed. The two men were then in a trance well, then we'll see about that now won't we? Kabuto activated the jutsu. Both men charged at Naruto who anticipated this and attacked head on, he was blocking kicks from Itachi and gave a reverse spin kick sending the Ichiha back, he was suddenly being pulled and saw Nagato, quickly he vanished thanks to his instant transmission, appearing behind the former Akatsuki leader kicking him in the spine, sending him crashing. What happened to Sasuke? Itachi went through hand signs blowing a huge fireball out towards Naruto who opened his mouth shooting a Kai wave destroying the attack. Sasuke is a wanted criminal. He attacked the five cages and joined Madara. Naruto said, shocking Itachi. Did Madara tell him? He thought. Naruto had deflected a blast from Nagato, whose arm transformed into a machine cannon that shot out a beam, he created a mini Kai shuriken, throwing it at the arm, slicing it off and gave a kick, sending the reanimated shinobi away crashing through the ground. The Matarasu. Naruto watch out. Itachi called out as the black flames came at the majestic Saiyan who backflipped away from it landing on his feet and launching a Kai blast, nailing Itachi who fell but was reanimating. The Budo was getting tired of that and decided that playtime was over. You've been making a fool out of me for far too long Naruto. Itachi got up and felt his body about to lose control, using his moment he activates his Manjiku Sharingan. Naruto was wide eye and felt something coming up his throat, he felt he was going to throw up and all of a sudden a crow came out his mouth. He gagged and coughed. What the heck was that? He regained himself. What's going on, why can't I control him? Kabuto in shock. Itachi began to explain about implanting Shisui Manjiku Sharingan inside the crow and using the Kotamatsukami, and had planned on using it on Sasuke should he ever try to destroy Kanahagakur. I know it may be wrong for me to say, but you would basically be sending him to an illusion world, not showing him the true world and its moment of darkness. Naruto bluntly said. Itachi was a little surprised at this. Itachi. A lot has happened to me for the past months. But to me it feels like years. Sasuke did an unforgivable crime by attacking the five cages, but not just that he was working with a man who is the reason why this war is happening. But there's one thing that can only get through to him. That's you. His older brother. 
Itachi was in silence as he listened to the words of the blonde shinobi however that was cut off as a summon came out which was a three-headed dog with the Rinnegan eyes, and then an ancient prehistoric looking bird was summoned, with the rider revealing to be Nagato. We'll talk later, let's take care of this first. Naruto said, looking at the creatures. He flew up to the bird while Itachi activated his Susanoo fighting the three-headed dog. Naruto was dodging blasts of energy from Nagato, using his instant transmission he appeared above, but then a third hand popped out his back grabbing Naruto and started to drain his chakra. Got you now kid. Kabuto said sinisterly. Naruto felt the Kyuubi chakra fading, thinking quickly he dropped Kyuubi chakra mode, and in his MSSJ1, he formed his Kai blade slicing the arm off and fired a small Kai blast, sending Nagato off the bird. Once Nagato's body hit the ground he was healing quickly, but when he was about to get up Itachi who had sealed the three-headed dog in his Susanoo sword, stabbed Nagato with the same weapon. Naruto dropped to the ground as he saw Nagato cracking, looking at the Saiyan one more time. Naruto. You have the power to change this world for the greater good, to change it into a better place. Jiri Asensei and I have faith in you. Good luck Naruto Uzumaki. He gave a small smile as he was sealed in the sword. Naruto gave a sad smile before looking down clenching his fist in anger, damn that Kabuto. What will you do now? Itachi questioned. The Saiyan looked out in the distance, I'm going after Kabuto, I feel like I'm close to him, and once I find him I'll force him to drop the jutsu. By any means necessary. He said in a cold tone. Itachi could tell Naruto had changed seeing in the eyes he no longer saw the naive knucklehead, but something like a warrior. I'll be coming along, no doubt Sasuke will also search for him as well. He said. Naruto nodded all right but keep up. He flew away as Itachi followed. How is he doing that? He questioned himself. But Kai Naruto Paragus and Broly and Sunagakur. Naruto flew along with the two Saiyans as they went toward Suna, where his best friend Gara and along with the damned Tsuchikage were battling the Nidame Mizukage, along with the Sandame Reikage. Spotting his friend battling the Nidame Mizukage Mirage while he saw the real one pointing behind Anoki looking as if he was ready to fire something, using instant transmission, he appeared grabbing the Mizukage arm twisting it and blasted Akai sending the man back. Anoki looked back, seeing that the one that saved him. Was none other than Naruto Uzumaki who looked back at him. Are you going to accept my help or keep being a stubborn old man? The majestic Saiyan said. Anoki glared at him but didn't say anything. Naruto saw Gara coming to him. Good to see you again Gara. The Kazuki edge nod as he greeted, he saw two men behind the Uzumaki shinobi. Their allies. A couple of friends of mine. He informed. The four men heard an explosion and saw the Sandame Reikage who was covered in lightning-like armor. The Sandame Reikage. Anoki said. Naruto still in MSSJ form had flown fast towards the man with a punch, but he dodged it, and Naruto turned with a swift hard kick connecting the Reikage, sending him skidding back but still on his feet. He then fired Kai after Kai, but the Sandane Reikage was dodging the attacks with ease. This guy is fast and tough. Naruto thought I'll have to transform into my MSSJ2 form. He tensed up as he shouted out, transforming into his second form. The Alliance Shinobis were shocked at this as was Tamari. Broly started shaking and tending more, giving a growl. Paragus saw this. Calm down. He ordered his son but that didn't work. He shouted and charged towards the Reikage. Time to get this battle Naruto stopped midway as he sidestepped quickly and a gust of wind blew back, he saw Broly charging after the rakage who blocked the attack head on but was being pushed back. You're strong, if I was alive I wouldn't mind sparring against you. Complimented the Sandame. Broly gave a left punch sending the undead cage crashing into a giant boulder, the Saiyan's eyes narrowed at the spot where the rakage crashed. All of a sudden like lightning the rakage appeared in front of Broly catching him off guard and gave a lariat sending the Saiyan crashing through three huge stone cliffs and into the ground. Naruto flew towards the rakage and was closing in before vanishing and appearing behind, he formed his scythe Kai and swung at the rakage who dodged the attack, the majestic Saiyan continued with a combo of attacks with the weapon. Throwing the weapon at such speed the rakage leaned backwards which Naruto wanted and formed a Kai Rasengan, he then used instant transmission appearing in front of the rakage and was a second away from contact however, the cage slammed his right hand that was covered in lightning into the attack, sending both men back. Naruto landed back. He had to admit it he was impressed by the Sandame rakage strength and speed, if they had met long ago they could have had one hell of a fight. Thinking he may have to go ultimate MSSJ2 he got in his stance but felt the ground shake as did everyone else. Exploding out from the ground rose up Broly who shouted with anger, and his eyes glowing a little green, with his Kai lightly showing again. Rushing at the cage he nailed a punch which connected. Each blow was loud, and then a kick sent the cage flying however Broly rushed grabbing a leg and slamming the sandame on the ground, repeatedly creating a crater that got bigger. 
The Saiyan spun the Reikage and launched him in the air, he opened his mouth as a green Kai was forming and shouted blasting a green energy wave which almost destroyed the body as it fell. Broly wasn't done and was going to rush in, but Naruto stepped in front making him stop. Easy big guy, the fight is over. Naruto assured him seeing the intensity on the Saiyan's face and slowly started to calm. The majestic Saiyan turns to meet up with Tamari. Thanks for the help Naruto, and you big guy. She said to Naruto and looked over to Broly who was surprised as he had never been appreciated before. No problem, I'm going to see if your brother needs help. He flew with Broly who met with Paragus and Metgara who were just sealing the second Mizukage. Looks like you got this under control. Naruto said. Are nods. I'm guessing you're a shadow clone. He guessed. Naruto nods. Yeah, the boss is taking care of bigger things, he is sending shadow clones throughout the battlefield. What can be bigger things than fighting this war sneered Inoki. Naruto gave him a cold stare. How about the one behind this jutsu, I found out the man behind it is Kabuto who was Orochimaru's right hand man. The cages were surprised at this. What will you do now? Gara asked. We'll stick around since reinforcements will be all around the nation. Naruto said. Gara accepted this although Inoki still thought it was a bad idea. But Bardock. Bardock was helping Kakashi and Guy take down the remaining seven swordsmen, but the battle was not done as White Zetsus's army appeared. He laughed at this, catching the two Jonin's attention. Is that all you got? Pathetic. He flew at the army, taking out ten of them and blasting them. The Saiyan warrior saw one jumping at him, but Hai kicked it away, he formed a blue Kai ball. Try this. Throwing the Kai hitting one of the Zetsu exploding, taking out a good chunk of the army. More Zetsus appeared, but Bardock was not going to let up. When he was about to attack, half of them were smashed by a ball of white energy. Looking up the Saiyan saw what looked like a person on fire, but looking closely he saw it was Naruto. What happened to you kid? He questioned. It's another of my powers, the real me sent reinforcement. Bardock nods at this before blasting a white Zetsu. Naruto chakra arms shot out Kai balls. The real Naruto was flying while Itachi followed. So you were chosen to be the god of destruction of this universe? Asked the Leitacha. Naruto nods as he had explained about the Twelve Universe and him being an alien known as a majestic Saiyans plus the god. Yup, since then I have been training the way of the destroyer under Barusensei who is a god of another universe. What will you do about Sasuke when you see him? He questioned, but before the Ichiha could answer Sasuke passed them, but only spotted him while Naruto flew faster, leaving Itachi to talk to Sasuke. Good luck Itachi. Naruto said and locked onto a sinister chakra, no doubt it felt like Orochimaru. He flew faster, the sooner he got there the better. Soon a battlefield. Hai Naruto suddenly felt a tremendous chakra, he looked up on a cliff, he saw a bandage man, but the other was someone that made a lot of people's hearts drop. The man was fair-skinned, spiky black hair down to his waist with a bang covering the side of his face. He wore crimson armor, but underneath he wore a blue high-collared long sleeve mantle that splits down the lower half and a simple light brown obi and a belt. When the person opened his eyes Sharingan was shown sending chills to every shinobi, this was one of the most feared shinobi to ever live in history. Madara Chiha. Who is that? Naruto bluntly asked. Madara Chiha. But how? Enoki said, still in shock. Wait a minute, that man with the Sharingan is the real Madara Chiha. Naruto was now confused. Then who the hell is that masked man? He saw Madara jump down and the shinobi force attack, but he broke through them like nothing and was attacking, as well as redirecting attacks from every direction, he grabbed a sword blocking blade attacks, throwing a killing a shinobi, and grabbed a explosive note slapping it on a shinobi kicking him into a group which went off killing them. He had enough as he charged with a punch nailing Madara in the face, sending him flying back, but landed safely. Naruto was in front of the alliance force in his MSSJ2 form. Madara narrowed his eyes at the majestic Saiyan, he made a few hand signs. Katen great fire annihilation. Madara blew out a giant sea of flames. Seeing the attack coming he called out to Broly, while he focused the Kai energy in his mouth, as did the giant Saiyan, when ready both men shouted releasing a wave of green and white Kai that combined. The attacks collided creating an explosion of smoke covering the battlefield. Madara appeared cutting down more of the alliance, he dodged sand attacks and jumped high in the air, however Naruto appeared behind with his majestic spiral wave that he shot a blue aura that formed into a humanoid figure shielding Madara. Madara Susanu formed two more arms and chakra-like swords and started to attack the force, Naruto shot many Kai blasts trying to gain its attention, which it did as he dodged a blade and continued to fire shots. Broly was doing the same as he charged while dodging the blades and landed a punch to the chest of Susanu, which shook the humanoid shield. The humanoid armor raised its arm and came down with the sword onto the Saiyan, but to the Achiha's surprise, Broly caught the hand. 
Bari used the distraction and pulled Madara out of the Susanoo before flinging him up in the air, where Naruto flew with a white Kai covered fist, colliding with the Ichiha's chest, sending him into the ground crashing. Not finished yet, the majestic Saiyan created the Kairasan Shuriken and threw it towards the down Ichiha, the Shuriken made contact before exploding into invisible Kai blades. Naruto waited seeing the results, and to his shock, Madara was unharmed as he was in Susanoo, but not only that his eyes were purple with black rings. Rinnegan the majestic Saiyan thought. Madara, still in his Susanoo, jumped onto the cliff next to the control nidame Tsuchikich. It seems that boy has powers that I have never seen before, not to mention that last attack. My Susanoo slightly cracked, whatever he used didn't just use chakra. This just might get interesting. He went through some hand signs as did the Susanoo. Everyone was prepared for the attack until they saw darkness shadowing over them, they all looked up and felt fear enter their heart as they gaze on a giant almost planet-like meteorite heading down on them. Naruto's eyes almost bugged out on this, just how strong was this guy. He flew fast over to Broly and Paragus. Alright big man I'm going to need your help with this, try to stall that meteor. Hurry. He urged Broly. Understanding this he flew towards the giant meteor and slammed his hands against it and shouted using his strength to stop the falling attack. Naruto shouted as his Kai grew higher and electricity crackled around the body, the battlefield shook all around, and the Alliance tried to stay on their feet, with a louder shout he transformed into his MMS J3, but he was not finished as he formed his main attack. A Saiyan grit his teeth still holding up the giant meteor, Madara was actually impressed by the man's strength, knowing this would take long, he activate the Jutsu again, as a second meteorite came down on on the first one, let's see how you handle this. Broly was now having trouble as the weight doubled and was being pushed down, the Saiyan was now getting frustrated as he tried harder to hold it, which soon led to anger. He gave a loud shout as Kai flared like crazy, while his eyes were bright green. He began to actually push back the meteorites which actually shocked the former Ichiha leader. Naruto's attack was ready. Let go. He called out, but the Saiyan was not listening, he cursed at this however Broly shoved the meteorites away and opened his mouth, taking this chance Naruto thrust his hand shooting a super majestic spiral wave, which mixed with Broly's mouth Kai blast hitting the first meteorite, it took a few seconds till the first one obliterated, then soon did second one. Naruto dropped on his knee while also dropping his MSS J3 form back to his normal self. Broly fell down exhausted a little while Paragus checked on him. That boy is really starting to annoy me said Kabuto through the undead Tsuchikich. Madara for the first time in a long time may have found a worthy opponent, he looked at Naruto then at Broly. Let's see how they deal with this. He went through fast hand signs. Giant trees and sharp branches popped out and spread attacking the alliance force, Naruto, along with Paragus and Broly flew up. This guy's unbelievable. Naruto said, his Kai was dropping and soon would vanish. He hoped that reinforcement would come through. His prayer was answered as a KCM clone arrived. Good I was just about to run out of Kai and Chakra. Side relief Kai Naruto. ACM Naruto nodded and gave a thumbs up which the Kai clone did as it poofed away. The real Naruto got the information from his Kai clone and was shocked that this masked man was not Madara Chia, but that leaves one questioning, who the hell was this guy? Feeling the evil Chakra, he landed in front of a cave. You better say your prayers Kabuto because the only god that's going to listen to you. Is me. The Saiyan's eyes glowed purple for a few seconds turning back into red. Chapter 9 The Fourth Great Ninja War Part 3, Saiyans vs. Bijuu, The Awakening. Naruto in his KCM and MSSJ form looked up at the undead Ichiha, from the memory he got from his clone, this man was no ordinary powerful shinobi, it was a reason why he was the most feared shinobi to ever have lived. Looking over to his left he saw Broly recovered and was ready to fight. Before they charged, two bolts of lightning hit the ground in front of them, and appeared were three people, the Mizukage, Reikage and Hokage. Akajama. Naruto was shocked to see his leader surrogate mother. Tsunade looked back, giving a grin. Looks like you've been busy, Gaki. She said. Naruto blinked a little confused, but gave a small laugh rubbing the back of his head. Tsunade. Senju. I of course expected no less that you would appear, after all the Uzumaki and Senju are of course allies, said Madara. The slug princess narrowed her eyes on the man. You should have stayed dead Madara, the world would be a better place without you. Was it now? said an amused Madara trying to upset the Senju. Because from what I see you're all the same. Weak. And pathetic. He said coldly at the end. He looked at the Saiyans. However you both are quite different from the rest, may I know the names of you both. Naruto gave a grin. It's Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. And my friend Broly. Pointing his thumb back at the muscled Saiyan. The former Ichiha leader didn't flinch as a huge figure revealing to be A in his lightning armor, had his fist cocked back and went to attack, but Susanoo armor blocked it, and a skeletal hand popped out smacking the rakage away, sending him back landing on his feet, angering him. 
As I said. Weak. Madara mocked. Sunaid looked back to the majestic Saiyan. Narita you need to find that masked man, we can take care of Madara. He was going to protest. This is an order from your Hokage. She sternly said which left no arguments. Naruto nodded and told the Saiyans to hold on to his shoulder, he looked at Tsunade. Be careful. Mom. He said and vanished along with the Saiyans. Tsunade gave a small smile before it vanished once she looked at the Achiha with a fire in her eyes that has not been seen since her grandfather. She slammed her fist in her hand and marks appeared on her arms and face. Get ready Madara. Because I will show you the true power. Of the Senju clan. She declared. Bardock sent a scatter of Kai blasts, taking out multiple Zetsus and grabbing one, spinning it around, knocking others away before being tossed and vaporized. He saw a few of the Shinobis struggling against the clones and flew over taking them out. He saw a giant monstrous one charging, he gathered Kai in his right hand forming a blue ball. Have a taste of this. Bardock threw the attack in which hit the creature dead center chest which made a hole, but it started to shake and exploded into chunks. He floated down after meeting with Kakashi. Well that takes care of that. He said. Yeah for now at least. Kakashi added. Naruto appeared in front of the guy surprising Kakashi, but Bardock was calm knowing it was him. About time you finished. The Saiyan said. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, giving his sheepish look. Sorry I just got caught up in the moment. He looked at his sensei with a serious look. There's something you should know, sensei, the masked man is not Madara Cha. Kakashi was confused. What do you mean, how do you know? Because me and my big friend here just faced a real him a few minutes ago. Naruto said, surprising his sensei. Plus the old bastard Tsuchikic confirmed it was him, he's been dead for many years. Who is this Madara guy? Bardock asked. Madara Cha, he is said to be the strongest shinobi to ever live on par with our former Shadame Hokage. Kakashi explained. Hearing this made Bardock say in blood stir. That strong huh? Bardock said with his arm crossed with a grin. Don't underestimate him. Even though we could take care of him, Madara is an Edo Tensei and the strongest shinobi for a reason. Naruto said. The majestic Saiyan stopped as he felt seven chakra signatures approaching close by. He turned around looking back. We got company, he said, gaining the men's attention. On the trees were seven people, the masked man and along with the former six. You. Naruto's eyes turned cold. We meet once again Yuzumaki. For the last time said the man. Who's this guy? Questioned Bardock. The supposed Madara Echeha, but since we know he's been dead. Who are you? Naruto demanded. I am no one. All I want is the success of Project Tsuki no me, that's all. Said the man. Buddy I don't know who you are, but your voice is starting to piss me off. Bardock said. Ah so the monkey speaks. The mask Echeha insulted. Bardock fist clenched making his Kai flared in anger, being called a monkey was one of the worst insults you can say to a Saiyan. Before he could attack Naruto held his arm out stopping him. Big talk for a guy who not too long ago was getting his ass kicked by a sockled monkey. Naruto grinned, feeling the irritation of the Achiha. Let me introduce you to a couple of puppets of mine. The man said as the Jinchurikus went into action. Sensei get everyone away from here me and the guys got this. Naruto told his sensei and flew in the air along with Bardock and Broly, while Kakashi had told the men to fall back. The former Jinchuriki of the Yanbi spat out lava balls which the Saiyans dodged easily, and Naruto sent out multiple Kai Blast, but the undead Mizukage created an aqua mirror, in which created a clone of Naruto doing the same attack creating an explosion, as the attacks connected covering the area in smoke. They flew out the smoke and looked, seeing bubbles all around. Naruto's eyes widened knowing this jutsu. Move fast. Everyone spread out as multiple bubbles burst and exploded. Bardock looked seeing the Jinchuriki of Nibi charging at him connecting a fist which he blocked but knew something was wrong, however it was too late as claws popped out from the knuckles piercing through his forearm, making him grunt in pain, but being in so many battles his whole life made him have a high pain tolerance. He connected a knee followed by a backflip kick to the chin, sending Kanoichi away, taking the claws out. In mid-air he saw the Yanbi Jinchuriki covered in lava while charging at him, he clenched his right fist gathering Kai in it, he managed to evade the attack and slammed the attack into the man's back, blasting a wave of blue Kai, sending him crashing through the trees. Broly was battling it out against the Gobi Jinchuriki exchanging punches, but the Saiyan slowly started to get immune to them, and his attacks were harder and quicker. He landed a hard right and left hook, followed by a front kick to the face, sending the shinobi flying, but the assault was not done when Broly flew landing another kick, cracking the armor of the blasting him into a couple of trees destroying them and the ground. 
Hearing something flying Broly turned to see the Nanabi Jinchuriki who was releasing tiny light particles which turned the battlefield bright blinding the Saiyan, the recovered Gobi Jinchuriki, landed a punch to the body, but it did no effect to the Saiyan who grabbed him and gave a solid headbutt followed by a double axe handle, sending the shinobi crashing hard in the ground. Naruto was blocking attacks from the Mizukage's staff hook, he decided to make it, even as he summoned out his Kai scythe twirling it around and made a bring it gesture at the cage who charged. Both had exchanged attack after attack, sparks dancing all around them till they locked up. Naruto sensed the Jinchuriki of Rakubi behind him and had to do something quick, he broke the hold slicing through the staff and kicked the cage away and threw his weapon behind him, which hit the Jinchuriki cutting the body in half, the Saiyan shinobi noticed something in the chest as the body reformed. That looks like a rod, the same rod Nagato used when he was controlling pain, so he does have the Rinnegan. Naruto's scythe returned to him while he created a white Kai and blasted the attack, which would have hit had it not been for the masked man who interfered using the Kamui to absorb the attack. Naruto was going to go after him, but from behind dodged a red tail and saw the Mizukage in the second Biju form, he cursed knowing he should have not been distracted, he used his chakra arms extending and nailing the cage, with a Rasengan Kai blasting it away, before he had chance another tail went by him and saw another Jinchuriki in the second form and charged after it. Bardock was dodging the tails from the transformed Nibi Jinchuriki, sending Kai blasts hitting the beast, but it shook them off extending its arm going for a slash which Bardock dodged flying at the beast, landing a few punches following with a corkscrew kick sending the away. The Yanbi Jinchuriki appeared behind going for a stab with tail, but Bardock vanished leaving an after image confusing the beast till it felt a kick in the spine sending it down, but it grabbed a branch with its tail and swung back towards the Saiyan and went for a slash which Bardock avoided before launching his signature Kai move right javelin at the Jinchuriki. Unfortunately it saw the attack coming and swung four of its tail, redirecting the attack at such speed that Bardock didn't have time to block the attack which hit him and exploded. The Saiyan jumped out the smoke landing on a branch, he looked fine, although half his armor was destroyed and had some scratches. He jumped to another tree as he dodged a lava ball, but the assault continued as the Jinchuriki shot out multiple of them at the Saiyan, who was continuing to dodge them, he sensed something coming down and looked up seeing the Nibi Jinchuriki launching its tail at him. He cursed but managed to avoid the tails and barely the lava ball, but still suffered a burn mark on his arm. He looked at the two side by side growling at him. Bardock tore a piece of clothing from his pants, wrapping it around his burn mark on his left arm, he gave a grin. Now this is a challenge. The Saiyan powered up and flew after them. Broly and the transformed Gobi locked in a grapple battling for dominance. The beast growled, but Broly was not intimidated one bit and soon started to bend the hands of it, giving his own growl in which his power grew. He gave a strong headbutt creating a shockwave making the Jinchuriki stun before receiving a huge punch connecting his body, which would have gone through had it not been for the chakra cloak, but Broly wasn't done as he created a green Kai ball blasting it away. He looked up and caught a hold of the Nanabi Jinchuriki's face and flew slamming its face across multiple trees destroying them, he then swung the beast around real fast throwing it into more trees destroying them. Sensing something from behind he just dodged a claw from the Gobi, but still got slashed in the chest, Broly winced as the Bijuu chakra started to burn him, Gobi swung back around with its tail nailing a punch, sending the Saiyan flying back. The Nabi appeared behind slashing the back making Broly shout in pain and crash to the ground, he struggled to get back up, but was still feeling the effect of the chakra. Head up yelled Paragus. The Gobi jumped down at the Saiyan to finish him, but it was not meant to be as Broly snapped his head up and gave a loud shout, making a bright green energy flare out of nowhere, knocking the Jinchuriki back. He stood up as he kept shouting. The muscles in his body tense, his eyes were no longer black, but now took on a slight green-yellowish color. Seeing the Nanabi Jinchuriki coming at him he opened his mouth forming a green Kai which he then fired at the Nanabi, sending it into the air, which made a huge explosion shaking the area and probably halfway throughout the battlefield. Naruto kicked the Sanbi Jinchuriki into a couple of trees, feeling the area shake. He looked up to see Broly's attack and was jaw dropped. Holy shit. He thought but shook his head almost forgetting about his fight. He blocked the Rakubi's tails with his Kai scythe and was pushing forwards, knocking each tail away coming at him. Once seeing the opening he vanished using his instant transmission appearing above the beast and hit it with a Kai-infused Rasengan, adding more power into the attack, sending the Jinchuriki flying through trees. Feeling someone behind him he turned quickly swinging the scythe which phased through the mask who tried to grab him. Naruto had twirled his weapon using the blunt side which the masked man blocked with a gun by, but was pushed back away. He saw the Sanbi from the left and a recovered Rakubi on the right both rushing at him, putting his scythe away, he put his arms up in a guard and closed his eyes gathering Kai in his hands. Once the Jinchurikas were inches away his eyes snapped open, extending his arms out and gave a shout blasting both of them away. 
The masked man looked seeing his puppets being beaten even in their second form, they were still being overpowered. I have no choice but for them to enter their final form. I was hoping I would hold out longer. Who are these people? The man made a hand sign as then the Jinchurikis transformed into their final form, as they grew into giants destroying the forest and were in their respective Biju form. Naruto landed next to the Saiyans who looked a little beat up, but we're alright. He looked over the giant Biju, but noticed that the Gobi tried to attack the masked man, but a chain covered in a purple aura popped out the ground wrapping around the neck slamming it into the ground. Looks like he doesn't have full control, but we shouldn't let up. Alright guys get ready. Naruto told them. Bardock knew that Naruto and Broly could handle these beasts, but he could not. Not at this form. He focused his Kai creating a powerball and threw it in the air which exploded forming a full moon. Naruto looked up seeing this then at Bardock who threw it and was going to ask but started to see the Saiyan shaking and growling. The color in the Saiyan's eyes were pure white, he shouted in the air as the muscles in his body started to grow, his teeth grew canines, and his face started to transform slowly while the scream was getting louder and changing into a roar. Naruto was shocked seeing Bardock transformed but remembered that a Saiyan can change into an Azeru under the full moon, but he didn't know that Bardock could make one. The three men flew back as Bardock grew bigger and bigger till he was fully into his great ape form, he charged after the tailed beasts. Come on big guy. Naruto said flying fast towards the Bijuu as Broly followed out of instinct to fight. Bardock locked a grapple with the Yanbi pushing each other back for dominance till he kicked the Bijuu in the face, he turned around landing a right hook to the face of Nibi sending her away. Yanbi locked a hold around the neck of Bardock. The Sanbi retreaded in its spike shell and soon started to roll fast like a spike boulder towards Bardock, but he was having none of that. He flipped Son Goku over his shoulder and threw him at the Sanbi, making them collide rolling back, he opened his mouth shooting a blue Kai beam at the Bijuus. Broly flew towards the giant insect known as the Nanabi, he dodged flying wind blades from the Nanabi who flapped its wings, he connected a punch, pushing it back then a kick to the face dazing it. He charged again but this time sending many green Kai blasts which slightly damaged it. Hearing fast steps Broly looked back to see the Gobi who was controlled charging at him. The Saiyan stood his ground catching the sharp horn and stopped it. He growled as he lifted up the Bijuu with insane strength and spun around before tossing it at Nanabi, so fast the Bijuu didn't have time to dodge as they collided, Broly opened his mouth charging a Kai beam which he blast connecting the Bijuus damaging them more. Naruto was flying all around the Nibi who was trying to swat at him with its sharp claws, but he kept dodging them. He created four giant Kai Rasengans with his chakra arms and slammed them into the Nibi, sending her crashing. He sensed the Rakubi behind him ready to unleash an attack, using instant transmission he appeared behind the Bijuu and created a Kai Rasen Shuriken, slamming it into the back sending it into the ground. I hope the real me finds Kabuto, I can feel the Kayubi chakra draining, I won't have much time lasting, and the same can go for my MSSJ form. Kai Naruto charged at the Nibi. Naruto slowly walked in the cave, he turned off the Kayubi chakra and was in his MSSJ2 with his sage mode on, he saw a barrier which didn't stop him as he blasted it with the Kai destroying it. I'm impressed you were able to pass through my barrier and find this place. He heard Kabuto. Sorry to spoil your fun Kabuto, but I learned a few things during my absence, today is the day you die. The majestic Saiyan said. Electricity crackled around him and his Kai flared. This reanimation jutsu will not come undone, even if you kill me. Smugly said Kabuto trying to anger the Kayubi Jinchuriki. He laughed menacingly, I guess my luck hasn't run out. Naruto vanished and appeared in front of the snake punching him in the jaw, sending him crashing against the cave wall. You talk too much. He said. Kabuto broke out the wall and popped his jaw back into place. His strength can be on the same level with Tsunade, if it wasn't for this form I would have suffered more damage. Kabuto Yakushi, as god of destruction of Universe Zero, I find you guilty and sentence you. To death. He flew fast towards the snake who jumped out of the way of the punch which destroyed a chunk of the cave wall. The Budo jumped, unleashing Anakin-like snakes towards the Saiyan who summoned out his Kai side, slicing through them like nothing. A bigger one went to eat him, but he threw a simple racin bomb in the mouth of the snake, exploding the head. Naruto looked around to find the bastard, with Sage mode he looked around seeing little chakra signatures, looking closely it looked like snake skin. He's trying to throw me off. Naruto gathered Kai in his mouth as he shot out a large white beam and turned everywhere, damaging the cave badly. As the attack died down he turned quickly seeing Kabuto coming out of the snake's mouth with his true form. You like it, you're not the only one who can transform. I've become the perfect snake sage, something that even Arachimarasama couldn't do. I am a dragon. He unleashed a wave of chakra. Naruto wasn't concerned about this and looked not impressed one bit. Kabuto. You have lost what humanity you have left. By the time I'm finished with you. You're going to regret messing with my home. My friends. 
and family. He went ultimate MSSJ2, just to show the difference between him and the bastard, with his Kai overwhelming the chakra. For the first time in a long time Kabuto felt nervous. Even in his perfect sage mode, he felt the power radiating off the Kai Ubi Jinchuriki still far greater. No it will not end like this. Not until he bring back Rajamarasama. He went through hand signs. Sage art wide extreme attack. The Buto shot out a large chakra dense shaped dragon holding a black orb which started to swirl around fusing with it, causing a strange loud whistle sound and making the whole room brighten. Naruto eyes squinted at this and sensed Kabuto charging in a zigzag pattern before jumping up and the snake from his abdomen lunged at him, however he caught it surprising the former Odo Shinobi and swung him around fast before throwing him hard against the wall which made a wide spiderweb crack. The snake sage broke out the wall landing on his feet, keeling and coughing up a little blood. But how, my jutsu was supposed to paralyze him, and only ones in sage mode he stopped and took a closer look at the iris, seeing they were toad-like with orange pigmentation around the eyes. Now I see. He stood up, popping his bones back. So the can use sage mode as well, as expected from Jiraiya's apprentice. He popped his neck. The Budo jumped all around from place to place at such speed making him a blur, but Naruto could still see him. He bounced off the ceiling down towards him which the Saiyan wanted as he sent a fast sharp gust of wind slicing the snake's head, but Kabuto was still alive as he barely dodged the attack and flipped backwards sticking on the ceiling. It's useless Kabuto, no matter what you throw at me I'll always end up turning it around. Here I'll make it easier for you. He put his scythe away and had his left arm behind him and his right arm out front. With one hand. Kabuto charged while activating his chakra scalpels and dived down doing a corkscrew. Naruto waited patiently as Kabuto was inches away and dodged, but it didn't stop there as he chopped the back of the bastard's neck, affecting his nervous system and crashing against spikes of rocks and boulders. The smoke cleared showing Kabuto shedding. Is that all you got? The majestic Saiyan taunted making the snake sage angry. The limp part from the snake being cut off formed a familiar shinobi that Naruto and his squad had fought in the past. Hitameru spiral web. Kabuto shot a huge spider web at the Konoha shinobi who still wasn't impressed and simply swung his right leg up that sent a blade like Kai slicing through the web like butter. Not finished yet the spider shinobi changed into the dead bone pulse user Kamimro. Macabre bone pulse bracken dance Kabuto slammed his hand into the ground as hundreds of sharp bones were popping out of the ground towards Naruto who stood his ground and formed a Kai energy in his mouth and shot out a large beam destroying the bones, leaving nothing but ashes. Naruto heard a flute sound and his body was not moving, coming out the smoke was Kabuto, and instead of Kamimro, it was one of the sound forteaya playing the flute. Looks like your own cockiness will be your own downfall, but don't worry with you being a part of me and Orochimaru I will be invincible. He charged as the Teaya form changed into Orochimaru's giant snake absorbent form, which stretched its neck lunging at Naruto. You're mine. Kabuto declared. Naruto shouted as his Kai energy exploded out his body sending his enemy back, he flew at the snake, creating a big bull wind Rasengan with his right arm, slamming it into the snake, shredding it into bloody ribbons. Before Kabuto had the chance Naruto appeared, taking him by surprise and was grabbed by the throat. Naruto flew as he grinded Kabuto's face against the cave walls and through some boulders, before tossing him hard against a bigger boulder destroying it. Soon enough the snake sage broke out of the stones and a huge white snake quickly lunged at him but had its head cut off. Enough. It's time for this to end once and for all. Naruto had a serious look. He opened up both his hands forming two Rasengans that were each white with a tint of purple and flew towards his opponent. The Budo formed a hand sign, but unfortunately he looked up just to see the Saiyan vanishing in a flash of white and then the next thing he felt a tremendous pain in his spine while slammed into the ground. Once the air cleared up Naruto stood above the broken Kabuto who shed to a new body, but to his shock, he still felt the pain in his spine, and to his horror, he couldn't feel the lower part of his body, he looked up at Naruto in rage. What did you do? Naruto gave no expression. I learned a new energy called Hakai, a special energy that only gods of destruction can use, I basically erased the lower part of your nerves with your spine from existence. He explained much to Kabuto's horror. No matter if you try to switch bodies the results will be the same. The majestic Saiyan bit his thumb, smearing blood on his left arm, and summoning out was a crow, more precisely Itachi's crow which had Shisui, another Sharingan. Naruto's clone stopped by Konoha and took Shisui's eye that Danzo had stolen and brought it to Itachi who implanted it in his crow, giving it to him and telling to use the Kotamatsukami on Kabuto. The crow landed on his shoulder looking at Kabuto who looked and saw the Manjiku Sharingan, he was going to look away, but it was too late. Picking up a snake by the hair, Naruto waited as he then made the hand signs, Ido Tensei release. He muttered. A breeze washed over Naruto who started to sense many chakra energy disintegrating. Glad that's over with. 
He sighed and looked at Kabuto who was brain dead, he put out his right hand. Hakai. Naruto shouted to which Kabuto glowed purple and started to be erased from existence. Once that was done with, he looked over to see a familiar face which was an unconscious Anko. He made a cage bushin telling him to take her back to the Kanoha. He concentrated sensing for Bardock, Broly and Paragus, which he found they were together, but Bardock's and Broly Kai were much higher, he used his instant transmission and vanished. With Naruto and the group. Naruto appeared in the battlefield and turned around seeing the Nibi pouncing towards him, but he dodged it and flew delivering a kick, sending the Bijuu cat skidding across the battlefield. He looked to see a giant Azeru battling the Yanbi and Sanbi, Broly fighting the Nanabi and Gobi, while lastly his clone was fighting the Rakubi. Rushing towards his clone he knocked away the slug, looking at each other, his clone sighed and not appreciating it and poofed away. Gaining the memories Naruto knew what he had to do. Guys found a black rod on them and pulled them out. He called out while he tried to get a hold of the Nibi who jumped away blowing out blue fire. Bardock grabbed a chokehold on the Yanbi while it thrashed for him to let go, but was brought back slamming on the back of its head, not done yet, he grabbed the tails of the Biju and spun it knocking into Sanbi. Broly was dodging more of the wind blades and sent green Kai blasts and closed in delivering a axe handle sending down the Nabi, he saw a shadow over him and looked up to see the Gobi falling on him, but instead of moving, he threw his hands up catching the Biju and growled using his strength and tossed away the Biju away. Naruto was battling Nibi while dodging the falling acid attacks, though it wasn't much difficult, and when KCM launching his chakra arms that made two giant wind Kai Rasengan, connecting both Biju sending them away. The Saiyans had noticed all the Bijuus were together, and they all started to form a purple ball. Naruto eyes wide as he knew what was coming, he would need to go MSSJ3, but before he did he was in his mindscape face to face with the Kayubi who was still locked behind the gates. Seems you're in a tight situation, Gaki. Said Kayubi. Is that all you have to say because in case you haven't noticed I'm in the middle of a battle against not only six Bijuus, but the bastard that made our life a living hell. Naruto is frustrated at being called at a time like this. For being such a sockled god of destruction I never thought he would whine. Kayubi mocked ticking Naruto off. Let's be honest, we both have never been on good terms hell we probably won't see eye to eye as much. But we both have respect each other and power. That day you fought that alien hit, you could have used my chakra and finished the match fast, but instead you used your own power that you discovered to win, hell I'll give you props for what you did to that snake Kabuto. Naruto was silent and was surprised that Kayubi was actually respecting him, but he stayed quiet. When I saw you being taken under that god Beerus I thought for sure the power would corrupt and you would end up like Madara Chihar or even worse, however I was wrong. Kayubi admitted. After a few seconds of silence Naruto broke it. Would you be willing to help me out, I know though with my accomplishments, I still have a long way for you to trust me, I never saw you as a weapon, and I never will. After this war one will find a way to free Bijuu and take them somewhere. Somewhere where they won't be used for war and can live in peace. Naruto said, looking up as Kayubi sat up. And Naruto's surprise Kayubi threw out a right fist, he looked up and didn't hesitate and bumped fist with him, he gave a small laugh, making Kayubi smirk, the lock to the gate slowly opened. For my family. For my friends. For my home. For my universe. For my parents. God and for us. The gate flew open and energy flooded around Naruto who was in his MSSJ form. The Saiyans saw what may come and were charging their attack, Kakashi and Guy arrived and saw this. This is not good. Kakashi said. I'll open the eighth gate. Guy said, taking a stance. Don't you idiot you know what will happen if you do. Kakashi scowled. Time to end this. The masked man commanded the Biju to attack, making them launch their attack. Broly and Azeru Bardock attacked with their Kai mouth beam stopping three of them, but the other three were coming, but before they came closer a giant white chakra tail swatted the Bijuus attack, this shocked the masked man. I and Kakashi were shielding their eyes from the strong energy, but Kakashi got a glimpse and saw what looked like Minato. Sensei. The masked shinobi was shocked, but the brightness died down, revealing to be not Minato, but his son Naruto. Naruto looked back at the Stay back senseis I got this as Naruto assured and gave a grin before turning back to the Bijuus and went avatar Kayubi mode charging at the Bijuus along with the Broly and Azeru Bardock. The masked man looked nervously as things were not going well as planned, not only are his pets being pushed back, but now the Uzumaki Gaki had full control of the Kayubi chakra, he may need to summon the Jito Meizo earlier than expected. He went through hand signs summoning the humanoid monster. Naruto managed to get a hold of the six Biju, and thanks to the help of Broly and Bardock, he got a hold on the Black Rods, but before pulling them out, everything froze as he was somewhere and was greeted by the Bijuus and their former Jinchurikis. Same as canon. The chains stabbed into the Biju as they were absorbed by the humanoid monster. 
Naruto landed on his feet and looked up clenching his fist and sent a death glare to the mask promising pain. After the Ichiha set a barrier around the humanoid monster he didn't have time as Naruto charged at fast speed with his Rasengan to destroy the mask, but once again he passed through however, that's just what he wanted as he instant transmission appearing in front, not giving the Ichiha any time as the attack slammed into the mask, destroying it. The Ichiha flipped and landed slowly looking showing his face. Naruto saw a good look at the man and heard his sensei gasp in shock. Uabito, is that you? Questioned a witty Kakashi along with Guy. That's not my name anymore Haddock, it's because of you I became what I am before you. Abito glared at the masked shinobi. Naruto was confused, who was this guy? What are you talking about? Exclaimed Kakashi. Silent was hung in the air as the two looked at each other until Abito spoke. You let Rin die. He said glaring which made his Sharingan spin angrily. This shocked Jonan. The conversation was cut off as another person arrived landing next to Abito, revealing to be Madara Ichiha. Mind if I cut in? He said. Naruto was shocked that the Ichiha was still alive, but the thought stopped as his blood ran cold. What did you do to the other? Madara stayed silent. What did you do to her? Naruto shouted going MSSJ2, while his Kai flared and electricity crackled around his body. Let's just say, she isn't doing too well. He said which set a spark off, Naruto flew and landed a punch, but was blocked by a gun by, but the four still pushed Madara away, he then swiftly turned and kicked Abito far back. Though after the barrier, I got these two. Naruto told the Saiyans and flew towards the Achihas. Abito went through hand signs and blew out deep red flames, but Naruto went through it and went to punch the jaw however Abito used his Kamui as Naruto went through him, with Madara already going through hand signs summoning a wooden dragon from the ground, wrapping up around Naruto. He broke out of it with ease before connecting a kick to the chest, cracking the Achihas armor sending him away, he turned around catching the wrist of Abito while forming a Kai Rasengan and would have connected had it not been the vines that popped out wrapping around his wrist. Lying up he ripped the vines from the ground and threw them off his wrist, he made nine chakra arms that shot out multiple white kai blasts all over the battlefield, covering the arena with smoke, when the air cleared Madara used his Susanoo to protect him and Abito. That Susanoo is no joke all I did was make scratch, time to get close and personal. He flew towards the ultimate armor and punched with full strength which made a dent, he continued on with kicks, but it to dodged a sword attack and flew back a distance, seeing the Susanoo forming into the second stage, as the skeleton figure crew muscles and armor summoning two blades. Naruto went Kyubi Avatar and attacked the Ichiha landing blow after blow, while also dodging the swords, he dropped the form and cupped his hand, forming his signature move. Madara had looked at the ball of energy the Kyubi Jinchuriki was forming with his Rinnegan. Very interesting, this power seems to be the same as Chakra, but more destructive, never in my life would I find another worthy opponent. He built up his perfect Susanoo. Majestic Spiral Wave. Naruto shouted thrusting his attack to the Achiha. Unfortunately the structure of Susanoo grew bigger and bigger until it was the size of a Bijuu, but still the attacks did some damage. Naruto flew back and around the Susanoo firing multiple Kai all around, but it did no damage, he saw a punch coming at him and formed a fist adding Kai and threw the punch connecting the attack, causing a huge shockwave. Madara heard a crack and saw Susanoo hand cracking and was destroyed stunning the Achiha, but he started to form a grin. Abito, how long until the ten tails will be ready? Naruto landed next to the Saiyans who were still attacking the barrier that protected the Jido Meizo, thankfully the barrier started to crack and soon was destroyed, causing an explosion. Did that work? Bardock said in a deep voice. Naruto sensed for any life, but when the smoke cleared, it revealed a monstrous creature that had ten tails and roared, shaking the landscape. What the hell is that? Naruto said. That Naruto is what the Juubi is. Kayubi said, narrowing his eyes at the monster. What is that thing? Paragus in shock. Whatever it is, it's ugly. Bardock said. Broly wanted to fight but was held back by his father. Naruto was trying to come up with a plan, he looked up seeing the red moon and felt. Something. His body stiffened and couldn't look away from the moon, his heart was pounding, and his breathing was picking up. Bakashi felt something was wrong and looked at his student who started to act funny. Naruto what's wrong? He asked, catching Paragus's attention who went witty. Get back. He and his son jumped back as did Kakashi. The majestic Saiyan dropped to his knees feeling his whole body shaking and his muscles growing, he was growling low and grew canines. Madara and Abito jumped on the Juubi. They saw the Jinchuriki reaction and knew this may be their chance, but a feeling of dread washed over them. Naruto growled loud and his head snapped up with his eyes turning red and shouted like a demon, his Kai pushed everyone away as it created a crater underneath him while his Kai shot up high in the sky. He still was crying out loud as his body was changing and his Kai was getting stronger by the minute which made the crater deeper and the atmosphere had electricity around the Jinchuriki. 
Kakashi shields his eyes. What's happening to my student? Kakashi asked Paragus. It's the Azera form, when a Saiyan sees a full moon they transform into giant apes just as Bardock. Then why didn't he transform earlier? The mask shinobi frowned. This must have something to do with him being a majestic Saiyan. Bardock said feeling the power was five times as powerful as his. Abito was nervous and angry at the same time. Angry that the Jinchuriki kept getting more powerful, but that was the nervous part, too strong. It can't be. Abito shouted. The majestic Saiyan's face started to slowly transform, and many tall rock cliffs shot out, while one carried him in the air, with a loud roar a large beam of white exploded, and out came a huge Azeru which was almost twice the size as the Juubi, instead of a chunky body it was more lean and muscular as were his arms and legs. His eyes were red, but most mostly stood out was the white fur and the tail. He growled and gave a mighty roar. Majestic Azeru has awoken. Dream. Ost Bardock fails 150. The baby Kakarot was heard crying in a space pod that was set down. I programmed this to head to a distant planet called Earth. The people in that world have low power levels and aren't technology advanced, I think he'll be able to do well they're gone. Good thing it's not an extremely valuable world, so I'm hoping it won't even show up on the freeze of forces radar. Baby Kakarot opened his eyes, seeing a beautiful woman who had slight tears in her eyes. If your father is wrong about this, then we'll come and get you immediately. She said. The man who looked like him except with a scar on his cheek, stepped next to her. Listen son, you do what it takes to survive, he told him. Akira tilted his head innocently. We'll see you really soon. The female Saiyan said. The man put his hand on the red tint glass while Kakarot did the same, wanting to feel the warmth of his father. Goodbye, said the man. The pod started to slowly float up high in the air as Kakarot looked down through the glass. Before he was blasted away the woman ran crying out, don't forget us Kakarot. The pod blasted off in the deep of space. Then Dream Oss 244. Goku's eyes snapped wide open and sat up quickly, breathing and sweating. He looked to see Kaikai Kai shifting around but was still asleep much to his sake as he knew his wife was not a late night person. He took the covers off him and slowly stood up wearing no shirt but orange sweepants. He went over to a window looking out in the sky seeing the stars. What was that dream about? That man that looked like him and that woman. Were they his parents? Ever since knowing his Saiyan heritage from his late brother Raditz, he never wanted to know about his family, he may not have admitted it, but he was afraid to know. He learned about the Saiyan's history from King Kai but. He never had thought about his real parents, since Grandpa Gohan was the only family he needed. But that dream made him have lots of questions. I wonder what they were like. Goku thought. Goku. He heard his name and turned his head back to see his wife Kai Kai awake looking slightly worried as she knew her husband never wakes up this late at night. What's wrong? She frowned. He shook his head giving a small smile. Nothing is just a dream. He told her and came back on the bed giving her a kiss, making her smile. Let's try to go back to sleep. He said laying back down with his wife who cuddled with him. Goku closed his eyes and would see tomorrow if King Kai could know who his parents were. With that though he went back to sleep. Battlefield. The majestic his air roared, pounding its chest and shooting out a large white beam in the sky. Jubi roared, not intimidated and charged. Naruto had charged locking a grapple with it, and the beast tried to bite his head off, but this made him angry, he opened his mouth shooting an intensify Kai beam right to the eye, making a cry in pain which Naruto took advantage of and gave a big right punch, sending the beast back. Ladara and Abito were forced to jump off as they knew this fight they would not want to be in the middle of. They actually managed to hurt the Juubi. Abito looked in disbelief. So it would seem. Madara said and looked to see the shinobi force arriving. Looks like we have guests. Azera Naruto rushed towards the Juubi and connected a shoulder thrust sending it skidding, but still held its ground. It opened its mouth, forming an enormous amount of energy. The majestic Azeru opened his mouth slightly creating an enormous white Kai. Both beams of energy collided against each other for dominance, but Naruto's attack was overwhelming the Juubi's attack in which struck the beast making it fall in pain. Ladara was using his Susanoo wiping out many Shinobis, he looked to see the ape dominating over the Juubi. The Juubi was supposed to be unstoppable, but I guess without the full Kyubi chakra, it cannot be healed as quickly and can take only so much from that ape. He broke out of his thoughts feeling a shockwave and looked to see the muscled Saiyan Broly pounding away at his ultimate defense while the other ape shot a beam of energy. He flared his Susanoo to full power into its perfect form. It drew its sword and went to strike down at Broly who caught the weapon and was slightly being pushed down, but that didn't stop him as he pushed the blade back. The Zeru Bardock charged towards Madara and gave a Kai-infused Superman punch, slightly cracking the face. Broly was next, who ripped the sword out the grasp of Susanoo and threw it with a blade stabbing into Susanoo which Abito and Madara had to dodge on the inside. 
Broly and Bardock opened their mouths and fired a combination of blue and green Kai wave to the Susanoo who formed a shield to stop it, but it was useless as it was destroyed along with the left arm. The Zara Naruto charged at the recovered Juupi who opened its mouth forming an enormous Biju bomb, but he didn't slow down, the attack was shot towards him, and instead of dodging it, he punched it away in a far distance destroying many mountains, everyone even Madara and Abita were shocked. Growling the Majestic opened its mouth and formed what looked like an enormous Biju bomb, but with bright white colors. He shot at the beast creating a giant explosion, releasing a blast of shockwave. The Zara Naruto growled slowly waiting for the smoke to clear. Once it did the Juubi had evolved growing legs and a right arm, the eye had fully healed, it gave a terrifying roar. The majestic Azeru pounded its chest and roared, making chakra explode from his body, black markings were appearing all over the fur as it too started to glow like flames. This power has drastically become enormous. Peruga said in a scared tone. I can see now why he's a god of destruction. Azeru Bardock said in respect. Broly was shocked seeing a power that was much far stronger than his. The Beedo started to sweat in fear. How? How can this have happened, the battle was supposed to be in his favor, everything was going so well but these. These. Monkeys are ruining everything. The Juubi formed a cone-shaped Bijuu bomb and shot at the charging Majestic, who threw a right punch, knocking the attack away, not letting up the Juubi fired multiple bombs at the who continued to smack or punch them out of the way. Once it was close enough it caught the punch of the beast and snapped his jaw on the arm, making the chakra monster scream, but it was not over as Naruto jerked his head back hard ripping it off making it scream in agony. The Juubi used 10 of its tails to attack, but Naruto caught them and started to swing the beast around, slamming it on the ground repeatedly four times and stomped on the back. Picking the monster back as Zara Naruto roared and out of nowhere started to attack the shinobi force. Why is he attacking us? Kakashi dodged an attack with Paragus. He's lost all self-control of himself, a first time Saiyan going into their great ape form, nothing can break them out from their blinding rage. Paragus said. Naruto stopped attacking the shinobi army and saw the Susanoo, he formed a Kai energy and shot a white beam at it. Madara and Abito saw this and only had time to brace themselves as the Susanoo was destroyed, sending them flying and crashing hard. The majestic Azeru went back again to the army, but Bardock got his attention. Naruto snapped out of it. He called out but was swatted away. Broly charged at him next, he dodged a swat and kicked the ape in the face dazing him, but he shook it off and blasted a regular size Kai wave from its mouth, sending the muscled Saiyan crashing into a cliff. Madara was barely getting up to his feet and was next to the Juubi who looked in pain. He saw Abito who unfortunately had the worst of it as the left side of his arm and leg were gone and had a scorch mark. Looks like I'll have to take my plans into action much earlier than expected. He went through hand signs. Black Rod stabbed into Abito and Madara who was feeding off the chakra, he went through another hand sign, this time with the help of his Rinnegan, he was back to life once more. Madara looked at his hands and with a big grin, he looked to see the white flaming ape attacking the shinobi alliance. Using the advantage he went through hand signs once more and touched the Juubi which absorbed into him. Naruto Izeru was getting hit by many fireballs and earth bullets which irritated him. He grabbed a chunk of a cliff and threw it with force. Broly came back this time much faster and slammed a headbutt knocking Naruto on his back. The Saiyan had charged down slamming his foot into the body of Naruto, who roared and grabbed Broly squeezing him. Slowly the Saiyan's bones were popping, and just before something snapped he was saved in the nick of time, as Bardock connected a Kai-infused punch to the eye, temporarily hurting Naruto. What do we have to do to get him back to normal? Kakashi asked Paragus. The only way to do that would be to cut his tail off, that's where the source of his power is. Said the elder Saiyan. Majestic Azeru smacked Broly away and was about to send a Kai wave to the shinobi army, but just before he did. Naritakin. A female voice called out his name. The Majestic Azeru stopped and turned to see a female shinobi with lavender color eyes that looked familiar to him. Naritokun. It's me Hinata. You have to stop. We're not your enemies. Please come back. She had a tear rolling down her cheek. Azeru Naruto was confused at this, wondering why was this girl crying, he slowly lifted up his hand and gently brushed the tear away with his finger. He slowly growled as he was thinking of who she was, memories started to come back slowly. Madara burst from the ground gaining everyone's attention. He was floating up with his now white spiky hair blowing in the wind. Floating before the shinobus was Sage Six Path Madara. He transformed the Shikujo into a very large spear-like weapon throwing it at Hinata, Naruto saw this and grabbed her as he turned around. He roared in pain as the weapon stabbed into him. Naruto-kun. She cried out. Majestic set her down and slowly pulled the weapon out the shoulder. He threw the weapon back at Madara who caught it as it transformed back to its regular Shikuju form. The power of the Sage of the Six Paths. Outstanding. 
Madara looked over at himself and then at the ape who jumped on a cliff and growled. Show me your true power Naruto Uzumaki. Show me. Madara madly called out. Azera Naruto roared as he started to glow brightly, he thrashed around and released his Kai energy destroying the cliff he stood on, smoke from the debris covered the area. A recovered normal Bardock and Broly looked to see what happened, Hinata was fearing for the worst as did Sakura, soon Aida arrived with the other cages and didn't know what was going on. Madara's eyes narrowed as he tried to sense life. The debris had slowly cleared showing a figure standing on a broken boulder. Clearing a little more, the person stood six feet wearing black pants with a silver sash around the waist, silver wristbands and kung fu shoes, he had a tail with white fur covering his muscled body, except his chest and abs. His hair was dark blonde with long untamed spike bangs. Lastly his iris was a dark white color with a silver shadow trim around his eyes. Everyone including the Saiyans were shocked at what they're looking at. Naruto looked at Madara giving no expression which for the first time made him uneasy. Hakusha sensei what's going on? Naruto he looks completely different. Sakura is stunned at her teammate's transformation. I'm confused as you are Sakura. Kakashi said. Bardock and Broly along with Paragus were too shocked at the majestic Saiyan's new transformation. Naruto-kun. Hinata said in shock, the majestic Saiyan looked at her which made the Hyuga heiress nervous, but it vanished as he flashed her his trademark fox grin. She smiled at this. Madara floated to the ground and looked to see the Shinobi Alliance prepared for battle. He slammed his hand down creating an army of monsters that were apart from the Juubi. Naruto saw the creatures and narrowed his eyes, Hinata go back to your team. He told her. Hinata would have argued, but she had faith in the Saiyan Shinobi, so she nodded and ran back to her team. The majestic Saiyan didn't move an inch as he kept staring at Madara like an animal stalking its prey. The Shinobi force along with the samurai stood behind him and drew their weapons preparing for the battle. Growls came from the creatures. The five cages had recovered enough chakra and were in front leading the army. Broly, Paragus and Bardock weren't breaking a sweat and were ready for battle. The sound of the wind blew through the air. One of the creatures roared and charged along with the army, soon the five cages and shinobi army followed the same motion charging towards them as they cried out in battle with their weapons out and jutsus ready. Both Madara and Naruto flew up in the air as the army had collided against each other. Bardock blasted Kai in every direction where he spotted many enemies, one tried to sneak up on him, but he turned around nailing a punch to its gut and blasted it away. Another charged at him, but he flew towards it and kicked it in the face, giving him a boost as he flipped back in the air, sending multiple Kai destroying more of them. Broly was knocking every enemy that charged at him and gave a backhand to one, sending it crashing into a mountain. A huge one was charging at him, but the Saiyan had followed the same and gave a right punch, splattering the creature's head. He saw his father being overwhelmed and rushed towards him at sonic speed, knocking every enemy that stood in his way. Just in time he stopped one that tried to stab his father, ripping its arm off and swung it knocking its head off. Madara was barely dodging the barrage of attacks and combination of punches and kicks, but fell for a fake left, as it was instead a right kick which connected his face, and then a reverse spin left kick that was blocked with a shikujo, but still sent him flying back. Naruto flew towards him while dodging the seeking orbs with ease, he shot a barrage of Kai, but Madara shielded himself in an iron-like defense ball. Not stopping yet he continued to fire at it and flew in with a kick sending it away, not stopping he teleported behind kicking it away again. He repeated this many times making Madara defense look like a pinball, the sage Ichiha didn't realize it, but his defense slowly started to crack. Appearing above. The majestic Saiyan gave a solid hard axe kick to the defense, which also sent a blast of wind, the ball started to crack and finally shattered. Madara had his arms up blocking it, but Naruto kept pushing down with force. He shouted while breaking through the guard, nailing the Achiha in the face with his heel, sending him through cliffs, huge boulders and into a deep crater. Not finished yet Naruto flew down connecting a punch into the gut, making Madara cough a glob of blood. He continued to relentlessly punch the sage Achiha's body with lefts and rights, while pushing him through the earth. He finally gave a uppercut, sending the Juubi Jinchuriki out the ground crashing into a rocky mountain, destroying it. Bursting out the ground Naruto flew up in the air. His stoic face slowly formed a grin and laughed with excitement as he looked at his hands. This new form. It feels much stronger than my MSS J3, but what should I call it? He thought for a few seconds and had an idea. How about, Majestic Super Saiyan 4? Madara pushed a boulder off him and sat up. He had some scratches and blood dripped from his mouth but wiped it away, one of his horns cracked and broke off. What monster strength. Unlike the Senju woman, this boy no doubt used pure physical strength. He stood back up to his feet. Naruto flew at insane speed around Madara in the sky until he became a blur, but that didn't bother the Achiha who was keeping track thanks to the Rinnegan. 
however the Kyubi Jinchuriki vanished before appearing below, giving a hard low double rising kick to the chin, sending him high in the air. Not done yet he cocked his right fist back and threw it releasing a blasting force of wind which Madara blocked with the truth-seeking ball, turning it into a wall defense. Naruto vanished thanks to his IT, instant transmission, appearing behind a few distance from the Achiha, he did the same move which Madara didn't have time to block as it struck his back. Not finished yet he flew above doing the same attack and down below. Madara felt trapped in the wind pressure, he could only turn his head seeing the Jinchuriki charging up and nailing a punch to the chest, which no doubt shattered a couple of bones in his ribcage, while being sent through many more rocky cliffs and crashing deep into the ground. Naruto landed on a boulder. Come out. Is this really the sockled most powerful shinobi to ever live, show me your true power Madara Chia. show yourself and show me what you got. He roared, flaring his kai around his body with electricity crackling around. Madara Ichiha burst out the ground with chakra shrouding around him. He laughed and grinned excitedly. No one has ever gotten my blood flowing with excitement, not since Hashirama. Very well Naruto Uzumaki, let's dance he flew at the majestic Saiyan who too did the same. Naruto dodged around the truth-seeking orbs and kicked one away back to the owner who stopped it, but it was a distraction as Naruto appeared with a knee that was blocked by the Ichiha Shikujo, but the force still blasted him up in the air. He went through hand signs. Sage Art Shadow Style Thunder Blast. He shot out purple electricity towards the Saiyan who just stood there and took the attack which created a blast covering the area in smoke. Madara looked for any movement, but Naruto appeared in front of him going for a punch, but was stopped by an invisible force. The Ichiha blew out a purple laser beam that would have sliced his head off if he hadn't bent his head back, he backflipped with a kick to the chin of the Juubi Jinchuriki pushing him back. Appearing behind, the Saiyan Shinobi had given a vicious elbow shot to the spine, which would have destroyed it if the Sage didn't enhance his bones, but he still was sent across the ground and crashed. Naruto dove down with another axe kick which Madara barely moved out of the way as it made contact against the ground, creating a crater with spider cracks. Transforming the Shikujo into a double sharp end staff, he threw it at lightning speed towards the majestic Saiyan. Easily sensing the danger coming at him he caught the weapon and threw it back at faster speed, not giving Madara time to react as the weapon went through his chest. He stumbled back coughing blood, the Saiyan flew and landed a right punch to the weapon, pushing it through the Ichiha Sage's body and kicked him away, sending him crashing. Not finished yet he formed his signature move. Super Majestic Spiral Wave. He called out. He shot the double-powered signature towards where the Ichiha crashed, creating a big explosion and a brightness that forced both armies to cover their eyes, it soon died down, and what the shinobi army saw made their jaws drop, there was nothing but a hundred-foot crater. Turning around quickly he saw Madara coming out of a swirling portal about to grab him, but he caught the wrist. I'm going to break you. He grinned while giving a hard squeeze, popping the wrist, making the Ichiha slightly wince. Like a Kit Kat bar. There was a slight pause in the air. What Madara cut off by a kick to the face, sending him flying. Naruto appeared behind and slammed his knee into the Ichiha's back, bending it ugly before throwing him into another cliff destroying it. Madara stood up from the rubble and coughed blood, but paid no attention to it. He summoned four clones that all made hand signs and blew out different elements towards the majestic Saiyan, who dodged each of the attacks. Not giving up yet he used the universe pull catching the majestic Saiyan off guard and pulling him into the attack exploding on contact. The Ichiha clones along with the real Madara waited for the smoke to clear. Suddenly in a blink of an eye, four Kai blasts shot out the smoke destroying the clones, the shinobi Saiyan appeared in front of the Ichiha startling him. Putting his hand up to the chest, Naruto connected an on punch, making the sage gasp in pain. He then delivered a corkscrew spin kick, sending the Madara crashing into a giant boulder destroying it. Naruto slowly flew towards the destroyed rubble, waiting for Madara to recover, soon enough he saw him flying high in the air. His clothing was damaged as the top was gone, while blood dripped from the end of his mouth. He formed a shadow ball in his hand and sent multiple of them in the air. Slowly they started to absorb the earth below which soon formed into the size of meteors. Even though Broly and Bardock can take half of them out, they were currently battling the real Zetsu, who was using one of the Shadame's giant wooden techniques and taking out many other enemies. He lifted both his arms up creating two enormous Rasen shuriken and threw them at the meteors. On contact it exploded with Kai wiping out many others. He formed his signature move adding the same power as before destroying the falling asteroids. Before continuing his assault he was pulled to his mindscape. Mindscape? Kurama? He asked. Finally, I've been trying to get through to you for the past few minutes. Kurama shouted. Sorry. I've been focusing on the battle. Naruto apologized. Whatever but now that you're here. Why haven't you finished Madara already? I can feel your power hundred times greater than his, and he has the Juubi inside him, not to mention the power of the sage. Kayubi asked. 
I want to push Madara to his absolute best and limit. I want to show him the difference between me and him. How I obtained the power of a god of destruction through not fear, not through force, but hard work, dedication, friendship. Promises. Naruto thought of his friends, his teachers, and his rival Goku. He looked at the Kyuubi with fire in his eyes. Time to show him some true power, I want to see how far I've come with my destroyer form. The last time I barely had control over it, but now with this new transformation I'm confident now that I can. Hirama narrowed his eyes on this. From the memories he saw this power was very very dangerous, a single mistake could destroy the entire universe, but at the same time it could end Madara with ease, even though it wasn't necessary since Naruto could win easily. But like Kit said. This was about showing the power difference between him and the Achiha, which is the most humiliating thing considering how strong he has become, Madara doesn't have any chance in hell. Alright Naruto. Kick his ass Kurama said, extending his fist which Naruto pounds in return. Battlefield. Broly slammed his fist against the giant wooden Buddha with multiple arms that was controlled by the real Zetsu, it had unleashed thousands of punches, but the Saiyan dodged each of them. He stopped as all the attacks were coming at him all at once, unfortunately he opened his mouth and shouted shooting a large green Kai wave destroying them. That's it Broly. Paragus appraised his son. Soon Prince Vegeta. I will have my revenge. Ardok turned next as he threw his signature move at the head which Setsu jumped off of as the attack connected, destroying half of the wooden statue as it fell forward burning. He and Broly looked in the air seeing many meteors falling down, transforming into his form, Bardock shot out a blue Kai wave from his mouth, while Broly did the same attack destroying many of the falling asteroids. They stopped their attack as they felt the earth shake and looked to see in a far away distance was Naruto who was causing it. Madara sent more shadow balls around the battlefield, but from the corner of his eyes, he saw the majestic Saiyan going into a horse dance. He saw a faint purple glow appearing around the Jinchuriki. Naruto was gritting his teeth while clenching his fists harder, while continuing to build up his energy. The world started to shake and lightning struck all around the battlefield, hitting many enemies. The majestic Saiyan shouted loud in the air as the purple energy around him intensified. The muscles in his arms slightly increased and his body became firm and hard. With the mighty cry of a true majestic Saiyan warrior the earth underneath him cracked and split open, creating a fissure which released a huge energy that shot high in the sky, creating a crater underneath, while releasing a blast of wind that made many shinobi hold their ground from the blast, unfortunately for the creatures they were not spared as they were sent flying. The smoke slowly cleared showing the majestic Saiyan in his MSSJ4 form, but glow to light dark purple, a red swirling mark appeared on his chest, he opened his eyes as they glowed the same color only a little lighter. He looked at Madara sending a strong Kai, killer intent, feeling. Looking up at the falling meteors he formed an orb of Hakai that was surrounded by a wind cyclone, he proceeded to shoot the attack which had hit one of the meteors exploding on contact and expanded, wiping out all the falling asteroids. Madara was shocked at what he had just witnessed, in only one move just one, the Kyuubi Jinchuriki had wiped out all his attacks from existence, not only that, but what was this power that he could not feel. Behold Madara, for this will be your final ever battle in your entire life, this is the power of a god of destruction. Naruto said with a stoic tone flaring up the energy around and vanished. Madara looked back but had no time to block a punch that almost went through him, he flew like a rag doll across the battlefield, but he didn't hit the ground as Naruto appeared below with a kick to the face, sending him high in the air. Not three yet he appeared above and gave a right cross elbow which dislocated Madara's jaw, plus sending him blasting into the ground, slightly shaking the battlefield. Landing on the ground he took position while flaring a huge amount of Hakai that formed around him into the Kyuubi's head that roared, sending a gust of wind. That power. Feared Paragus, Broly did not fear this power of Naruto, but had respected it. Never in his entire life would Bardock see the power of a god of destruction. When Naruto was first told about them and how strong they were he knew they were definitely powerful, but seeing it firsthand, it was incredible. Madara came out of the pile of rocks and saw the Uzumaki covered in Hakai that was in the shape of Kyuubi's head that roared, sending a huge gust of wind. He laughed at this. I'll acknowledge this power of yours. Of all those who have fought me over the years. There's no one that can surpass you. I, Madara, declare you the strongest. He shouted with a wicked smile. Naruto charged at Madara at sonic speed with the Hakai-shaped Kyuubi roaring. The sage prepared himself with his shikujo ready to block it, but once the Kyuubi Jinchuriki closed in the staff bent and disintegrated. Nani. Madara in shock that the shikujo was destroyed along with the truth-seeking orbs leaving him exposed having no more defense. Naruto clenched his right hand into a fist and cocked it back. This ends Nuu. He shouted and threw the punch connecting the body, Madara spat a glob of blood while still being pushed by the force and slammed into a mountain which soon exploded in a powerful blast and blinding light. 
the force was so powerful that the Doton shinobi quickly made huge earth-like walls to defend themselves from it, which barely managed to hold up if they hadn't added more chakra. The Saiyans flew high back covering the faces from the powerful wind gust and bright light. The energy had slowly died down while the smoke faded away revealing Naruto who was still covered in Hakai for a few seconds before it faded away. Madara was in a crater and was reverted back to his normal self but suffered major wounds, the left side of his body was black as charcoal sizzling as it burned, his arm and leg were destroyed as was his Rinnegan, leaving his eye pitch black. Naruto looked down at the defeated Ichiha, he bent down touching his head and started to read through his memories, something that he picked up from the Namekian leader back on Namek. He closed his eyes and concentrated. He saw Madara's childhood. The war between the Senju and Ichiha clan. The death of his little brother. The forming of Kanahagakur, the final battle between him and the Shadame, and finally till the day he found and trained Abito and told him about Tsuki no Mi and something called Infinite Tsukiyomi. Looking at the fallen Ichiha he felt slightly pity for the shinobi. Madara was without doubt the most powerful shinobi to ever have lived, the only downfall that made him turn who he was today was being the victim of the war. The cycle of hatred has long plagued his entire universe for too long. The Majestic turned his head looking back to see many shinobis from different nations and samurais helping each other fighting back the remaining enemies. This was a powerful sight, all the hatred put aside to fight for something greater, to fight for what they believe in. So this is it. Madara said in a weak voice due to the broken rib cage and coughed some blood up. After so many years of planning. To turn this world into paradise. All gone. Naruto was silent. The Ichiha gave a small chuckle confusing the majestic Saiyan. Madara looked at him. I look at you Naruto Uzumaki and I can see not just Hashirama and you but myself as well. Just like me you have the ultimate power to bring the world to its knees and bow to you and yet. Like Hashirama you use it to protect the ones you call friends and your village Kanahagakur. Madara gave a light chuckle feeling his life fading away. I dub you Naruto Uzumaki as the next shinobi no kami. Finish me is all I ask. He requested. Naruto looked at a different light at Madara, even though what he did was evil, he fought for what he believed in as well which the Saiyan can respect, he honored the request, but before he did he had to do something first. He concentrated and extracted the Juubi from Madara and broke it back into the seven Biju which were all in a wide orb. He stood up and extended his right arm out, opening his hand. But by Madara Ichiha, you have earned my respect as a warrior and I will not forget this as long as I live. Naruto said. Hakai. Madara slowly glowed purple and disintegrated slowly before vanishing completely. He saw a small smile on the Ichiha's face for the last time as he faded away from existence. The legend that was once Madara Ichiha was gone. Forever. The majestic Saiyan heard a shout of anger and looked up to see Zetsu coming down with a sword, to which he swatted away and connecting a ferocious punch to the gut, sending him flying, where he unfortunately was caught by Broly around his throat in an iron grip, making it impossible for him to do anything. Naruto saw his comrades approaching him, without warning his SSJ4 form dropped leaving him shirtless but back to his normal form. He breathed in relief and saw the shinobis cheering for their victory. You son of a bitch you did it. Bardock said with a grin. The Saiyan shinobi nod but before he continued he looked at the struggling Zetsu, he gave Bardock the orb and approached the creature. Now you're going to tell me what you know. He told the plant-like creatures. Go to hell. He spit in Naruto's face. The Saiyans were not shocked by the man's answer, but by his action, one thing came to Bardock and Paragus's mind. He's dead. Naruto slowly wiped the saliva away, it took all his willpower not to destroy the fool, but looked at Broly and a dark grin slowly formed. Alright then, if you won't talk then maybe my friend here can change your mind. He looked at Broly and nodded, making the muscled Saiyan grab the arms of the former Akatsuki member pulling them back. Now here's how it goes. You either tell me what I want to know or I'll just have to say one word to make you. Broly. Naruto said the name with a smirk. Broly started to pull back on the arms, causing the man to cry, feeling his arms will rip off. Stop. Naruto ordered the Saiyan to comply. Now then. On to my questions. Was Madara Ichiha a pawn to you? The Saiyan shinobi questioned. Zetsu growled at this. Yes. He knew it, but there had to be more. Were you the one that told Madara of Tsuki no Mi? Zetsu stayed silent. Oh staying silent huh, well, my mind's kind of blank, there's only one word going through right now. Broly. He playfully said. Now pulling much harder bones were heard popping making Zetsu cry in pain. I led Madara Ichiha to project Tsuki no Mi, I led the hatred war between the Senju and the Ichiha clan, he cracked. Naruto fisted clenched at the but kept calm for now. What was so important about this plan to you? Zetsu knew he said too much and desperately tried to escape. But the word tried meaning that he was nowhere near breaking free. It's going to be like that huh? You know what that means. Said a smirking Naruto. 
Broly ripped one of the bastard's arms off. Behind the mask Zetsu was horrified, before he could try anything Broly swiftly ripped the right arm off making a cry in agony. A shinobi who saw this flinched and held their arm, but Bardock and Paragus were used to this brutality. Now answer me. Naruto gave a glare by sending a huge killer intent. Zetsu feared for his life and explained his origins about being a small part of the Juubi that was the god tree, Kagaya Atsutsuki who was an angel, was sent to investigate it. He went on explaining more that she was the key to resurrect the Juubi once again. As she investigated the tree she saw a fruit and for unknown reason consumed it and soon flooded with energy that is known as chakra, but it also created him as well. Naruto made no motion, but his destroyer energy was surprisingly leaking out. Zetsu continued spilling his guts explaining of her birthing two sons Hagoromo and Hamura Atsutsuki, who later grew up becoming far stronger than their mother which worried him. It also didn't help that they possessed chakra as well. By the time they went against her he had no choice but to have her fuse with the Juubi, however she was soon stopped by her sons who separated both her and the Juubi, sealing Kagaya in the moon and splitting the Juubi into the nine Biju while he made his escape. Once he finished the Saiyans looked at the shinobi Saiyan who couldn't see his face due to his front bangs shadowing over his eyes. He finally looked up with a glare while transforming into his MSSJ form. He grabbed him by the throat and threw him high in the air, he formed a Hakai ball in his right hand and threw at sonic speed, nailing the now one arm bastard, the sounds of Zetsu screaming echoing across the battlefield, shocking the entire alliance force. Naruto sighed and relaxed. Finally the war was finally over. It's all over now. He looked up at the moon. Almost. He went sage mode while concentrating and found a faint Kai and Chakra, he looked at the Bardock. I'll be back. He told him and vanished with his IT. Bardock raised an eyebrow wondering why he went. The moon. Naruto landed on the moon and began to search for the Kai and Chakra, five minutes go by, but he managed to find the source, he looked down and saw a small engraved mark for seal. He bent down lifting one finger forming a speck of Hakai destroying the seal. The moon started to rumble, and a fissure split open and rising out was a beautiful stunning woman. She had double D cup breasts, horns like rabbit shape, wide eyes just like the Hyuga clan, pale skin, long white flowing hair and ruby red lipstick. She wore a beautiful high-collared himekimono which had a tomo running down the center and edges of the gown. A gold scepter with a red gem floated beside her. Her eyes slowly opened and she gasped regaining her breathing, she looked around wondering where she was at. She saw Naruto and narrowed her eyes, she quickly grabbed her scepter and got in a defensive stance. Who are you, where are my sons? She demanded. Naruto was confused and had thought she would know about Zetsu. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, god of destruction of Universe Zero. Kagaya was shocked, this. Boy was a god of destruction, it seemed laughable, a joke, but she saw his eyes and saw the power behind them. She dropped her stance and relaxed. I'm Kagaya. An angel I know. Naruto said. She raised an eyebrow and from there he began to explain about the Juubi, her being controlled by Zetsu, and finally her fighting and being sealed away by her sons. The Gaia felt her body numb as she floated down falling to her knees and cried in anger and sadness. Anger that some bastard had manipulated her and sadness that her sons sealed her, not that she blames them. Feeling sorry for the angel Naruto walked over to her and gave a hug the angel was shocked at this, but felt comfort and cried into the majestic Saiyan's chest while he rubbed her back with affection. A couple of minutes passed by and she started to calm down. She still remained in the arms of the majestic Saiyan and blushed feeling his muscles and couldn't help but rub his abs making her mouth water. Naruto felt her hand on his abs and felt them slide down lower, but before it went further he broke the hug. She regained herself and blushed. I am so sorry. She apologized, but Naruto waved it off saying it was fine. Hang on to me, I'll take you back to my universe. Naruto offered his hand which she slowly took. Naruto put his two fingers on his forehead and the two vanished back to Earth. Universe Zero. Bardock was being thanked by a lot of the Shinobis, Broly was being swarmed with a lot of Kinoichis who were feeling his muscles, but he didn't mind though was confused. Naruto appeared with Kagaya by his side. The entire crowd of Shinobis roared and cheered, thanking him. He was a little embarrassed and rubbed the back of his head. He heard his name being called and turned only to be collided by a certain Hyuga heiress. She looked up at the majestic Saiyan who smiled at her. Taking this chance she leaned in and kissed him, surprising the crowd, Sakura and Kagaya seeing this get jealous, Niji and Ko held Hiyashi back from murdering the now war hero. Tsunade smiled at this as did the rest of Konoha 11. The moment had ended as Bardock cleared his throat gaining Naruto's attention who saw the Saiyan holding the white orb that had the Baijus. Breaking from the hug he went over and grabbed the orb looking at the Baijus that were resting. So what's next? Asked the Saiyan warrior. Naruto pondered on what to do next. He decided that he would take the Baijus and knew what to tell the cages about them. 
Well I'm going to talk to the cages, when that's done I'll let you know what's our next move. He walked over to the five cages with Kagaya following him. Five days later in Kanahagakur. Naruto had on his father's coat in the same outfit except had silver wristbands. His top was a sleeveless white GI, exposing his muscle chest and a silver sash around the waist. He was on the Hokage monument on his father's head looking at the village. Days have passed since the war had ended, he was greeted with a hero's welcome by many of the civilians, he even had the chance to talk to Konohamaru and his friends including Aruka. Once arriving in the Hokage's office to meet with the other five cages, some want an explanation of what happened to the Baijus. Particularly A and Inoki, after a long verbal battle and showing a little display of his power, both cages came to an agreement for a peace treaty alliance, Tsunade of course was happy about this. Gar gave a small smile. After the meeting May the Mizukage had stopped him from leaving and gave him a deep kiss, surprising the majestic Saiyan. She broke from it and told him to visit Kurigakur soon, to at least say he'll keep that in mind. The Saiyans had stopped by his favorite Raymond stand and ate there, they declared Ichiraku the best dish ever. They had then went to the armory where they asked Tenten and her father to make them some armor which Bardock insists to help, two days later they were ready, though it was difficult for Broly's because of his size, but Bardock found a way for the armors to stretch just like his old one. Bardock is wearing the outfit from DBZ the father of Goku, while Broly and Paragus wore the same from the movie. He even managed to take Hinata on a date even though it was a short one. It was nice. He found Sakura whom he wanted to talk to. They hung out talking about their old missions and team memories. Silent hung in the air till she broke it and confessed about how she felt about him and that she was sorry for all the crap she put him through, including that stupid promise, she started to tear up. Seeing this he gently wiped away the tear and gave a smile, saying that he forgave her. But he didn't know what to feel for her. He had wanted her for so many years and now has the chance but. The memories of them being teammates for so many years was in his head. He sighed and looked at Sakura. He admitted that he didn't know how he felt, he needed time to think about which she accepted, they put that aside and went on with the hangout. Naruto heard footsteps and turned to see Kagaya walking to him. Ever since freeing her she at first kept her distance, but slowly started to feel more comfortable, especially as she was around him. What are you doing here? Asked Kagaya. Just admiring the village. When I was a kid sometimes I come up here watching the sun go down. It was relaxing and nice. Kagaya looked at the village with the sun going down taking an orange dawn color, she had to admit the sight was beautiful. I wonder how Wiss and Barasensei are doing? He asked himself. Kagaya's eyes were wide hearing the name, she looked at him. You met my brother and Beerus? Kagaya asked. Naruto nodded and explained about finding his majestic Saiyan heritage, meeting Wiss and Beerus, being appointed as candidate of Universe Zero God by Zeno. Kagaya was shocked at this, she knew Zeno-sama was picky of his god, but she saw the power he possessed and knew it was the truth, especially with Zeno-sama's word. Well then. Why not show me your power, I haven't fought for centuries. She smirks. The majestic Saiyan was surprised hearing this, I mean the only angel he has fought was Wiss, and he couldn't even land a blow, but this may be a chance for him to see how far he has come with his training. Let's do it. He grabbed her shoulder as she vanished. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the next part, don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Please like, subscribe, and comment below to let me know your thoughts. Check out my other videos for more content you might enjoy. Until next time, take care.